Chapter 397 Kill a few, let the massacre begin. Let's go to the end clan. Qin Shui's statement was calm, but it made everyone's blood burn with righteous indignation. The day had finally come, Qin Yi's body couldn't help but tremble slightly. There was a flame dancing in Qin Luo's eyes, but there was also another hint of conflict within them. All of a sudden, tears were cascading down Qin Yi's face. What's wrong, mother? Qin Shui saw the crystal tears on his mother's cheeks. She had cried when she saw Qin Qin. She didn't even shed a tear when she received news about Yan Zhongyue's death, but she was crying now. We can finally go to the Yan clan today, but he's no longer there. But he's no longer there. Qin Shui hardly had any memory of Yan Zhongyue. Resentment was all he had for him. He was the one who brought twenty years of pain to his mother made Qin Qin and the entire Qin clan suffer. Qin Shui knew that his mother was still missing him when he saw her tears. Perhaps she was suppressing it before, but now that they were about to wipe out his clan, she was reminded of his pitiful death and even knew that he still loved her. It pained her so much. For the past twenty years, Qin Shui knew that his mother had been longing for the day when he would return for them both. But she ended up waiting for twenty years and didn't expect that he would already be dead and that their daughter had suffered so much. Qing Qing, who was beside her, was equally desolated. He was the most important person to her. Although it had been ten years since he left her, it still pained her whenever she thought about him. She was staring when she first saw Qing Shui, not because he was good looking or he looked similar to herself, but because he was so much like her father. With Lai Jiutian and the others sending them off, Qin Shui and the rest got onto a lavish beast carriage and headed towards the Yen clan slowly. The day had finally arrived. Yen clan, I'm coming! Qin Shui sighed inwardly. Qin. Shui. It was Qin Qin's first time calling out to Qin Shui. This made Qin Shui extremely excited, even more so than the time he broke through to the fifth heavenly layer. Since their first contact, Qin Shui have not observed any initiative from his elder sister to talk to anyone. What is it, sister? I will listen to anything you say, Qin Shui said with a smile. Please spare father's lineage. They are the weakest branch among the Yen clan, Qin Qin said quietly. Qin Shui nodded hurriedly. He had gained much knowledge on the Yen clan by now, especially on the main branch. Although it was important to dig up the roots when weeding, he had gotten Wen and Wugo into trouble because he didn't do so properly in the past. He had almost regretted it for the rest of his life. Qin Shui had originally planned to weed out the entire Yen clan. When he heard that Yen Zhongyue had died, he was even more determined. But since Qin Qin had voiced out, Qin Shui could only comply because he didn't want her to once again shut the door to her heart, which had finally cracked open a little. It would be difficult to reopen it once it was shut off. The beast carriage stopped abruptly. Mister, there's someone up ahead. The driver informed Qin Shui who was in the carriage. Qin Shui immediately knew what was going on when he heard. Someone up ahead. They weren't too far from there now, and there was no way the Yen clan would let them have an easy time on their journey there. Let's get off. We're not far from there now. Let's just walk. Qin Shui said softly before leading everyone off the carriage. Qin Yi and the other ladies got off one after another. Qin Shui and a few other men from the Qin clan were fully dressed in armor while the ladies were in fox fur coats. They were attracting a lot of attention from their surroundings under the winter sun. Many stopped in their tracks. So many beauties appeared all of a sudden so it was only natural for men and women to stare in envy. This type of obsession towards beauty was just human. How gorgeous! This is my first time seeing quite a few beauties of this grade especially the one in white. Look at the one in violet fox fur coat. She's of the obsequious type. This type of ladies are best in bed. The one in red is the pretty one. She has a cold exterior yet she's dressed in fiery red color. This type of cool beauty is the one that will definitely bring you pure ecstasy. I wonder who is lucky enough to get a taste of them. Qin Shui looked at a row of not less than twenty people standing in the distance. Three youths were standing in front. Two were attractive youths that were about thirty years old while the other one was a fatty. It was too bad that he had a pair of slanting eyes which instantly made him into a fierce-looking fatty. The most eye-catching thing about him was the twin hammers in his hands. 
Each of the hammerheads was as big as a car tire, and they exuded a domineering air that attracted a lot of discussion among the surrounding people. This Yen Yixiong from the Yen clan was said to be born with unnatural strength. He's heavily built, and was rumored to be able to take on demonic beasts of the same level as himself. Said someone enviously while looking at those gigantic pair of hammers in Yen Yixiong's hands. The two standing in front are the talented ones from the Yen clan's current generation. So you are Qin Shui. You really don't know the immensity of the heaven and earth, said one of the handsome youths disdainfully. Qin Shui seemed very young to him. Although he had heard of him being the youngest elder in the heavenly palace, he just did not believe that Qin Shui was a truly capable individual. He was also referred to as a prodigy since he was little. On top of medicine, natural talent and diligence. He lacked nothing. Especially experience from real battles, he wouldn't lose compared to people from his own generation. So after knowing that Qing Shui's age was just a little beyond 20 years old, he looked down on him even more and even felt that his reputation was undeserved. Sister, are they from that line? Qing Shui turned his head around and asked Qing Qing. Qing Qing shook her head lightly. Seeing Qing Qing shaking her head, the youth across them started to verbally ridicule. So she found someone to have her back. What a slut. A bastard she is. Bam. The distance of about ten meters was nothing. The youth was put to an abrupt stop before he was even done with his insults. Qin Shui was now standing at the spot he was previously standing, as the blood of the youth rained down the sky. Everyone on the scene froze. Qin Shui was extremely furious. The two other youths from the Yen clan standing beside Qing Shui were a little dazed and their bodies even swayed slightly. Yen Yifang was a cultivator of Martial King Grade 1, one of the Martial King Grade cultivators among the younger generation whom the Yen clan have put countless of efforts in nurturing. He couldn't even withstand a technique from his opponent. To be able to instantly kill a Martial King Grade cultivator with one technique, his strength has already far exceeded the younger generation. The tallest middle-aged thin man among the crowd softly spoke to the short fatty beside him. That's an understatement. If his strength is compared to the rest in the world of the nine continents, he will definitely still be one of the outstanding ones among his generation. He wasn't even displaying his full strength just now. The short fatty looked at Qing Shui with a smile, never once taking his eyes off him. Just one technique. That's simply too outrageous. That's what they call an annihilation. The sky of Yen City is going to change. Someone yelled, causing an uproar to immediately break out on the streets of Yen City. Kill him! The remaining handsome youth suddenly yelled, but then quickly fell back. Unfortunately, Qin Shui didn't let him do so. It was simply too easy to kill a cultivator of Martial King Grade 1 who had completely lost his will to fight with his improved art of hidden weapons techniques. A piercing noise could be heard when the stones sliced through the air, and it even generated a little bit of fire sparks. Poo! It pierced through the neck of the youth, and then blew up. The destructive impact of the big stone was enough to break his neck. Right at that moment, the fatty who had been holding his twin hammers finally made a move. His body may be fat, but the strike he delivered was like a thunderclap. He performed the sinister. Ear reverberation twin hammer attack. With his hammers to ambush Qing Shui, who was exceptionally fast, from behind. In this instant, Qing Shui realized that this fatty was the most cunning and wicked among the three of them, and he was very decisive, too. It was too bad that he had to meet him, and the Yen clan would be wasting such a talented guy just like this. They could only blame themselves for being under Yen Zhongfeng's lineage and blame himself for being the grandson of Yen Haoxing. At the same time, Qing Shui activated the Tai Chi Clow hand with both of his hands. Then he protected both sides of his head. Thump! A dull noise rang out. Those gigantic and domineering twin hammers could not budge an inch further after coming in contact with Qing Shui's hands. Just then, Qing Shui lifted his leg behind him. He then delivered a kick with a series of afterimage like a drilling bit. Tiger Tail Whip Kick! The remaining ten people from the Yen clan at the back quickly dispersed. After witnessing Qing Shui's display of tyrannical strength before them, nothing else really mattered. They immediately fled for their lives. These clan cultivators that the Yen clan had hired were insignificant to Qing Shui because they were only hired thugs. However, this did not mean that Qing Shui will let them off the hook. 
Yen Clan's thugs were the people who had pointed a knife to his grandfather's throat back then, and forcefully took his elder sister away. The Yen Clan was the most powerful clan among the Yen Jian country in name, so it was still relatively easy for them to scout for these Xientian cultivators. Xiao Xiao Xiao. Qin Shui shot out a handful of small stones, like a celestial maiden scattering blossoms. This was also his first time exhibiting this kind of hidden weapon technique over such a large area. Pu Piu Piu. A mind manipulating sound resonated with occasional fleeting blood curdling screams, but everything quickly returned to normal soon enough. By now there were quite a lot of people crowding on the streets of Yen City, but Qin Shui had already gotten used to such weird phenomenon. In his previous world, people would avoid getting involved in fist fights and even flee from scenes of murders. No one would surround like this as everyone was scared to be made into a scapegoat. However, the world of nine continents was in an era that advocated martial arts. Situations like this played out almost every day in many places so this was a matter of common occurrence. This young man is sharp. His techniques are very ferocious, too. Karma finally hit the Yen clan. Especially the lineage of the current Yen clan's head. Look at what those disciples of theirs have been doing every day. The evil we bring upon ourselves is indeed the hardest to bear. I wonder if this young man can turn the sky of the Yen city over. A youth muttered in great interest. His eyes were sparkling with excitement. Quickly inform young master Pola that Lady Ching Ching is here. This man is really good looking. What do you think, Sister Fei? A woman smiled at the other tall lady. He's indeed very attractive. A very fine cute guy he is. Qin Shui ignored the discussion going on around him as he turned around and walked towards Qin Yi and Qin Qin. He looked at Qin Luo who was beside them and said, Let's go, we still have some way to go. Qin Shui stood next to Qin Yi with Qin Luo on the other side. They were slowly making their way towards the Yen clan's residence, which was just far up ahead within their sight. The crowd automatically parted to let them through, but as soon as Qin Shui and the rest passed, they slowly trailed behind them. After all, it would be too much of a pity to pass up on something like this. The Yen clan. Clan's head, the three young masters. A refined elderly man suddenly stood up from his tie shirt chair. Ignorant fools who didn't know the immensity of the heaven and earth. Yen Haoxing's hand was trembling. Bring me those from the sixth branch here. Hurry! Yen Haoxing snarled angrily with a flushing red face. Right away. Yen Haoxing struggled with a pained expression on his face. The sixth, to leave this bane of existence was the mistake made by your son back then. You shall be the one to handle this. Qin Shui and the rest continued walking towards the Yen clan. Qin Yi did not seem to be too excited about it. She had dreamed of stepping into the Yen clan countless times before. Now that this day had finally come, she found out that it was not quite like how she had wished for back then. Ching Ching still had the same apathetic look on her face. She did not feel anything when the people from just now were killed. She did not have any strength. But if she did, she would not mind finishing them off with her own hands. To her, family ties were something that had became non-existent after the death of her father, Yan Zhongyue. The reason behind her request to Qing Shui and sparing the sixth branch lineage was because that was the home of her father. Her father's family was there. Not knowing the immensity of the heaven and earth is a saying that means someone have an exaggerated opinion of his her own abilities. The sky is changing, is an expression that a situation is going to change. Chapter 398, A Dead of Twenty Years, The Death of Yen Haoxing Qing Yu felt hot-blooded as he witnessed Qing Shui's massacre. He knew the humiliation that the Qing clan had to endure. In Qing Shui's words, Qing Yu had so much animosity towards the rich especially those that were like the Yen clan. Ching Ching! At this moment, a young man with a limp walked towards them. He was about 27 or 28 years old, and although he could not be considered handsome, he was pleasing to the eyes. He had a pair of quiet eyes which made him appear quite level-headed. The young man looked at Ching Ching with some adoration and patience. Ching Shui intuitively knew who the man was. He had never seen him before but he remembered his name. Guapolo. Qin Shui remembered him as he knew that Polo had cared for Qin Qin. Did Yen clan do this to you? Qin Qin asked with a cold expression. 
The young man gave a pained smile. You have suffered because of me, thank you. I have already found my family. A tiny expression rippled on Ching Ching's face, but it was so slight that it was almost indiscernible. Guapola felt a slight bitterness in his heart. She had found her family, so he should be happy. However, he would not have any chance to see her or be close to her in the future. Congratulations. Thank you. Guapola smiled bitterly as he turned to leave. Please wait. Qin Shui could see that there was a vague emotion in Qin Qing's eyes. Qin Shui did not know what she was feeling, but he did not want her to regret this in the future. It was all right if he misunderstood her, as he wanted to thank Guapola anyway. Considering Qin Qing's personality, she would not mutter a word even if she harbored any feelings for the other party, so Qin Shui felt obliged to create an opportunity for her. If they were still unable to make any progress in their relationship, then they really did not have fate on their side. Guapola turned his head and looked at Qin Shui curiously. Facing the good-looking man with unrivaled talent, he knew that Qin clan would steadily rise riding on Qin Shui's coattails of success. Their clan was definitely not inferior to his own. Thank you. I've heard about what you've done for my sister. When all of this has been settled, we can have a conversation together. What do you think about that? Qin Shui asked in a friendly tone. Sure. Please come to the Gua residence so that I can properly host all of you. You definitely have to come. At that very moment, there was some commotion from the crowd in front. Move aside. Members of the Yen clan are arriving. Members of the Yen clan's sixth branch have arrived. That is Qin Qing's paternal grandfather by blood. He is also Qin Shui's paternal grandfather, it seems. There'll be a good show. The Yen family's main branch sure is wicked. They actually got the members of the Yen clan's sixth branch to come over to intercept them. Qin Shui saw a stream of people approaching. There were just over twenty people in the group. They were led by a thin old man and about eighty percent of the group were women. Amidst the group, Qin Shui spotted a familiar face. Yen Ling'er. She was the lady who called him Big Brother Qin Shui. Both parties were about ten meters apart. Qin Shui stared at the desiccated old man with razor-sharp eyes devoid of any emotion. Big Brother Qin Shui Yen Ling'a knew that Qin Shui was younger than her. However, she was too accustomed to calling him Big Brother Qin Shui. I told you that you'd regret it, Qin Shui said dryly. Can you? Well, I don't have time. Can you get out of the way? Qin Shui aridly interrupted Yen Ling'a. The corners of Yen Ling'er's eyes turned red with humiliation. Qin Shui, he is your paternal grandfather. We are your brothers and sisters. How could you speak to us like this? A handsome youth with low voice muttered out. If Qin Qin had not pleaded for mercy for this branch, do you think that you will still be alive? Get lost. Qin Shui's aura abruptly gushed forward, forcing them to back away. Even the youth was pushed back a few steps and fell backwards on the roadside, blood leaking from his lips. This time, Qin Shui had really stunned all the members from the Yen family. Even the surrounding bystanders who had circled to watch the scene fell silent. It was a piece of cake for Qin Shui to dispose of them if he wanted to. For a second, not even a single comment was uttered. Then, another group of men on horses appeared, accompanied a burst of loud shouting. All irrelevant people get out of here in fifteen minutes or face the consequences. Members of the Yen clan are here. Let's leave, let's leave. Why are you still here? Are you courting death? The Yen clan are a bunch of degenerates, you are all going to die. Someone cursed out. The surrounding crowd of bystanders scrambled to leave and before long there was nobody left. Qin Shui could not imagine that Yen clan could do such a thing in Yen city. It seemed that such occurrences were not rare. This was nothing. They even had over 2,000 armored warriors riding on battle horses to drive out people from the surrounding the area. There was now a swath of emptiness in the usually bustling main street. Qin Shui could not help but shake his head. Yen Clan's action was too outrageous. Even if he did not touch Yen Clan today, they probably would not last much longer. At this time, another hundred people appeared. Qin Shui knew that the true clan head had arrived. His eyes were locked on the elder man who was leading. He was an old man who looked similar to Yen Haoren. His name was Yen Haojing. 
however, the difference was that this old man was actually strong. He was a top grade 7 martial king. Qin Shui remembered Lai Chusong telling him that Yen clan's strongest person was their previous head. It seemed that there was a high possibility that the rumors about Yen Haoxing having collaborated with Xiao clan to force his paternal grandfather down from his position were true. After all, Yen Haoxing did have the ability. Six brother, so there is a genius in your branch. Too bad he is just a bastard. He looks like Xiongyue, so he's probably a bastard from your family. Despite looking like a cultured man, Yen Haoxing spoke in an uncouth manner. Your talk is full of shit. Why would you even care when you are already at your deathbed? Qin Shui said with disdain, You are a disgrace. Is that how you speak to your elders? This rebuke was exceptionally strict, so much so that the others could not tell if Yen Haoxing was acting or being serious. Qin Shui laughed out loud maniacally in response. Elder? Who do you think you are? All my elders surname are Qin. Old dog, don't tell me your name is Qin Haoxing? Unfortunately, you are not even worth the surname. Qin Shui looked at Yen Haoxing unwaveringly. You. You. In the past, when your Yen clan threatened my maternal grandfather with a sword to his neck, did you think that you'd see this day? When you snatched my older sister, how did you treat her? Twenty years. Twenty years. I, Qin Shui, will be the one to collect this debt. As he finished saying all of this, Qin Shui gave Yen Haoxing a piercing glare. Ha! How arrogant! You think someone like you can touch the Yen clan? You'll see. Qin Shui slowly pulled out his big dipper sword. There was commotion in the back. Then, over ten warriors appeared, each holding a civilian. Some were children and some were women, each with a sword held to their necks. A child of about two or three years old started crying and screaming that he wanted his mother. Yen Haoxing, are you still human? Yen Haoren said furiously. I'll kill you! An angry sturdy young man behind Yen Haoren howled angrily. Igong, come back! Yen Haoren held back the young man. But that's my child. You people from the sixth branch caused this trouble. Now you want the first branch to clean up your mess. This is your wishful thinking, sixth brother. I told you to bring me Qing Shui's head to exchange for all this, but you failed. So I am bring them to exchange for his directly. Yen Haoxing said impassively. You monster. You're worse than a beast. Stop doing all these unnecessary things. I don't care about a single person in Yen clan. As he completed his sentence, Qing Shui started to take action, using the impetus of divine feet clearing with the core key method of the Black Armor Jumping King, with the addition to the effective moves of perfection stage soaring crane steps. He was so fast that it almost appeared as if he had disappeared in front of the crowd. The fistful of rocks in his left hand were once again shot out just like heavenly maidens scattering flowers. Poo! 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 Qin Shui's intentions were unknown, but ten odd warriors who were holding the women and children as hostages were all killed. The remaining stones flew towards Yen Haoxing with a sharp whistling sound. A cold blaze rose in Yen Haoxing's eyes. It was only now that he knew how formidable Qin Shui was. Previously, he knew that Qin Shui was a genius, but still underestimated him. With a heavy stomp, his own clan members surrounding him were pushed aside by the force. He raised the massive sword in his hands to block Qin Shui's forceful cleaving strike. Art of Pursuing Immovable Mountains Boom! Both of them took a step back at the same time. Qin Shui did not use his full strength. If he had used his strength of over eight million, he could have wounded him badly. But Qin Shui did not want to alert his opponent prematurely. Qin Shui wanted the person from Xiao Clan to appear. That person must die. You're good but I can't let you live. Yan Clan could have had a genius like you. Yan Haoxing looked at Qin Shui with a complex expression. The reply he got was Qin Shui's sword hacking down. It was an intolerably tyrannic stroke. This time, Qin Shui used more strength. Yen Haoxing's speed was down 10% and his burden weight was up by 10% under the effects of Qin Shui's art of pursuing. 10% was not a small amount for people at their level. Clash! Qin Shui added even more strength to his attack. And sped up a little. 
he slowly widened the gap between their capabilities. When they crossed swords again, Qing Shui used a considerably larger amount of strength. However, in everyone else's eyes, it looked as if Yan Haoxing did not have enough endurance, as if the old feared the young. At the point when Yan Haoxing was jolted backwards by the force, Qin Shui increased his speed again. It was time to end this. Basic Sword Techniques Piercing Sword It was a fast piercing thrust. It hit like a spark and everyone could see it so clearly yet it was so quick, so direct. Poo! The sword thrust through Haoxing's chest. No one could believe their eyes. It was such a direct and clear stroke. Even though the style was uncommon, it was unimposing, unsophisticated and had profound casualness that was incomprehensible. But that was the precise reason why most of the people could not accept the outcome. That thrust was simply piercing sword from the basic sword techniques. How could a martial king level martial artist be killed by a move from basic sword techniques? Father! Father! Momentarily, cries could be heard. Yan Haoxing was the pillar of Yan clan's main branch. Now that he was dead, Yan clan fell into disorder, even to the point that it was on the brink of total collapse. Qin Shui knew that that person was in the vicinity. If he did not appear before him, Qin Shui decided that he will take an extreme route. Anyway, he had to use this method. He would massacre everyone in Shao clan. That way, that man would show himself. But now, he had to kill Yan Zhongjing and that woman from Shao clan. Chapter 399 Shook the entire Yan Jiang country single-handedly. That woman from Shao clan. Just like sheep without a shepherd, the entire Yan clan flew into utter chaos when Yan Haoxing died. Qin Shui searched for the two of them amongst the fleeing horde with his keen eyes while committing a massacre. We were forced into this by the people from the main branch. We are innocent. Yan Haoxing and the others are the ones you should be looking for. They are the ones who resented Qin clan. A woman stood in the crowd and cried out in agony. That's right. They are the ones controlling our children. We had no choice. They never took us as part of their family. You have nothing to gain from killing us. We have been wishing for Yan Haoxing to die for a long time. Qin Shui remained silent. He was still looking around. Qin Shui. Qin Yi ran up towards Qin Shui. Mother. Please just kill the people from the main branch and Shao clan. These people here will not prevail in this massacre. They have nothing to do with Yan Haoxing and the others. Qin Shui suddenly remembered Situ clan. It was because of his negligence over the matter, when An Wugo had to die. He had to regret his decision for the rest of his life. Mother, do you remember about the matters with Situ clan? I do not wish to make the same mistake again. Qin Shui scowled as he looked into his mother's eyes. Women, after all, are soft-hearted creatures. Qin Yi remained silent for a moment, then softly said to Qin Shui, But you promised Qin Qin you would let the sixth branch go. Qin Shui let out a forceful smile. He understood what his mother meant to say. She was suspecting whether her son would really spare the lives from the sixth branch. However, Qin Shui had thought about it earlier, but he ultimately decided he would rather leave no one alive than letting them go. He was not worried about the consequences that it would bring to him, but the consequences that would affect the people close to him. It seemed like this would be the time to expand Qin Clan's power. He did not need to massacre the entire clan to show that. As long as everyone understood the strength of his clan, there was no need to openly kill everyone. Massacre is a form of weakness as well, but there were some people who needed to die. People like Yan Haoxing and the Xiao clan. Qin Shui made a decision. He gathered up all his energy and shouted towards the crowd. Those who are not from the main branch, stand to the left. In an instant, the crowd dispersed and around 200 people came forward. Before there were about a 100, but now there was an increase of 400 people. The remaining 200 people were from the main branch of Yan clan. There were less than 200 people altogether in the other five branches. The members from the main branch and the martial warriors from the Yan city added up to about a hundred people. Qin Shui was about to shake the whole Yan Jiang country single-handedly. Qin Shui spotted a woman amongst the group containing a hundred people. She was beautiful beyond compare. She seemed to be in her twenties or thirties. 
The woman wore a sky-blue fox fur robe with her hair tied up in a high bun. Her skin was smooth as flawless jade, her brows as crescent as the moon, her teeth as white as snow, her eyes as clear as water, and the most prominent feature of all, her voluptuous body. She was a mature and charming woman. Huyin Luli was without a doubt, very charming, but this woman gave off a vibe of pink dried bone which meant she stood out from other people due to her features. Her bosoms were big and perky. Qin Shui was never fond of over-exaggerated bosoms, especially if they looked like two volleyballs. Those were not his type, and the woman from Shao Clan definitely had humongous bosoms with perfectly rounded tips. They were large but plump. The wobbling movement of the bosoms would trigger the beast within a man. She had a slender waist and full rounded hips. Even the view of her back could seduce people. After analyzing this woman, Qin Shui was very sure that she was indeed the woman from Shao Clan. A woman from the Shao Clan, however, the woman ogled at Qin Shui with lustful eyes, as if she was unaffected by the death of Yan Haoxing. She was born a beautiful woman of virtue and delicacy. Her mature aura still had a big effect on Qin Shui. He shifted his attention to the man beside her as a way to avoid her lustful gaze. The refined and dignified man looked about thirty years old. His gaze right now was different than the woman's. He had a deep hatred in his eyes as he looked at Qin Shui. You must be Yan Zhongfeng. Qin Shui smirked. These two were the reason for his father's death and Qin Qing's dreadful life, as well as the despair they brought to his mother. There were about a hundred martial warriors surrounding Yan Zhongfeng and the woman from the Shao clan. Surprisingly, all of them were at the level of the peak of Xientian and martial kings. He noticed that one elderly man with full white hair is different from the others. Qin Shui could vaguely estimate his power to be about the same, or more than Yan Haoxing. There were a few elderly men who were comparable to Yan Haoxing as well. Now it was all clear. Qin Shui observed the martial warriors surrounding the couple. Each of them was equipped with weapons, and they seemed to have made preparations for a showdown. Qin Shui, you shall die today! Yan Zhongfeng said with a voice of deep hatred. He knew that once his father had died, he would not be able to hold on to his position and status in the Yan clan. His grandfather had never been supportive of him. Yan Zhongfeng had been under pressure to preserve his relationship with the Shao clan. Moreover, the woman beside him was beginning to lose interest in him. Ever since Yan Zhongfeng successfully hooked Shao Shuyun from Shao clan, not only had he gained control of her body, but he had also brought out her flirtatious behavior. She would have gone for someone else if they were bold enough to seduce her. Even so, she would still be restless. Yan Zhongfeng knew this well, but because of family matters with Shao clan, he would have to be patient with her. Yan Zhongfeng was not an ambitious man. All he ever wanted was to conquer the entire Shao clan with his own ability so Shao Shuyun would live to please him, not the other way around. You have no right to say that. You know better than anyone why I am here. Do you think you can kill me with these people by your side? Such conceited words, but they suit you well. If I said it I would be seen as a fool. Yan Zhongfeng twitched. Kill him. If anyone can kill him, I will grant them one wish as long as it can be fulfilled. The martial warriors surrounding him knew they had to fight with everything they had. They did not flee when they had the chance because the only way to survive was to kill the young man before them. One of the middle-aged men shouted. Everyone work together and kill him, otherwise you will die by his hands. No one was dumb enough to flee from the fight. The atmosphere immediately tensed up. He's just a young person. How strong can he be? Four hands are better than two fists, so everyone grab your swords and kill him. Qin Shu held the Big Dipper sword with his right hand and a bunch of stones in his left hand. These stones could cause a fatal death when they hit the opponent's vital points. Roar! Qin Shui lifted his head as he let out a deafening roar. He shot out all the stones from his left hand with his maximum speed. About a dozen of Xientian martial warriors instantly fell to the ground. This was the true power of a strong furious Xientian martial warrior. There would be moments where he would be able to land a single blow towards his enemies. Life was indeed a fragile thing. Seven Star Armored Vest Qin Shui unleashed the power of the Big Dipper Sword and combined it with his armor. He had already gained three times the defense from consuming the pure gold Mystic Turtle Core earlier, and with the double defense from the basic sword technique. 
he had gained an overall six times of the defense. The main purpose of the ancient strengthening technique was to strengthen the physical strength of the body. With the combination of Qin Shui's terrifying power, he had become a frightening killing machine. This was worse than tigers among a flock of sheep, or even death by a single blow. This could even result in total annihilation. In just a few moments, Qin Shui had wiped out the hundreds of martial warriors with just his brute force. His armor was stained red from killing those men. The Big Dipper sword was still clean. There was not a single blood stain on the blade. The only ones left were Yan Zhongfeng, the woman from Shao clan, and a few old men. Come out, Qin Shui said abruptly without looking around. Cough. After a sigh, an elderly man came forward. His head was full of white hair. His body looked very frail. Grandfather, save me! Yan Zhongfeng shivered and pleaded his life when he saw the old man. He was afraid. Qin Shui's madness had extinguished all his will to fight. Father! Father! Grandfather! Great-grandfather! In an instant, everyone cried. This man was the master of Yan clan, as well as the father to Yan Haojing and Yan Haoren. Qin Shui, I don't hope much from you. But what can we do for you to free these people? I will gladly give my life in exchange for theirs. The elderly man looked at Qin Shui with mixed feelings. Qin Shui shook his head gently. Lai Bao. The old man shouted with a soft voice. An old man with a head full of white hair emerged from the back. He looked slightly old despite his age. Sir. Lai Bao greeted the old man with respect as he shivered. Go in front of old man Qin so he may have a better look at you. Back then, one of your hands pointed the knife at his neck. I want that hand cut, the old man said in a dignified manner despite his soft voice. Lai Bao lowered his head as he held the knife in his left hand. He stopped at a distance of five meters in front of Qin Luo and abruptly chopped off his right hand. He sweated bullets as he held back his voice so no one could hear his pain. The elderly man turned back to Qin Shui for an answer, but Qin Shui just shook his head and remained silent. Yan Hong! Sir! Another old man stood up. You were the one who brought back Qing Qing. You shall atone your sin with death. Don't worry, I will take care of your family. The elderly man said casually. And so, Yan Hong took his own life. Meanwhile, Yan Zhongfeng shivered with intensity. Qing Shui remained unmoved but his expression was calm. He observed the elderly man quietly. Qing Shui, the blood flowing through your body is of Yan clan's blood. There is no need to kill the ones of the same clan as you. I am deeply hurt by this. The elderly man said weakly. Who was the master of the Yen clan when it happened? Qin Shui asked. The elderly man was startled by his question. His expression turned apathetic as he opened his mouth. It was me. The main branch killed Yen Zhongyue. Then let me ask you this. Why do you still allow these people who killed the man from the same clan to live? When Yan Haojing used the children and women from the sixth branch to coerce me, did you do anything about it? Qin Shui smiled at the kind and honest and pleasant elderly man, men who are merciless, cruel, and willing to build their success at the cost of many lives cannot achieve great things in life. For a family that held its clan on the top by eliminating other clans of comparable power, it would easy for them to hit rock bottom when everything started to fall. Then just tell me your conditions and I will allow it. Whatever it is, I hope the Yen clan will still be able to leave a legacy behind. The elderly man seemed to be tolerating Qin Shui as he grudgingly made his offer. I will give you an answer after I have eliminated these two. Qin Shui was already on the move to eliminate his targets, Yen Zhongfeng and that woman from Shao clan. He could tell that the elderly man was trying to keep Yen Zhongfeng alive when he made his offers. All the direct heirs to the Yen clan were gone. He wanted Yen Zhongfeng alive because of his status as the husband of the woman from Shao clan. With that relationship established, Yen clan will be able to get all the support from Shao clan. However, if Yen Zhongfeng and the woman died, Yen clan will be finished. Shao clan will never forgive Yen clan for that. Qing Shui quickly used the Corky method on his legs as he went straight for the couple. His speed immediately increased. Ripping tiger claw. Don't you dare! The elderly man's expression changed in an instant. 
He quickly gave chase with a burning anger. Qin Shi used the ripping tiger claw on Yan Zhongfeng. Yan Zhongfeng is a grade 4 martial king martial warrior. He was considered a genius to be able to advance from a grade 1 martial king to a grade 4 martial king in a span of 20 years. However, his advancement required a continuous consumption of precious medicinal herbs and a whole lot of money to purchase the spirit concentrating pills from the refined medicine sect. With the effects of the seven star armored vest currently active, he intended to kill Yan Zhongfeng no matter what it took. Tiger Tail Whip Kick He used the Tiger Tail Whip Kick on the woman from Shao Clan. Chapter 400 Viciously Destroying the Flower The Fall of Yan Clan The Changes to Qingqing Qing. While Yan Zhongfeng was panic-stricken, he still, as a martial art practitioner, instinctively raised his long sword and pierced towards Qin Shui's throat. It was just that the impact was heavily discounted. Qin Shui was undaunted. A surge of slight golden-colored ki appeared on his palms and with a flash, it clashed with the tip of Yan Zhongfeng's sword. Ding! Ding! When Yan Zhongfeng saw that his long sword had broken, he knew that he was done for. The Big Dipper sword in Qin Shui's right hand flashed and pierced into Yan Zhongfeng's chest, at the same exact spot as Yan Haozhong. At almost the same time, Qin Shui's tiger tail whip kick kicked onto the Shao clan's woman's chest. Boom! At this moment, the elderly's palm had also landed on Qin Shui's back. Qin Shui was directly sent flying out. A trickle of blood flowed down the corner of his lips. With Qin Shui's current defense plus his agile dodge, he did not receive too much damage. While light wounds were inevitable, Qin Shui knew what he was doing. Otherwise, he would not choose to go head-on against the elderly's palm. This was after he had taken the pure gold mystic turtle core and then used the seven-star armored vest. If he did not have the pure gold mystic turtle core or did not have the seven-star armored vest, Qin Shui would definitely suffer from serious injuries after receiving this blow and might have even lost his life. After all, it was a vengeful attack from a martial king who was at the pinnacle of grade 7. Compared to the old blind chap from back then, he was much stronger. Yan Zhongfeng had died, smashed. So had the Shao clan's woman. From the beginning to the end, the woman from Shao clan who had not spoken a single word died just like that. She had not resisted in the least, because she was confident that Qin Shui would not attack her. When she first saw Qin Shui's gaze towards her, she had caught a hint of lust as well as a feeling she was familiar with. Young men tended to be lusty, and the woman was very confident about her looks. Qin Shui really did like women like her best. They looked dignified, intelligent and had a kind of charm to them. However, it was a pity that she had overestimated herself, and Qin Shui decided to try his hands on viciously destroying a flower for once. Viciously destroying a flower, Xiao Shiryun did not even have the opportunity to say anything before she was killed. Qin Shui turned to look at the elderly man behind him. He wiped off the blood from the corner of his lips and stared at the elderly man. However, the elderly man only stared at him in a daze before he said something which stunned Qin Shui. If you add a yen to your name, I'll let you achieve your goal. Not only would you be able to inherit yen clan, this old man will also repay everything with my life. What do you think? After saying this, the elder's gaze burned as he stared at Qin Shui. It was for sure that the blood that flowed in Qin Shui was from Yan clans. It was because Qin Shui looked too similar to Yan Zhongyue. Qin Shui knew that the world of the nine continents belonged to the sects and reputable clans. Therefore, if martial art practitioners hoped to receive protection, or to be able to reign over an area, they would tend to get the support from certain sects or reputable clans. They would also tend to have a strong sense of belonging to their sects and clans. Qin Shui looked at this elderly coldly. Qin Shui cared not for the Yan clan. Therefore, his gaze at that moment had clearly reflected his intentions. The blood that flows in you is from Yan clan. It doesn't matter if you take up the surname Yan. Haha, <laughs> anyway, the end of Yan clan's time is nearing. Even if you did not come today, we would not be able to hold up for another generation. This is for the best. One more thing. You need to be careful of Second Master Xiao from Xiao Clan. He's Sword Tower's elder and is very strong. I'm very happy to be able to help you achieve your goals today. Qin Shui felt as if he was making arrangements before his death, 
but did not know who he was handing it over to. The elderly seemed to be laughing very happily, but suddenly his laughter stopped and he gradually fell down. A shiny silver short sword pierced into his chest, immediately dyeing the sword red. The moment the elderly fell, Qin Shui felt a pang of grief in his heart. Qin Yi, who was standing from afar, looked at this scene and was overcome with tears. Qin Qin stood in a daze with tears in her eyes, as if she did not know what to do. This elderly, Yen Clan's clan head had fallen. It represented that the grudges between Qin Clan and Yen Clan had basically been cleared up. A grudge of twenty years. The burden in Qin Luo's heart had been relieved, but it felt. Qin Yi's sufferings for twenty years. Qin Shui's hard work for fifteen years, suffering for fifteen years. The motivation for all this was so that he could trample Yen Clan. With the fall of the elderly, it represented that Yen Clan was truly falling. Yen Clan had not fully fallen, as they must still put up with Shao Clan's fury. Another thing was that Shao Clan would be able to replace Yen Clan with perfect justification. Of course, the prerequisite was that Shao Clan still existed. Even if Qin Shui was able to wipe out Shao Clan as well, Yen Clan no longer had their earlier status in Yen City, and most of their experts had already either died or were injured. The rest of the people in Yen Clan were basically third grade clans in Yen City, or they may even be considered worse than that. There was just one other way out, which was for Qin Shui to take over Yen Clan. Not only would it not allow the downfall of Yen Clan, it would bring the clan to a greater glory than before. It was just that no one dared to mention this to Qin Shui. The people from Shao clan did not appear, nor did that person. Qin Shui knew that he must now use the most extreme methods. From the start, he had already thought that he should not spare the people from Shao clan. From killing that woman from Shao clan, and even back from the time Qin Shui first came to Yan City and saw that young master Shao bullying Qin Qin, he had made that extreme decision to turn Shao clan into piece of flat ground. Brother Qin Shui Not knowing since when, Yan Linger had already walked up to Qin Shui. Qin Shui turned to glance at this delicate-looking girl, not saying a word. In Yan Clan's sixth branch, a tall lady, the lady who brought Qin Shui to sell those few pieces of fox hides, was in a daze. She would never have thought that the man who she had taken a liking to was actually someone who had come to Yan Clan for revenge, and he was even her uncle's child. While that girl called Xing'er had only taken a quick look back then, she knew that it was Qin Shui. And weren't the few fox hides he had bought the ones the few ladies were wearing? Shao Clan's second master Shao is highly regarded. You must be careful, Yan Linger said softly. Back in Lai Clan, Lai Jutian looked at Qin Shui with sparkling eyes. While he had held great hopes for Qin Shui, he had not expected that Qin Shui was really able to succeed. Such a young martial king expert, and was even a high-level martial king. He even made Lai Jiutian feel that unless a person who was at the pinnacle of the martial king level was here, no one would be able to stand up against Qin Shui, not even a grade 10 martial king. This thought made his heart leap. This meant that a few years later, it was likely that he would become a cultivator at the pinnacle of the martial king level, Green Cloud Continent's strongest level or could even become the first martial saint level cultivator, the future strongest person in Green Cloud Continent. Lai Jiutian fell into a daze. After having a chat with Lai Jiutian and the others, Qin Shui made up some excuse and left for the courtyard with his mother and grandfather. Lai Jiutian was very happy as he looked towards Lai Chu Song, beaming with smiles. Chu Song, since when has your judgment been so good? To think that you were able to befriend such a character. Lai Jiutian's tone sounded very impressed. The benefits Lai clan received just from Qin Shui having stayed at their place for the few days were sufficient. They would be able to move up a notch in their status in Yan City. To be honest, it was not just that. After all, Qin Shui and Lai Chu Song had addressed each other as brothers. Knowing that, who would be so silly to find trouble for Yan clan? This time around, Lai clan had also provided quite a lot of help to Qin Shui and Qin Shui also appreciated their good intentions. To Qin Shui, Lai Jiutian was a person with great vigor, or a sly fox who had trained and disguised itself well. Qin Shui went back to wash up, and also cleaned up his armor while he was at it. After changing into a fresh set of clothes, 
he then came to the living room on the first floor. Ever since they came back, Qin Yi had not been in the right state of mind. Qin Shui understood what his mother was feeling. She had been used to carrying the burden for twenty years, and had not even thought that she would be able to take it off. Suddenly throwing away this huge burden in her heart made her feel very unsettled. She had let her father suffer from injustice, but her son had made it up for her daughter. Qing Qing's gaze towards Qing Shui changed a lot. The same could be said for when she looked at Qing Yi and the others. From the moment she met with her mother and her younger brother, she gradually recalled the feelings from when she was young. Qing Yi had almost not let go of Qing Qing's hand all this time. It was love, concern and a little bit of guilt arising from the bottom of her heart. All these made Qing Qing feel very warm inside. Although Qing Qing did not have a mother at her side, she had a father who loved her. It was just that after she turned ten years old, her world completely changed. Only now could she feel a little hint of warmth. The warmth from family members. This woman next to her was the one who gave her life. The reason she had hung on for so many years was so that she could wait for her to come. Many people had told her that it was hopeless, but she did not believe that. Just like that, she kept waiting for ten years. The day she was waiting for finally arrived. Mother. Her voice was very soft, and extremely stiff, as if it was the voice of a baby who was learning how to speak. But Qing Yi was still as if she had been shocked by lightning. She looked towards Qing Qing, surprise brimming in her eyes, and agitatedly hugged her tightly. Qing Qing, Qing Qing, you're acknowledging me as your mother. Beside them, Qing Shui smiled. It had been twenty years. Qin Shui could imagine that this was the first time Qin Qing had addressed her as mother. That call had also brought about a great impact to Qin Shui's heart. For him, it had also been twenty years for which he had not been able to say the word daddy or father. However, in his previous life, Qin Shui lacked neither fatherly nor motherly love. Despite so, he still felt regret. It had been hard on Qin Qing, and had been hard on his mother. Mother Qing Qing hugged Qing Yi and broke into tears while Qing Shui smiled. To be able to cry and let it all out was the best thing for the Qing Qing now. Having suppressed her emotions for over ten years, being able to cry it all out would be allow her to feel more cheerful. Maybe after crying it out, everything would be better. Chapter 401 The Difficult to Concoct Great Revitalizing Pellet Elephant Form The Golden Gigantic Elephant Qin Shui just couldn't get why the Shao clan had not taken any action. Did they abandon the Yen clan or did they have an ulterior motive? Qin Shui simply couldn't wrap his head around this. He was sure that the people of Shao clan were still in their residence and weren't taking any action. Qin Shui had left the fire bird patrolling in the sky since the beginning, especially to monitor Shao clan's movements. The fire bird, which had evolved and thus possessing a crown, had gained even better psychic abilities. It could report everything it saw to Qin Shui over a very large area. Qin Shui didn't know if the other people's mounts possessed such ability, but history books had mentioned that beast tamers possessed this kind of ability. A beast tamer who owned a few mythical beasts would possess a wider field of vision, making him best in hunting and fleeing. This was something Qin Shui had discovered later. It was a pity that he couldn't achieve the shared vision effects. Otherwise it would have been an extremely formidable skill in his arsenal. Since the sky was turning dark and there were no activities from the Shao clan, Qin Shui decided to go to the Yen clan tomorrow. He was already physically and mentally exhausted today, especially the latter. After all, it was a grudge he had been holding for twenty years. The moon in the sky of the Yen city was concealed by the dark clouds. Soon enough, it started snowing heavily as if cleansing away the blood that was shed during the daytime. The end of the year drew near and this was the second heavy snowfall. It had only been a little more than a day in between the two. In the realm of the violet jade immortal, no matter what, Qin Shui would never abandon his cultivation. This was his insurance when it came to establishing his roots in the world of the nine continents. In this world where strength was of paramount importance, strength was everything and it was the insurance to everything. If the Qin clan had possessed strength, Qin Yi and the rest of the Qin clan would not have suffered such hardships, either would they wouldn't have to wait for twenty years to come to the Yen city. If the Yen clan had possessed strength, this wouldn't have happened in the first place. 
Qin Shui was circulating the ancient strengthening technique that was slowly advancing like a heavy mountain, slowly yet powerfully, it circulated cycle by cycle. The heaviness made him felt like it was as if he was pushing against a mountain. The ancient strengthening technique was coursing throughout his body, continuously refining his meridians, dantian, bones, and at the same time, nourishing his five organs and six viscera with warmth. The yin yang image in the sea of his consciousness was still rotating slowly as usual, constantly strengthening Qin Shui's spirit and warming up his body. The ancient strengthening technique continuously strengthened and toughened up Qin Shui's body. The yin yang image within the sea of his consciousness was sparkling in golden light, nourishing Qin Shui's body and boosting its vitality and resilience. This was also considered to be another form of yin yang balance. Qin Shui opened his eyes when his body slightly shook. His face broke into a small smile. The ancient strengthening technique had entered the 137th cycle, and he could feel his body once again being strengthened a little bit more. Qin Shui really wished that he was at the peak of the fifth heavenly layer, and could reach the 199th cycle. It was not like he had never thought about his ancient strengthening technique breaking through to the sixth heavenly layer. It was because he was well aware that it was an extremely challenging task. The Misty Hall's palace mistress was his opportunity in breaking through to the fifth heavenly layer. It was that wonderful dream with a sea of flowers that allowed the realm of Violet Jade Immortal to level up to the fifth level and concoct the beauty pellets since then. It was that kind of special occasion that enabled him to break through to the realm of the fifth heavenly layer. He had no idea of when would he be able to break through to this heavenly sixth layer or even any opportunity that would allow him to do so. Frenzied bull strength. Immovable mountains. Nature energy. He circulated everything at the same time in order to cultivate more time efficiently. Tai Chi fist. Basic sword techniques. Nine waves great golden Buddha palm. Art of Pursuing Qin Shui practiced the cultivation arts that he needed to practice one after another. He had never slacked off on them. He just spent more time on the ancient strengthening technique since it was the most fundamental to Qin Shui. He then slowly circulated the ancient strengthening technique towards both of his hands. Soon enough, his hands turned slightly translucent. He was currently cultivating saintly hands. He could feel the spiritual key flowing in both of his hands at this very moment. It was of utmost importance for the saintly hands to possess such great power and flow of spiritual key. Cultivating the saintly hands was all about circulating the ancient strengthening technique according to the circulation route to warm up and moisten both hands. All he had to do was keep this cultivation art activated. Since the first time he activated the saintly hands, there hadn't been any changes. Now, they became warm and moist. They were accompanied by a sheen of translucent color. Ever since his ancient strengthening technique broke through to the fifth heavenly layer, the spiritual key of the saintly hands had also turned stronger. Although Qin Shui had never felt any breakthroughs from it, there was an obvious significant increase in its power. This was satisfying enough for Qin Shui, since all he cared about was the increase in strength rather than breakthroughs. As long as his strength continued to grow, it didn't matter if he attained any breakthroughs. Breakthrough only occurs in situations when one couldn't advance any further, and they were necessary for further improvements. Just like the ancient strengthening technique, if one could not attain a breakthrough at the peak of the fourth heavenly layer, then his strength would not be further increased no matter how hard he cultivated. Primal Chaotic Divine Needle Technique Alchemy There was still a lot of time when he was done with his cultivation. After Qin Shui had some food and rested, he walked around the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. He felt extremely content when he saw the lush medicinal herbs growing everywhere. They should be about 600 years old now. The passage of time within the realm had been enhanced a lot after the realm was upgraded to the fifth level. In another two years or so, these medicinal herbs would be 1,000 years old. Qin Shui became excited at the thought of how much this field of 1,000 years old medicinal herbs would be worth. He had even planned out the patches for 2,000 and 3,000 years old medicinal herbs. He only needed to sort them out layer by layer for his own usage after that. Over the past few years, Qin Shui had managed to collect quite an amount of medicinal herbs from here, since the land within the realm of Violet Jade Immortal was vast enough. As long as he found anything valuable that didn't exist within the realm, 
Qin Shui would transfer them in there. Who knew they might come in handy sometime in the future? The amount of fish species in the pond had increased, and Qin Shui's vision was blurred from the varieties of them. There were more colorful fishes, prawns, turtles, crabs, and clams after the realm achieved the fifth level. He even saw a water snake flash quickly across the coral reefs. The gigantic nine-petal lotus that sat in the middle of the pond had a height measured from the bottom of the pond all the way to the surface, stretching out in the air. Brimming with vitality, it caged the entire pond within its surrounding and enhanced the growth of all living things within the water. The second flower of life had also blossomed, and the third flower bud had appeared. However, Qin Shui knew that it still needed about another two years before it would blossom. The flower of life was overflowing with vitality. It was a miraculous flower underneath the heavens. With a single flower blossomed, it would be able to boost the vitality and raise the qualities of plants within a radius of 100 meters by 10%. An increment of 10% in quality was equivalent to a year's worth of maturation. For a 1,000-year-old medicinal herb, a 10% increment in quality would be an additional 100 years of maturation. With two flowers blossomed, it would be able to boost the vitality and raise the qualities of plants within a radius of 200 meters by 10%. With five flowers blossomed, it would be able to boost the vitality and raise the qualities of plants within a radius of 500 meters by 10%. With six flowers blossomed, it would be able to boost the vitality and raise the qualities of plants within a radius of 600 meters by 20%. With nine flowers blossomed, it would be able to boost the vitality and raise the qualities of plants within a radius of 900 meters by 50%. With 10 flowers blossomed, it would be able to boost the vitality and raise the qualities of plants within a radius of 2,000 meters by 100%. The flowers of life were also known as the flowers of eternity. The petals would never wither away. The first blossoming required 100 years. The second blossoming required 200 years. The third blossoming required 300 years. The ninth blossoming required 900 years, and the tenth blossoming required 2,000 years. The flowers of life was a miraculous flower underneath the heavens. Directly consuming the first flower would extend the human lifespan by 10 years. Directly consuming the second flower would extend lifespan by 20 years. Directly consuming the third flower would extend lifespan by 30 years. Directly consuming the fourth flower would Directly consuming the ninth flower would extend lifespan by 90 years. Directly consuming the tenth flower would extend lifespan by 200 years. Only one flower of life could be consumed per person. Regardless of which flower it was that blossomed, one could only consume one flower from any of it. This miraculous flower of life had medicinal properties akin to the great revitalizing pellet, and it reminded him of that pellet. Qin Shui was skeptical about the effects of this second-level king-grade medicinal pill. He had a feeling that this great revitalizing pellet might not have the effects of increasing all strengths by only 20% as its grade usually allowed, but even more than that or with additional special effects. It was a pity that he had yet to gather all the ingredients in the recipe of the great revitalizing pellet which resulted in the current effect of the great revitalizing pellets not being able to rival that of the miraculous flower of life. The usual bowl-sized, pinkish-red flower of the peach of immortality had once again blossomed. This flower would not wither for a hundred years and Qin Shui had already got bored of looking at it. For now, he was just hoping that the peach would ripen soon. He also noticed that the plum blossoms in a distance had blossomed looking like a field of untainted pure white snow. His plum blossom wine was just about to be used up so he planned to brew more after he had settled this incident. Remembering that he still needed to go to the Shao clan tomorrow, Qin Shui decided to cultivate once more. Back Connecting Fist Over this period of time he had become more familiarized with the back connecting fist technique. Although he hadn't been able to clear more acupoints, the energy that flowed from his back to both of his arms had increased more. With his divine arm clearing technique that had attained the great perfection stage, he was able to clear many acupoints on his arms. Their endurance and explosive power had already achieved a very terrifying level. It's important to know that most cultivators were unable to fully utilize the strength in their bodies. To be able to use 80% of the entire strength within one's body is considered a very high amount 
on the condition of being empty-handed. It would be a different story when a divine weapon was equipped because that could allow one to exert an exceeding amount of strength in one's body. For a sword technique cultivator, the difference between fighting empty-handed and fighting equipped with a powerful sword was the difference between heaven and earth. When he was done with back-connecting fist technique, he suddenly remembered that the elephant form among the nine animals mimicry technique could be cultivated too. However, he never got the chance to. He planned to study it as much as he could since he still had some time. Submerging into his sea of consciousness, Qin Shui searched towards the elephant form. There was only one word that could describe his search. Distracting. There were so many things among the elephant form, but he pressed on. After all, the elephant form was one of the most powerful last few mythical beasts in the Nine Animals mimicry technique. In his previous world, the elephants were one of the largest animals on land. It had been said that there was a trace of dinosaurs' bloodline in them. The largest elephant ever recorded in his previous world was about 10 meters in length and 4 meters in height, weighing around a whooping 15,000 gene. In the world of the nine continents, there were also quite a number of mythical beasts of the elephant species, and their body were much more sturdy and tough. They were mostly found in the forest of mythical beasts, towards the northern part of the continent, among the giant beasts' mountains. Just like the golden gigantic elephant of the continent, they had the length of about 30 meters long and the height of 9 meters. Their entire body were tough like diamond and could pierce through a mountain. Known as one of the most powerful mythical beasts, their strength was at least a martial saint level. Chapter 402 Might Elephant Stomp, Diamond Key, Coquettish Qin Shui regained his consciousness and proceeded to delve further. Mighty Elephant Stomp Channeling a gigantic elephant beast through one's body, the technique was released with a sudden stomp on the ground, followed by a thunderous elephant call. It could raise one's key force and enhance the blood flow rate, which would bring about a strength boost. At the same time, there was a moderate chance of success to lower the key force of your opponent. Mighty elephant stomp, small success stage, would raise one's strength by 20% and the force of the stomp was double one's strength. This was only limited to one's base strength, and did not include any other fortification. Mighty Elephant Stomp, large success stage, would raise one's strength by 50% and the force of the stomp was five times of one's strength. This was only limited to one's base strength, and did not include any other fortification. Mighty Elephant Stomp, great perfection stage, would raise one's strength by 100% and the force of the stomp is ten times of one's strength. This was only limited to one's base strength, and did not include any other fortification. Qin Shui was already very amazed after just reading about the mighty elephant stomp. With his current strength nearly at 3 million gene, under the small stage success, his strength would be increased by a staggering 600,000 gene. The force of his stomp would be 6 million gene. If it was in great perfection stage, it would be 30 million gene. Unfortunately, it was only limited to the force of his stomp. If he were to step on someone's body with that, Qin Shui felt that mighty elephant stomp might not be an easy technique to master. Qin Shui continued reading. Mighty elephant's recklessness. Mighty elephant crossing waters. Qin Shui only scanned for the names of the technique and skipped past the descriptions, as he did not have the time now to slowly polish and understand them. Qin Shui had already decided to try Mighty Elephant Stomp, but out of curiosity, he skimmed over the other techniques. He saw that there were many pictures. What appeared most frequently in the pictures were gigantic, intimidating elephants. Their entire bodies seemed to be sculpted out of gold and corundum. Their massive bodies were incomparably tough, and they did not have a hint of clumsiness. In the pictures, some of the massive golden elephants were trumpeting towards the sky, and from the display of their aura, they seemed to be capable of tearing the skies apart. Some of the pictures also showed the crumbling and torn up ground after the stumps. The strength that tore the ground apart also left many creatures split opened. It was then followed by a series of pictures that showed battles of these gigantic elephants. There were monstrous bears the size of small mountains and flying beasts in the air. There were gigantic blue pythons with circumferences like that of water jars, and there was even a giant python with evolved horns or would they be more appropriately called Jiao? These were all defeated by the golden gigantic elephants. Qin Shui browsed quickly. 
There were also serene pictures like the golden gigantic elephants resting on the ground. Qin Shui felt that the most unbelievable image was that of the golden gigantic elephants, not flying, but walking nimbly on the surface of a vast body of water. This was mighty elephant crossing waters. Qin Shui slowly closed his eyes to experience the huge impact the pictures had on him. The imageries in the pictures seemed to flow right in front of Qin Shui. He felt the destruction, the force, the stirring magnificence of their aura. When Qin Shui opened his eyes again, more than two hours have passed. These images did not enhance Qin Shui's abilities, but in the two hours, Qin Shui's visualization of it had changed. Qin Shui was certain that the prowess of the golden gigantic elephant was definitely not lower than that of Marshall Saint Level. He felt as if he had personally witnessed a battle between Marshall Saint Level beasts. For many martial artists, it was an extravagant hope to see a battle between marital Saint Level warriors. Naturally, a battle between martial saint-level beasts was so much more rare. After Qin Shui's state of mind had calmed down, he went back to studying the specifics of the cultivation techniques for the Mighty Elephant Stomp. Mighty Elephant Stomp was a type of diamond key. If he could successfully cultivate diamond key, it would be considered as a small stage success. Gaining the ability to fuse that and the cultivator's key's essence would be at large success stage. Finally, the great perfection stage would be when there was a total fusion of the two. Qin Shui was uncertain about his thoughts regarding that introduction. He felt particularly happy because he had a feeling that there was a special connection between Diamond Key and his Key of the Ancient Strengthening Technique. The channeling root of Diamond Key involved the four limbs, the back, and the abdomen. It was found almost throughout the body. Qin Shui was impressed. No wonder it was called Diamond Key. He bent slightly, almost in an horse stance. Qin Shui shut his eyes and followed the steps in Diamond Key to slowly channel his key without using his key of ancient strengthening technique. He slowly took in a breath and guided his key through the channeling roots in his body as per guided by Diamond Key. As time slipped away, Qin Shui could not feel any sense of change in his vital energy. He knew that channeling the elephant form would not be as easy as the other beasts, since the elephant form was so demanding. Success wouldn't be easy. He stopped and thought for a while. Then, he continued practicing, yet he kept failing time after time. After many failures, Qin Shui had become accustomed to it. The following day, Qin Shui woke up very early. He cleaned up quickly and went to the small courtyard. Facing the east direction, he unhurriedly practiced his Tai Chi fists and boosted his nature energy slightly. After he finished, Qin Shui saw the door to the hall opening. Somehow Ming Yu came out and gave Qin Shui a gentle smile. You're awake. Qin Shui laughed as he shook away the daze from admiring her beauty. Somehow Ming Yu laughed lightly as she saw his slightly flustered expression. After Qin Shui had left the heavenly palace, he had not seen Somehow Ming Yu for almost half a year. Time was such a scary thing. Previously, Qin Shui could bravely kiss her, and later, he was able to hug and even tease her a few times. Now, Qin Shui felt that the feelings he had for her faded, leaving only faint traces and memories. Yes. After answering him, as Sun Hai Mingyu looked at Qin Shui, she started laughing even louder, so much so that her laughing fit confused Qin Shui. Am I that funny? Qin Shui looked at Sun Hai Mingyu quizzically. I have never seen this side of you. It is cute. You look just a shy guy. Tseng Hai Mingyu explained as she blinked her dark, deep, and beautiful eyes adorably. Seeing her actions, Qin Shui knew that she must have learned it unconsciously from Hui Yun Luli. The thing was that, when such a ravishing beauty as herself does these slightly cute, these slightly enticing little antics, the lethality, was even higher than those by the lovely cute types of women. Seeing Qin Shui look at her again with that foolish daze, Tseng Hai Mingyu gave Qin Shui the evil eye and pulled Qin Shui back to reality again. Yeah, yeah, since you don't like that side of me, I won't act any further. It is quite tiring. Qin Shui walked over smiling and hugged Sun Hai Mingyu gently. Now, it was Sun Hai Mingyu's turn to be dazed. Without knowing what had happened, Sun Hai Mingyu was already in Qin Shui embrace. She could smell a light scent, and it was faint and special. It was not nasty smelling but just natural. It was just a hug, yet Qin Shui could felt his heart racing. 
he could lose himself in that soft touch, and his heart was aroused as he looked at the slightly powered extremely gorgeous face that was so close to his. Qin Shui thought unconsciously about the three portraits of beauty. When he first saw Tsum Hai Mingyu, he felt that she had a different aura from Ye Jiana, but she was at that class of beauty. Ye Jiana was one of the women in the portraits of beauty. Logically, Tsun Hai Mingyu should also be in one. From how the art maestro depicts the beautiful women on the portraits of beauty, he was capturing the top beauties of women with twelve different auras. The portraits of beauty didn't simply emphasize the beauty of women's external appearances. What they emphasized more was their charm and charisma, as well as that kind of otherworldly transcendence. When Qin Shui came out of his reverie, he found Sun Hai Mingyu wrapping her arms around his neck. It was so light. Her pair of eyes, so beautiful that they could overthrow empires, were staring deeply at his. Who has that sort of charm? Who could let young Master Qing think of her while holding me? He could not tell the emotions behind Sun Hai Mingyu's tone but Qin Shui felt slightly anxious as they were spoken in his ears. His heart was beating very quickly. That sentence aroused him deeply, and he thought about the expression he had. Was it so obvious that he was thinking about women? Could that be a woman's intuition? Your young master Qin only thinks of you. Come, give your lord husband a kiss. Qin Shui laughed as he planned to kiss on Sun Hai Mingyu on her lips. You scoundrel. Sun Hai Mingyu quickly turned her head but Qin Shui still managed to kiss her face. It was soft and gentle. Suddenly, the hall doors swung open again. So both of you are actually having an intimate rendezvous here early in the morning. Why is everyone's mood that good today? Huyun Luli, who was wearing a purple fox coat, came over while joking. Luli, don't talk nonsense. Sun Hai Mingyu pushed away Qin Shui in a panic. Her face flushed red. Qin Shui, big sister actually likes you a lot. You better not betray her. Huiyun Lula giggled. Qin Shui looked at Huiyun Luli eyes sincerely, but Huiyun Luli kept shying away from his gaze. Qin Shui laughed, and Sun Hai Mingyu followed. You naughty lass, you always don't say what you think, I will return him to you. Sun Hai Mingyu pushed Huiyun Luli toward Qin Shui and left smiling. Whoa. Qin Shui catched Huiyun Luli. He felt that this scene was familiar. This was the second time, previously it was the same. Huiyun Luli was as shy as an ostrich. She hid her face in Qin Shui's chest, not daring to look up. Qin Shui lifted Huiyun Luli's delicate chin and looked at that coquettish woman. Her eyes shut tightly, revealing her thick lush and eyelashes that were slightly trembling. She had a sexy allure and a hidden sensuality. Qin Shui saw her petal-like pouty lips and slowly consumed them, pulling them in. Huiyun Luli's small figure trembled a little as she closed her eyes tighter. Qin Shui played with those petal-like lips, gently sucking them and holding them. Then he smiled. Everyone will be out later. Why don't you come to my room tonight? I will let you do what you want with me. Huiyun Luli opened her limpid pair of smoky eyes. She looked at Qin Shui with an expression full of sexual desire and seduction. She blinked her eyes flirtatiously as she planted a kiss on Qin Shui's face and turned to walk into the hall. Qin Shui shook his head with a sheepish smile. He shook away those thoughts and continued practicing his Tai Chi fists before going back into the hall. The people from Lai residence had already prepared breakfast. Even though they were going to the Shao residence today, the atmosphere was actually not that tense. In just two days, Qin Shui realized that Qing Qing had changed a lot. Even though Qin Shui had yet to see Qing Qing smile, her expression had mellowed and she even initiated short conversations with him. Big sister, we will be going to Xiao residence and after that we can go home. Chapter 403 Killing to Xiao Clan, Second Master Xiao the Expert Xiao Clan was located in the northeast direction in Yan City and was not far from Yan Clan. In Yen City, the strongest few clans which had been passed down for a few hundred years or even up to a thousand years were as followed, Yen Clan, Xiao Clan, Guo Clan, Lai Clan, and Luo Clan. They had a strong root, and without absolute powers, one would not be able to do anything to them. Getting involved in one would bring all the others in. It was just how Yen Clan and Xiao Clan were in laws. Xiao Clan was backed up by Second Master Xiao who was an elder in Sword Tower, and was considered quite an important elder. Guo clan, 
Lai Clan, and Luo Clan were also on quite close relationships. The daughters from Gua Clan and Lai Clan were both Luo Clan's wives. It was undeniable that relations by marriage had a great impact no matter where one went. It was also the most direct and effective means. Gua Clan, Lai Clan, and Luo Clan's ally was actually a bid to compete with Yen Clan and Xiao Clan. This just about allowed them to maintain a balance with Yen Clan and Xiao Clan. It was because Guapola's father, Gu Yanlong, was actually the protector of Jiuzhou City's Qin Clan. While Qin Clan was slightly inferior compared to the Heavenly Palace and the Sword Tower, if they were to fight to the bitter death, they might not necessarily lose. Most importantly, Qin Clan was especially biased to their own people. This was also the reason why Xiao Clan did not dare to touch Guapolo. Xiao Clan's residence was very big, and from the fire bird, Qin Shui and the others could see that the interior was formed from many small residences. Each of them was filled with beautifully engraved pavilions, as well as exquisitely designed structures that glittered in the winter's sunlight, appearing to be very splendorous and majestic. The heavy snowfall from the previous night had once again painted the whole world white. However, Qin Shui knew that this place would soon turn into a battlefield soon, and everything here may disappear very soon. Qin Shui's glanced across Xiao Clan and he noticed that there were many martial arts practitioners here. As Qin Shui looked at them, all of them had also sensed the pressure from the sky, and therefore lifted their head to look up. Look! What a big demonic beast! A martial art practitioner shouted out, astonished. It's the mutated beast Red Luan. Look! It's even a phoenix crown level demonic beast! Go report to second master. That demon from Qin clan is here. Grandfather, you guys stay here and don't come down. Qin Shui said as he smiled at Qin Luo, Qin Yi, and the others. Qin Shui, be careful. Qin Yi said worriedly. Qin Shui, be careful. Huyin Luli tugged on Qin Shui's hand and said. Qin Shui smiled and nodded. Almost all of them said something to Qin Shui to express their worry and encourage him. Qin Luo, Qin Yi, Qin He, Qin Yu, Shi Qing Zhuang, Sun Hai Ming Yu, and Huyin Luli. Qing Qing was the only one who looked at Qin Shui seriously, unlike the others. Towards Qing Qing, it was enough for Qin Shui to have seen this gaze with a hint concern. Thus, he looked towards Qing Qing and smiled, preparing to jump down. Qing Shui. Just then, Qing Qing called out softly. Qing Shui gradually turned, only to discover that Qing Qing had walked up to him. Amidst his astonished gaze, Qing Qing hugged Qing Shui without saying a word. At that moment, Qing Shui felt a very mysterious feeling. It was very warming, and his heart felt very calmed. Qing Shui initially felt uneasy over the decision to come to the Xiao clan today. After two breaths of time, Qing Qing let go of Qing Shui. Her lips curled up slightly, curving only a little bit. There was a hint of smile, but it seemed as if it was not there in the first place. It was a smile, and while it was almost non-existent, Qin Shui was sure that it was Qing Qing's happy expression. She was very happy. That extremely faint smile would forever stay in Qing Shui's heart, hiding all the winter sunlight completely. It was a pity that Qing Shui was the only one who had seen it. The fire bird's location in the sky was not very high, so Qing Shui jumped down directly. With Qing Shui's current physique, he would still be fine even if he were to jump down from an even taller height. Qing Shui did not let them alight. After all, it was safe on the fire bird's back. Qing Shui was confident that the rides in Yan clan and Xiao clan, even the one second young master Xiao had, would not be better than the fire bird. Moreover, he was still around too, together with his heaven-defying soul shake bell. Qing Shui didn't land loudly, but he caused the accumulated snow to fly in all directions. The people from Xiao clan had already came out, with a tall elderly wearing a suit of silver-colored armor at the very front. The elderly's height was at least a head taller than Qin Clan. He had a wide mouth and big, lion-like nose, along with a rectangular-shaped face and thick brows. His eyes were like bronze bells, and he was holding on to an extremely large longsword. The longsword was completely pitch black, nearly two meters and similar to the elder's height. It was about two palms width. Its thickness was about one inch, and it did not have a sharp edge. Through his aura, Qin Shui could feel that he was Xiao Clan's pillar, 
second master Xiao. Through looking at his weapon, Qin Shui could also tell that he was the elder of Sword Tower's heavy sword tower. Behind the elder, Qin Shui saw a person which he detested, Young Master Xiao. Qin Shui only knew that he was called Young Master Xiao, and he had met this flirtatious young man when he first came to Yan City. He was a person Qin Shui extremely detested. When Qin Shui landed, all the cultivators in the area immediately surrounded him, squashing the thick layer of snow on the ground. There was even a batch of archers among the most exterior of this encirclement, and there were no less than a hundred of them. They had silver-colored strong bows, and while the bows were not big, their thickness was comparable to that of a person's arm. They were made from the bones of demonic beasts. As for the bowstring, they were made from demonic beasts' tendons. The swords were black in color. Poison arrow. Qin Shui now knew why Shao Clan could be so calm. Apparently they were waiting for his arrival. Qin Shui was not sure of the prowess these bows and arrows had, but he knew that they would definitely not be weak. Qin Shui was very confident in his current defense, as well as in his seven-star armored vest. The reason he had not came to Shao Clan the day before was because the seven-star armored vest could only be used once a day. Having taken the pure gold mystic turtle core and increased his defense by another fold, Qin Shui was heaven-defying in Yan Jiang country. Moreover, Qin Shui was also very confident in his ancient strengthening technique. However, Qin Shui still told himself that he needed to be extremely careful. He knew that he must not let himself fail miserably despite this being an easy task. Great courage. The rising generation is really to be reckoned with. To think that you would really came to our Shao clan. Yan clan is truly too shameful. That tall elder said while looking at Qin Shui with great interest. Yan clan had placed their last hopes on Shao clan, haha, but Shao clan did not take any action. I wonder if if anyone else will ever want to work together with the Shao clan in the future. Qin Shui activated his spiritual sense, and at the same time, pondered about how to fight this battle. This matter concerns your Yan clan, so how could I possibly step in? Shouldn't you be thanking me for not stepping in? If I did, would you still have the chance to come to our Shao clan? When the elder said this, he released immense confidence. It was only now that Qin Shui understood why Shao Clan's people were all at Shao Clan, and now, most of them were not far away. From the beginning, they had never given a hoot about him. Qin Shui gave it some thought before smiling at Second Master Xiao and said, Are we having a one-on-one -on -one battle? Second Master Xiao smiled, shaking his head, Although I have the confidence to win against you, I can't afford to lose. There are many people who are still relying on me. That's why, my goal today is to kill you. As for the method, I'll use whatever's the safest. Qin Shui was stunned. This old chap is realistic, or rather, very cunning. These kind of people who goes after results is the most terrifying of them all. It's because they can they can disregard the means and look only for their goals. As long as they can achieve their goals, they don't care about anything else. Do you think that what I've said is right? Second Master Xiao chuckled and said, Right, very right. Qin Shui nodded, smiled and said. After saying that, Qin Shui made his move. Seven Star Armored Vest. His right foot fiercely stomped onto the ground. In that instant, the surroundings were filled with snow. Everyone's vision was even affected. Mighty Elephant Stomp. Let out the arrows. Second Master Xiao immediately gave the command, then pounced towards Qin Shui. His speed did not lose out to Qin Shui's. Since Qin Shui had not mastered his mighty elephant stomp, he was not able to split the ground. Qin Shui only wanted to let those archers lose their targets. After the stomp, Qin Shui pounced towards those archers in front of him and simultaneously shot out rocks towards those behind him. Sweeping through a thousand men, Qin Shui's speed was raised to the extreme. His big dipper sword immediately became a fatal weapon, and his sword took away many lives. In an instant, over ten archers immediately died. However, the remaining archers continued to shoot towards Qin Shui. Qin Shui's speed was too fast, however, and he had left the central spot, causing many archers to be injured. In almost an instance, the whole place was in chaos. There were many warriors present but almost half of them were killed. Those who were shot down by the arrows died in less than two breaths worth of time. Terrible cries rang out, 
and the skies were had a thick bloody smell. Very quickly, the snow was splattered with red, dissolving from the deceased's blood. Divinity protection. When second master Zhao's heavy sword smashed towards Qin Shui's head with a great aura, Qin Shui used this superb skill from the heavenly palace. Despite so, he still did not dare to confront second master Zhao's attack with his head. Dodging the attack, the big dipper sword in his hand suddenly turned and thrust towards second master Zhao's throat. Just as a faint layer of gold light appeared on Qin Shui's body, second master Zhao retreated without any hesitation and swung his sword to block Qin Shui's thrust. He knew better than anyone how terrifying Heavenly Palace's divinity protection was. When the opponent was caught unaware, it could be a matter of life and death. During this time, Qin Shui once again killed over ten people with concealed weapons. Although these archers were all at Xientian, they had just attained Xientian recently. There were also not many people around him who had reached the martial king level. Most of them were at the higher grades of Xientian or at the pinnacle of Xientian. Xiao Clan's formidability was all due to second master Xiao. Without him, Xiao Clan would only be a third-rate clan in Yan City. This was the prowess of a high-level warrior, the importance of a strong warrior to a clan and to a sect. The time the divinity protection could last for was actually very short. It was only less than the time required for two breaths. But it was sufficient for Qin Shui. Qin Shui had been shot by an arrow once, but his golden ring battle armor had completely fended it off. Within another two breaths of time, Qin Shui cleared up the remaining tens of archers who were holding poisonous bow and arrows, as well as the other cultivators. Leaving them alone would not give him a peace of mind. After killing the last archer, Qin Shui suddenly charged towards Xiao Clan's direct descendants. However, second master Xiao blocked Qin Shui's path. Without divinity protection, let's see what else you can use to pit against me. Second master Xiao did not show any reactions because of the deaths of over a hundred Xientian cultivators. Chapter 404 The Threat of the Sword Tower's Powerful Figure The Domineering Misty Hall's Palace Mistress of Absolute Beauty I'm staking everything on this. Qin Shui shot out the stone he clutched within his palm. Like a meteor catching up with the moon, it sparked brilliantly yet brought the scent of doom. Pooh! Young Master Zhao's head exploded. The people around them were drenched in his blood and his scattered brains splattered on them. None of them seemed to notice it, however, because they realized how close they were to death at that moment. Most people in the Xiao clan could be considered a cultivator, but only very few made it into the Xientian realm. Young Master Xiao was just a good-for-nothing young man from a wealthy clan. He had only reached the pinnacle of Hotian through consuming medicine pills. Qin Shui's armor had raised his strength by a lot. If he was fighting with a cultivator of the same grade or someone who didn't know divinity protection or state of the Seven Stars armor, they would have been dead or heavily injured by now. Second Master Xiao was intimidated earlier on because he was afraid that Qin Shui would catch him off guard with his divinity protection technique. However, he no longer had nothing to be afraid of. Although he had a lot of expectation towards the archers at first, the result was still within his expectation in the end. After all, Qin Shui was someone who had single-handedly slayed the Yen clan's martial king grade 7 cultivator. On top of the constellation steel armor that he currently had on himself, he should be able to finish this young man off without a problem using his current strength. The second master Xiao was staring pointedly at Qin Shui. Roar! A heaven-shaking tiger roar rang out, shaking the pavilion buildings nearby and causing the accumulated snow to slide off from the roofs. The dancing snowflakes made a beautiful scene. Immovable mountains. Nature energy. Frenzied bull strength. Qin Shui gradually activated all the strength-enhancing skills and tightly gripped onto the big dipper sword in his hands. Prepare to die! The second master Xiao yelled and suddenly dashed towards Qin Shui with a gigantic sword in his hands. The gigantic sword hacked towards Qin Shui with the suppressive force of a mountain. A series of explosive noises was heard over the air, and the pavilion buildings nearby even started shaking. Some of the glazed roof tiles couldn't withstand the tremors and ended up falling along with the snow that had been piled up on them. They shattered on the ground with crisp noises that could be heard over a very long distance. Qin Shui knew that he shouldn't move backwards. If he didn't stop his opponent now, 
then his opponent would gain the upper hand. Qin Shui was either weak in offensive power nor techniques, but he lacked in experience and applying his techniques in real combats. Clang! Qin Shui's Big Dipper sword clashed against his opponent's heavy sword. The wave of powerful force permeated their surroundings. A rumbling noise was heard. The nearest pavilion building immediately collapsed to the ground, and some people from the Shao clan nearby were killed on the spot from the shockwave. The piled-up snow and limestone powder were flying everywhere. It was only now that Qin Shui witnessed the prowess of Second Master Shao. No wonder why this old geezer was so arrogant. His strength was actually at the peak of Martial King Grade 9. Although Qin Shui was cultivating the ancient strengthening technique and didn't follow the standards of grading used in the world of nine continents, his sensitivity towards his opponent's strength was exceptionally sharp. He could usually be able to sense cultivators that were stronger than him. Clang clang clang. The second master Shao was unleashing a torrent of sword techniques like a violent storm. One slash followed after another. Qin Shui was most surprised about the power in his opponent's sword, which was gradually increasing. Perpetual sword technique? Qin Shui was aware that there was a type of perpetual sword technique in the world of the nine continents, allowing sword techniques to be increasingly powerful after each chain of uses. For every sword attack, a trace of power will be stored and carried forward to the next attack, progressively building up the power of techniques. If conditions allowed, the power on his sword would be increased continuously. Even if it was only a small amount of power, it would be terrifying once accumulated. Such is the might of the perpetual sword technique. However, the extent of this perpetual sword technique power varied depending on the user's stamina, attainments, and situation, as well as his opponent's level of cultivation. Soon enough, Qin Shui could feel the power on second master Zhao's sword rising sharply. From this, he knew that his perpetual sword technique must have been cultivated to a considerably high level. Heavenly Thunder Slash Frenzied Bull's Strength Sword of Fourth Wave Qin Shui exerted every ounce of his strength into this attack. On top of that, this was done just as Second Master Xiao was unleashing his own full-powered attack, as Qin Shui knew this was his chance. This was the only way he could completely put his Sword of Fourth Wave to good use. He wasn't afraid to meet force with force. He was more worried that his opponent would discover that he had been concealing his true strength. If that happened, it would be difficult for him to use brute force. This was because all of his formidable techniques required some time to unleash. Vigilant opponents would definitely have more than enough time to evade his attacks. Second Master Xiao raised his eyebrows at the sudden eruption of Qi Stance. A look of shock flashed across his face but was soon replaced by a more ferocious look. Qin Shui could see his opponent clenching his teeth. Clang 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 clang. Second Master Zhao's pupil constricted at every contact. He had no choice but to clash his gigantic sword against his opponent's sword with his full strength. Kacha. Clang clang. The heavy sword fell onto the ground. Second Master Zhao's face was drained of colors. His palms were ripped and his arms were broken, unable to move. Qin Shui's arms, which attained great perfection stage from divine arm clearing technique, were way stronger than those of Second Master Xiao. When the two enormous forces crashed with each other, the force that was inflicted on Qin Shui's arms was greater than his opponent. This was the most basic benefit of the divine arm clearing technique. He actually concealed his true strength. Second Master Xiao was thunderstruck by this revelation. He knew that he was going to die. Qin Shui paused for short while before throwing himself at Second Master Xiao. He felt a jolt of numbing pain in both of his arms just now, but he knew that Second Master Xiao's arms were already broken, in addition to sustaining internal injuries. Killing him right now would be as easy as turning one's hand. Stop! Right at that moment, a dignified voice yelled out. After hearing that yell, Qin Shui sped up even more. This man needed to be killed. He must not spare the second master Xiao. This man must be eliminated. Do you wish to cause a war between the Heavenly Palace and Sword Tower? Do you want them to commence the war right now or let the Sword Tower murder your entire clan? The dignified and threatening voice rang out once again. Qin Shui pressed the sword to second master Zhao's throat, sinking its blade a little into the skin. 
blood slowly spilled out. The face of Second Master Xiao was already ashened, like that of a corpse. Qin Shui was an elder of the Heavenly Palace, and this Second Master Xiao was an elder of the Sword Tower. Why didn't anyone from the Heavenly Palace do the same for him when he was stuck in a situation like just now? No one had yelled and questioned the opponents if they wished to provoke hostility between the Sword Tower and the Heavenly Palace. Why could Tan Yang, who took Ming Yujelu away, use the same strategy too? The main reason was because he had a few cultivators with him at that time whom he could not compete with. Qin Shui's eyes turned bloodshot in fury. He wished so badly to plunge his sword into his throat. Twenty years of grudge. This was the most important moment. Yet he wasn't allowed to, just like how old man Sung couldn't save him back then. He still had a family so he must take the long view. Master, second master Xiao shouted in delight. Qin Shui turned around and looked at the skies. There was a gigantic silver-colored tiger in the air that was about 15 meters long. His immediately eyes lit up the moment he saw those pair of massive wings. Heaven Soaring Silver Tiger It was one of the mutated beasts which was also considered to be a much powerful mythical beast. A middle-aged man who appeared to be about 40 years old stood on top of the Heaven Soaring Silver Tiger. He was a dashing man who had graying hair and a stern-looking face. He was the master of Second Master Xiao? That would make his position equivalent to a supreme elder in Heavenly Palace. Qin Shui remembered about Tsang Wuya and the bunch of old monsters. This man who stood before him didn't seem to be old and clumsy. In fact, he looked even younger than Second Master Xiao. Release him and I will spare your lives. We will act like today's incident never happened. The man looked downwards from a high level at Qin Shui. His superiority made Qin Shui felt extremely irritated. What if I don't release him? Qin Shui stared back at the man on the back of the heaven-soaring silver tiger. Right at that instant, he could feel the helplessness in his heart. He who had a good tree behind his back would have a good shade. No matter how strong Qin Shui was, he was still alone without someone behind him. They could think up of many possible methods to make him submit to them. Then, even if I don't do anything, the Heavenly Palace will take care of you. For now, the Heavenly Palace and Sword Tower will not start a war over you alone, so they will definitely choose to sacrifice you. The voice of the man was full of confidence. Qin Shui felt like his heart was bleeding right now. He had a feeling that if he finished this second Master Xiao here today, he and his family would die in this person's hands even if they tried to escape. This was a gap. There was still a distance in between Qin Shui's current strength and this bunch of old fellows. Although it wasn't huge, the difficulty was like a wide trench. Crossing it would not be a matter of only one or half days. Is today going to be like this all over again? Qin Shui's hands were trembling. He was suppressing himself with all the power within him to not plunge this sword into Second Master Zhao's throat. Second Master Xiao had been delighted at the appearance of that man earlier but his face paled once again in terror when he saw Qin Shui's hands shaking. Even both of his legs were trembling too. This was a matter of life and death, especially when he could be dead at any moment now. To exhibit these kind of behavior was very normal. Anyone can say that they are not afraid of death, but when their life was being threatened, anyone would be afraid of dying. Such was human instinct. Why? Do you really insist on having me to forcefully make you release him? the man said impatiently. That imposing aura of his was really overwhelming. Fine, never mind. Qin Shui's heart felt like it had sunk to the bottom of the valley right at that instant. At the same time, it held resentment and a very, very deep grudge. However, a bird's cry clearly rang out right at that moment. Screech! Qin Shui, you are not alone! Kill him and see what he can do about it! When Qin Shui heard the bird's cry, he had the sudden impulse to tear up. That was the cry of Blue Luan, the mount that they Misty Hall's palace mistress rode. Qin Shui had no idea when had this sound become so familiar to him. He felt like the blood in his entire body was lit up in flames when he heard that domineering sacred melodious voice. Pooh! His long sword directly pierced through second master Xiao. He then slid into the crowd of the bunch of good-for-nothings from Xiao clan lifted the sword in his hands and killed them all. He had already witnessed the ugly sides of these people in Yen City last time. 
Qin Shui had said it before, anyone who had bullied Qin Qin needed to die. Even if not within ten years, then twenty years would do. The violet power in Qin Shui transformed into a bloodthirsty demon. By the time he had unleashed all of the suppressed emotion within him, and almost every single one of those good-for-nothing people had been massacred. Qin Shui raised his head and looked at the blue Luan in the air. The Misty Hall's palace mistress was fully dressed in a snow-white garment. Her hair done in a high bun fastened by a white phoenix hairpin, appearing untainted by even a speck of dust. Her face was still concealed by a snow-white veil as usual. The uncovered pair of dark and deep eyes of hers had an ethereal glow, even exuding a slight aura of magnificence. She carried a similar aura and allure that Sun Hai Mingyu had, along with Ye Jiangna's extraordinary grace. She was also the most powerful figure on the Green Cloud continent. Her strength had already reached its peak when there was no martial saint grade cultivator on the Green Cloud continent. This was the second time she came in time of danger. Qin Shui gazed upon this unattainable woman, sighing sorrowfully in his heart. He didn't understand why she had helped him. Right now, she was someone like Ye Jiang to Qin Shui, someone whom he owed favors to. And he would never be able to repay everything to them in his whole life. Chapter 405 The Woman Named Di Chen, Clearing of Many Acupoints Standing atop the heaven-soaring silver tiger, the man grimly looked at Misty Hall's palace mistress. Standing at the bottom, Qin Shui could tell that there was a hint of complication in his eyes. Qin Di, why is it that you must go against me every time? The man looked towards the Misty Hall's palace mistress and asked. Qin Di? Misty Hall's palace mistress's name? This man knows her name. Do they know each other? Qin Shui was puzzled. With Misty Hall's palace mistress's character, she should know not know someone from Sword Tower, let alone talk to them in such a tone. Moreover, Qin Shui seemed to have perceived something from this man's face, but he was not sure. After seeing that person's handsome face with an aged aura, however, he felt that this guy was much better than those gigolos. Could it be that? Qin Shui did not understand the Misty Hall's palace mistress, and even more so, their relationship. However, he was still astonished by this thought. He belongs to our heavenly palace. What's wrong with me standing up for him? Misty Hall's palace mistresses said, not even looking at that guy. Younger Marshall's sister, even if I had done something wrong in the past, you had not lost anything. Why do you need to keep doing this to me? Moreover, I about you. I'm not your younger Marshall's sister, nor do I want to listen to anything you say. Another thing in the future, don't bring up the sword tower to threaten members of our heavenly palace. If it comes down to it, I don't mind going for an all-out war between Heavenly Palace and Sword Tower. That is, if you guys are willing and can handle it. Misty Hall's palace mistress interrupted what the man was saying. Sigh. The man let out a sigh, looking silently at Misty Hall's palace mistress who was not looking back. You've never done this before, but for the sake of this fellow, this is the second time you've come so far here. Is it that I can't be compared to him? The man looked at Misty Hall's palace mistress not willing to give up. What answered him was silence. There was no reaction to what he had said, as if she had not heard anything. She stood there on the blue one alone. From the north came a ravishing maiden, whose beauty stands alone. One look at her, and cities would fall. The man flew off on the heaven-soaring silver tiger. Standing below, Qin Shui looked at the misty hall's palace mistress who was on the blue one's back. She looked back at Qin Shui then at the Red Luan and the people on the Red Luan. Palace Mistress Sun Hai Mingyu and Huyin Luli looked at Misty Hall's Palace Mistress happily. Misty Hall's Palace Mistress nodded towards the two ladies and revealed a faint smile. It was a long distance between them, and one must be at least the level of Sientian to be able to see that faint smile. Swoosh! The nine heaven immortal silk shot out towards Qin Shui. Qin Shui caught it, and was tugged by the Misty Hall's palace mistress. He was lifted up and soon landed on the back of the blue Luan. I'll be back in a while, after he told his family, Qin Shui left with the Misty Hall's palace mistress. This was the second time. He had also rode on the blue Luan the same way the other time. Thank you, Qin Shui said, smiling bitterly. Towards Misty Hall's palace mistress, Qin Shui no longer knew what feelings he had. 
Both times she had come to save him when he was in the most dangerous predicament. No matter what kind of person she was, she had already become an indestructible presence in Qing Shui's heart. In the past, I had really underestimated you. To be able to achieve so much progress within this little time, it seems like you'll be able to become a figure who'd be able to take on great things very soon. No need to thank me. I only rely on my own instinct when I do things. Hearing her casual tone stunned Qing Shui. Following her instincts when she does things would mean that whatever she does would be subjected to her own intent. If it was something she wanted to do, she would not care about personal losses. Qing Shui had originally wanted to ask why she had done this, but he decided to shut up after thinking about what she had said earlier. Moreover, the two of them did not really knew each other well, therefore Qing Shui had also dismissed the thought of asking her about the man. Do you still have that wine you gave me? The Misty Hall's palace mistress seemed too embarrassed when asking this. Before Qin Shui could reply, she continued, That wine had helped me with my breakthrough. I can trade for it with items. Looking at Misty Hall's palace mistress's expression, Qin Shui knew that it could be the first time she had taken the initiative to ask someone for something, or to trade things. When Qin Shui heard her words, he felt overjoyed. It was not because she had agreed to trade for it with other items, but rather, because he was finally able to be of help to her. Having received her help for twice in a row, he finally could feel a little more at ease after knowing that she needed this item. Sometimes, one would be able to feel extremely happy just by being able to help others. A debt of gratitude is the heaviest to bear. He did not think much of his plum blossom wine, but the same could not be said for other people. Therefore he quickly said, No need for the trade, but you have to wait for me for one day. This thing cannot be brewed in large quantities each time. I'll bring them to you tomorrow. In the future, I'll save them all for you. Hmm. Misty Hall's palace mistress looked at Qin Shui and replied. The two of them then fell into silence. It was true that Qin Shui did not understand her, but the same could be said for her. She did not understand Qin Shui either. Qin Shui had a lot to say but did not dare to speak up. His feelings towards her were mostly that of respect. Suddenly, he recalled that the man had addressed her as Chin Di. Her surname was Chin. This surname was very rare, but it was reputable surname. An extremely large clan in Central Continent went by the surname of Chin. This must be the reason for why you've left the Heavenly Palace. Misty Hall's palace mistress might have felt it to be too awkward, therefore she spoke up. Hmm. I had originally thought that I'd be able to handle this with my abilities. It's just that I would never have thought that the one who came was another expert from Sword Tower. If you had not come today, I'd probably be filled with regrets. Qin Shui said bitterly. Misty Hall's palace mistress also felt a little helpless. There were various mysterious connections between Qin Shui and herself. This time around, that connection with Qin Shui made her feel very uneasy, just like the previous time. It was why she had no choice but to make another trip. This was already the second time. It was just like what that beastly martial brother of his had said, she had never gone through so much effort for the sake of a man. But now, she had made exceptions, and she had done it twice for the same man. In the future, don't be overwhelmed by such threats. The heavenly palace is your backing. His sword tower will not go out on war with the heavenly palace, at least not now. You still have me. If you have any problems, you can look for me as well. If it's within the Green Cloud Continent, I'll still be able to help you. Misty Hall's palace mistress said with indifference. Qin Shui felt very warm inside. He turned his head to look at this lady who was the closest to divine in his spiritual sense. Suddenly, Qin Shui did not know why his heavenly vision technique was suddenly activated. With it being activated, Qin Shui could see that Misty Hall's palace mistress' body had quite a lot of small glows. There's so many acupuncture point cleared. Qin Shui was stunned. He would never have thought that she also knew the arts of clearing acupuncture points. And compared to his own, she had more acupuncture points which were cleared. He now had about a hundred acupuncture points cleared, and so had the Misty Hall's palace mistress. Most importantly, Qin Shui saw that some of her acupuncture points had a faint glow to them, akin to the moon hidden behind the clouds. They revealed just the slightest bit of a glow. Theses were the acupuncture points which were about to be cleared. 
Most importantly, Jean Shui could see that one important acupuncture point of hers was just about to be cleared. Yongquan acupuncture point. If he let her clear it herself, it would probably take her a very long time. Qin Shui was at a loss. It was because he had the means to help her clear this acupuncture point within an hour. It was a pity that the Yongquan acupuncture point was located at the bottom of one's foot, just slightly further up front from the arch of one's foot. Qin Shui wanted to help her clear it up with his acupuncture but was worried that she would misunderstand him. Moreover, how could a lady like her who would even cover up her face would let a guy touch her feet? It would even have to be done to her bare foot. Do you know that your Yongquan acupuncture point will be cleared very soon? Qin Shui decided to test her out. After all, it was her decision to make on whether she would agree to his help. He just wanted to express his gratitude to her. Qin Shui really have no improper thoughts towards her. Qin Shui did not have the courage to chase a lady like her. Before her, Qin Shui realized that there was nothing he could be proud of in himself. In other words, he just felt inferior. Inferior before her. Even so, Qin Shui felt that it was very normal. Amongst the trillions of population in the green cloud continent, who would not feel inferior before her? Therefore, he felt that it was very normal. Moreover, Qin Shui felt that the feelings he had towards her were mostly that of gratitude. Misty Hall's palace mistress looked at Qin Shui curiously with her beautiful, illuminating eyes. They were similar to that to the moon, yet pitch black and profound. When Qin Shui came into contact with her gaze, he quickly looked away. He was afraid that he would lose his ease. However, his obvious shun was noticed by the Misty Hall's palace mistress, who revealed a faint smile. It was a pity that Qin Shui had not seen that beautiful eyes which had on a hint of smile. It seems like you've also cultivated such acupuncture point clearing arts. The Misty Hall's palace mistress looked at Qin Shui and said, she had a hint of surprise and smile in her eyes. Yes, I can help you clear your Yongquan acupuncture point with acupuncture. Hearing Qin Shui's words, Misty Hall's palace mistress looked at Qin Shui seriously. She knew the importance of this acupuncture point, and that it would take her at least five years to clear it by herself. It could even take up to ten or even twenty years before she was able to clear it. She knew that with acupuncture, she would need to take off his shoes and not have anything over her foot. Moreover, he would need to directly touch her foot. She instinctively wanted to reject when she thought about it. However, she recalled the scene in her dreams when her breast had already been touched by him, the heart-pounding feelings she had felt. She recalled that, in a way, it was as if he had felt her breast many times. She could just take this event as one of the scenes in the dream. Qin Shui saw Misty Hall's palace mistress's hesitant gaze. He long knew that the chances were possibly close to zero, so he lifted his head, smiled and said, Don't force yourself. I feel that the acupuncture points you have cleared are different from mine. Otherwise, you can also consider cultivating my acupuncture point clearing art. Qin Shui's heavenly vision technique was very amazing. Misty Hall's palace mistress's words made Qin Shui dumbfounded. Thinking of her earlier thoughts made her blush as she glanced at Qin Shui bitterly. From that look, Qin Shui had seen something in that glance. However, he would never have thought that it was because he had spoken too fast. He thought that it was because of his abrupt thought which caused him to lose an opportunity to have a close-up time with Misty Hall's palace mistress. All right, I'll also teach you my acupuncture point clearing art. You can pass it to me tomorrow when you bring the wine to me. You can take this. Misty Hall's palace mistress passed Qin Shui a few pieces of silver-colored pages and said, Qin Shui hesitated and received it, keeping it safely. Hmm, since there's no other things to deal with now, we can stay here for two days. Ming Yu and Luli have always been full of admiration for you. The Beauty Song is a song composed by a Chinese musician during the Han Dynasty who became a court musician during Emperor Wu's reign. Chapter 406, A Lifted Burden another side of her. That's good too. In any case, it is not that big of a deal. The two of them are indeed the two most beautiful women in my misty hall. I heard that there are a lot of guys that really envy you. In no way would Qin Shui ever thought that a girl like her would ask such a question. It seemed that they could almost be considered as friends already. 
Qin Shui also did not explain anything because there really wasn't anything much to explain for this kind of matter. What kind of grudges do Heavenly Palace and Sword Tower hold against each other? Can you tell me about it? Because of Mingyu Jello, Qin Shui was almost turning into a sore point to Sword Tower. Heavenly Palace and Sword Tower are old enemies. Legend has it that the elderly of Heavenly Palace who established Heavenly Palace and the elderly that established Sword Tower were fellow apprentices. Their hostility was also because of a woman. The story is really conventional. It just got passed on like that. In between, there were constantly contradicting views. Lord Seng's son died exactly in the hand of the people from Sword Tower, and so on. Exactly in this way, the problems became more and more intense so much so that there were a few times when they almost went to war. The Misty Palace mistress simply explained for a while. Then, are both sides thinking of eliminating the opposite sides? Yeah. After all, the people that established these two sects are long gone. Of course, the brotherhood between them have already ceased to exist when they were alive. Slowly, the problem became more and more serious, both wanting to eliminate their own counterparts. A huge component of it was also due to the fact that they were forced by their false reputation and outer appearance. Sometimes, many things are not as simple as it looks from outside. Sometimes, even if you know that it is wrong, you will still have to hold on to it. There will eventually be a day when the contradiction between Heavenly Palace and Sword Tower breaks out as well. Even though the Misty Palace mistress's explanation was short, Qin Shui had gotten an answer. However, Qin Shui currently dared not to think of eliminating Sword Tower by relying on his own strength. That was a sect that was as formidable as Heavenly Palace. Qin Shui did not know how many warriors there were in Sword Tower that had reached the pinnacle of Martial King. In Green Cloud Continent, the measurement of strength for sects of this level would be a contest between the warriors that had reached the pinnacle of the Martial King realm. To be more precise, it was exactly the contest of military force and number of martial king warriors that were at their peak. Thus, Qin Shui knew that the amount of warriors at the pinnacle of their martial king realm would absolutely not be any less than Heavenly Palace. As Qin Shui thought of the Heavenly Palace elderly gathering and the group of frightening old men, he instantly felt lost about long it would take for him to be capable of challenging the whole sword tower by himself. The cultivation level of the sixth layer of ancient strengthening technique was still far in the indefinite future. If now, he already had the cultivation level of the sixth layer of ancient strengthening technique, it might still be a bit possible. However, Qin Shui knew that it would be really difficult if he wanted to break through to the sixth layer of ancient strengthening technique by himself. The ancient strengthening technique of the sixth layer of ancient strengthening technique would absolutely enable him reach the martial saint realm. Martial Saint Warriors, the ruler of Qin Yun Continent. How could it possibly be that easy? But soon after, Qin Shui shook his head and threw away this thought. Nevertheless, doing it realistically without flights of fancy would still be better. For now, thinking about those things were still a bit too far away. The Misty Palace Mistress was also temporarily staying in Lai Clan for a time. Many influential clans in Yan City envied Lai family because of this. The warriors who were at the pinnacle of their martial king realm had once been to Lai Clan. The power of human speech was formidable. It hasn't been half a day in Lai Clan, Qin Clan, along with those warriors at the peak of their martial king realm, had all became relatives. What did the outsiders know? That was why Lai Clan, this powerful paper tiger, would very quickly stand even higher. Furthermore, it could stand exceptionally firmly for a very long period of time. Lai Jiutian had long felt happy to the point of going up to heaven. His son had great fortune. With this layer of relationship present, Lai clan would very quickly become the strongest family in Yan City. Qin Shui, we are going to bring the hall master up to look for rooms. After Huiyun Luli greeted Qin Shui, she went upstairs with Sanghai Mingyu and Misty Palace Mistress. Qin Shui smiled while waving his hands and let them do as they wished. Qin Yi looked at Qin Shui's face which was filled with smiling expression. It was any parent's wishes to long for their child to succeed in life. The son's huge accomplishment had made her even happier than the huge achievement of herself as a mother. Her own issue that weighed heavily on her mind for twenty years was uncovered, and his father's mental issue was also uncovered. For a moment, she felt the huge burden in her heart lifting. 
she felt extremely relaxed. The mother's honor increased as her son's position rose. Qing Yi knew that for someone like her who came out from Qing clan household in a country city like Yan City, her own family background and cultivation realm would not be much more powerful compared to common people. But now, even the landlord from Lai clan, a clan that had been influential for generations, talked to her with unusual respect. This was all because of her own son, Qing Shui. Qing Shui, you have suffered throughout this years. Do you remember back when you were still small? At that time, when you knew that you could not cultivate yourself, I still remember clearly the depressing look of yours. Never would I have thought that it was actually because you were afraid that you could not step into Yen clan in the future, afraid that you could not demand a speaking for me. I was even more unaware that you would actually encounter Qing Qing after that. There was once again another person that made you cultivate with all your might. As Qing Yi spoke, the smiling face of hers was suspended with a disconsolate smile. The mistake that she made herself at that time, however, required her son to cultivate bitterly for fifteen years. As she thought about it, she dripped with tears of happiness. Mother, today is a happy day. Don't cry. The issue that has been weighing heavily on your mind for many years has been resolved. Mother, sister, today, our family has reunited. We should be happy. Qing Shui looked at Qing Qing next to him whose eye sockets were also wet and comforted her. Mother is happy is happy. At the side, everyone looked at Qing Shui, Qing Luo, Qing He, Qing Yu and Shi Qing Zhuang, as well as Sanghai Mingyu, Huiyan Luli, and everyone else. It made Qing Shui feel that all of the things that he had paid for was all worth it. Shi Qing Zhuang also knew about the incidents in Qing family. She looked at the man who already had a magnificent style and was unmatched in his generation. This man was her own fiancé. She thought of the scene of him riding on her lion buckskin the first time she had come to Qing clan household. At that time, she would never have thought that he would have a day like this. Unfortunately, it was destined that he would not belong to her alone. The afternoon food was made by Qing Yi and a few ladies. However, the misty palace mistress did not come down. Qing Shui knew that she was not used to occasions like this. Most importantly, her coming down would make other people felt reserved. Qing Shui, deliver the food to the owner. In any case, you two have to thank her properly. She is on the third floor, in the room near the stairs on the left. Hu Yan Luli chuckled. And so, Qing Shui took a huge, bright wooden board. There were nine dishes and two soups placed on it. He went up following the staircase. On the second floor, Qing Shui and the people from Qing family were staying there. On the third floor, there were only Qing Shi Zhuang, Huiyun Luli, and Sanghai Mingyu. The three of them were staying in there. Lai family's small pavilion of this kind was also three stories tall. Originally, this kind of small pavilion was suitable for small family household to live, just like Lai family's sons and grandsons. When they got married, they would be separated to a small courtyard like this. Very quickly, Qing Shui had already arrived on the third floor. He noticed that the room on the left side was left open around the size of one palm. Qing Shui was stunned, however, when he was preparing to enter. It wasn't because there was any charming and gentle scene inside the room. The misty palace mistress stood at the window spot with a snowy cotton yarn all over her body. Her body slightly leaned towards the side. That angle happened to let Qing Shui see her perfect side. Qing Shui did not actually retain his sight on that undulating body of hers, even though that body was really beautiful, to the point that it made people palpitated with eagerness to do something. At this moment, however, Qing Shui stared at her side face blankly. As he looked at the bewildered and depressed eyes, Qing Shui had never thought that someone like her would have such a sexy side, so much so that Qing Shui could see a bewildered look from her beautiful pupils. As it turned out, she hasn't withdrawn herself from worldly affairs as much as what's seen from the outside. On the other hand, she buried all of her worries deep in her heart. She was the real loneliness. Even if she was compared to Qing Qing, she might not be any more powerful. It was just that the way she expressed was different. Perhaps it could be said that her appearance now was faked and that she would only show her true color when there was no one. Dong dong dong! Qing Shui cleared a hand and knocked three times at the door. And then he proceeded to push open the door and walked in. At the moment when Qing Shui got in contact with those pupils, 
they have already recovered back to the usual, fine, clear, and extremely outstanding. Looking at Qin Shui carrying so much stuff, a slight smile could be seen in her eyes. In Qin Shui's perspective, there was an extremely moving quality to that expression he was unable to express. Qin Shui placed the food one by one on the small side table. Let's sit down and eat together. When Qin Shui heard these words, he suspected if he had an illusion and looked at the Misty Palace Mistress with a doubt. The gaze of the Misty Palace Mistress seemed like it has slightly dodged out of the way for a moment. There is so much, let's eat together. I can't finish it by myself. This time, Qin Shui has heard carefully. Thinking of the scene that he saw when he just came, he felt a bit grieved. She was a strong woman and didn't pamper herself. Qin Shui had already known that there were people like them from his previous incarnation, feeling lonely to the bone. But for those people, they would either commit suicide or choose to be undisciplined and degrade themselves. They would drink alcohol, dance madly, and fall into bad companies with men, because loneliness was the most fearsome thing in the world. All right, being able to eat with you is exactly what I have been looking for. In the past, I did not ever dare to think about it. Qin Shui chuckled. When they were eating, the scene that made Qin Shui stunned was that the Misty Palace mistress had actually removed her veil. In that instant, Qin Shui had a feeling akin to witnessing the bright moon emerging after a black cloud. In a short while, the whole room seemed like it had become brighter. You look really pretty. Qin Shui secretly swallowed his saliva and smiled. Her feelings were sincere to the straightforward compliment from Qin Shui and she was not disgusted with Qin Shui's gaze and language. Come, let's eat first. Qin Shui handed over the white jade chopsticks. On top of that, he continuously carried the plates in front of her. In her heart, she felt Qin Shui's expression to be especially caring. It may be because of her expression which he accidentally saw just now. Women's institution was particularly strong. Regarding a lot of things, they could already feel the real intention of others just by relying on their intuition. She looked at Qin Shui's movement, which seemed a bit choppy yet particularly sincere. More importantly, she felt that there was only warmth in his heart, a special kind of warmth. Thank you. Qin Shui did not know whether the manner in which the Misty Palace mistress was eating could be considered graceful. This was because a beautiful girl like her would not look unsightly no matter how they ate. When Qin Shui carried down the dishes they finished, he received the strange looks from other people. In particular, the looks he got from Tsang Hai Ming Yu and Hui Yun Luli, as well as Qin Shi Zhuang. However, Hui Yun Luli's look was the most amusing one. Tsang Hai Ming Yu and Hui Yun Luli knew what kind of a woman the Misty Palace mistress was. A guy that could have a meal with her. It wasn't because they had seen it today, there was no way they would ever believe that. Qin Shui could only smile awkwardly. Today, everyone should rest properly for a while. Tomorrow, we will be going to Gua family. At the latest, we will go back on the day after. Happy smiles could be seen on everyone's faces. There was still people from Qin family who were worried. Since the matter had been handled, they went back immediately. Looking at everyone's happy smile, Qin Shui smiled as well. However, in his heart, he was sighing. He was thinking of Ming Yu Jello. Chapter 407 Yen Clan's Hidden Treasure Given to Qin Shui Qin Shui laughed as he saw the happiness on everyone's faces, but deep inside, he still missed Ming Yu Jello very dearly. Qin Shui did not know when she would return to his side. He considered the necessity of waging a war against the Sword Tower to get her back, but if that ever happened, he would not stand a chance of winning the war. He had to first surpass the sixth layer of ancient strengthening technique. Moreover, he wouldn't wish to cause a massive destruction to both Heavenly Palace and Sword Tower just for this matter. Qin Shui does not have the capacity to let Heavenly Palace to make this kind of sacrifice for him. But even if he did, Qin Shui would never allow it. There are also quite a number of clans and sects with the strength comparable to Heavenly Palace and the Green Cloud Continent. If he made any careless moves, they would be the ones to benefit from the war. Shao Clan and Yan Clan were both finished. Although Qin Shui chose not to destroy the entire clan by pulling them up from the roots, the countless crimes these two clans committed had not been forgiven. It was a common practice to be merciless with the evildoers. More than half of the nation wanted a piece of them badly. In the span of a whole afternoon, 
the people from Yen clan shamelessly came to look for Qin Shui numerous times. They wanted Qin Shui to take over their clan so that the hundreds of years of accumulated legacy could be preserved. It was quite apparent that they were very desperate because they brought the key to their treasure room with them. They would hand over the key to Qin Shui if he agreed to take up control of Yen clan. Yen clan's wealth was definitely extraordinary. The main branch of Yen clan was the one responsible in the safekeeping of the key to the treasure room. Clans and sects have different policies on who got to control the access to the treasure room. The head clan had a stronger control and freedom than the head sect. In a sect, any important matters must undergo the majority of the elder's approval before any action could be implemented by the head sect. On the other hand, head clan could only participate in the discussion of the important matters, but did not have the authority to make the final decision. Of course, there would be exceptions for different clans and sections. In any case, Yen clan was one of the top three family clans in Yen Jiang country. Their wealth, however, was surprisingly the most extraordinary out of the top three clans. With such vast fortune, Yen clan was very careful not to be taken advantage by other people that easily. Yen Haoran from the sixth branch had represented Yen clan twice to meet Qing Shui. Even if Qing Shui refused to acknowledge his Yen heritage, other people would still refuse to acknowledge him as part of the Yen clan. The other branches of the Yen clan were very interested in securing the treasure room for themselves. However, none of them had the guts to try, even if the opportunity was present. They were what everyone called a hot potato. As the sun began to set, Yen Haoran came to see Qing Shui for the third time. Qing Shui had lost all interest and feelings for him. He only kept them alive because of Qing Qing's relationship with the Yen clan. All in all, this man has given all his love and care for Qing Qing. In Qing Qing's eyes, he was the grandfather and father to Yen Zhongyue, whom she loved the most. Qing Shui knew he was an unreasonable man, but he did protect Qing Qing once with his life. Because of him, Qing Qing was still alive. Qing Shui let out a deep sigh. What do you want with us? We will leave soon, and we will never come back to this place again. If you want me to take over Yen clan, please just forget it. Qing Shui said impatiently. Qing Shui, I won't ask any more. However, the wealth, herbs, ores, and money Yen clan has accumulated over the years will not fall to anyone else but you. It is of no importance anymore whether or not you admit your heritage as part of the Yen clan. I am already satisfied to be able to see you in person. Zhong Yue will rest in peace as well. I hope you will accept this key, otherwise the treasure will be scattered into the wrong hands. The entire Yen clan may perish if that happens. There is a mix of lament and pride in Yen Haoran's tone, he exclaimed at the ever-changing situation. He was proud of his young grandson even though he would always deny the fact before. As he reached the autumn of life, he began to take things easy and be open-minded about their relationship. The others kept silent as they looked at Qing Shui. From now on, Qing Shui would be the one making the decisions for everything. Zhong Yue only has two children. No one else will be able to inherit our treasure. Yen Haoran seemed to be muttering to himself. He also seemed like he was talking to someone else. After he was done talking, he forcefully handed a weird spiral-shaped golden key to Qing Shui. As Qing Shui was about to push away the key, Qing Yi suddenly interrupted. Qing Shui, just take it. Qing Yi said with a desolated tone. Qing Shui hesitated for a while before taking the key. He knew what his mother was thinking about, his father. That man still kept his promise to his mother after all these years. He did not remarry even after he went back to Yen clan. Because of that promise, he vowed to never touch the woman from the Shao clan even after a few years he had married Qing Yi. And because of his father's neglect towards the woman from the Shao clan, he fell into the Yen Zhongfeng's trap and lost his life. Before Yen Haoran was about to leave, he told Qing Shui the address to the treasure room. After that, he took a closer look at Qing Shui, Qing Yi, and the other family members. There was an unspeakable loneliness in his eyes. His back view seemed crooked as he turned around and left. After Yen Haoran left, the whole room fell into a silence once again. Nobody was happy about acquiring the key to the Yen clan's treasure room. Qin Shui, I don't wish to intervene in your matters, but let me say this. I will support you if you plan on taking over the Yen clan, Qin Yi said gently. Qin Shui was baffled for a moment. 
He couldn't really tell what his mother was thinking, but he knew how much the Central Continent thought highly about the origin of one's family status and bloodline. It would be the wisest choice for him to admit his part of Yen heritage. The benefits were endless as well. If Qin Shui had been born and brought up in the world of nine continents, he would not have hesitated to take over the Yen clan. However, Qin Shui was different than that. He was extremely adept in the cultivation of techniques. One of his lifelong wishes was to become the best martial artist in the world of nine continents on his own strength. Taking over the Yen clan wasn't his priority in the first place. Moreover, Ming Yu Jello was still waiting for him to arrive at the Sword Tower. Although Ye Jianga never mentioned anything to Qin Shui, he decided to take her along to the Lion King's Ridge for as long as twenty years. However, the path he will take would not be easy. I know you want the best for me, but I don't need Yen Clan anymore. We will see where fate lead us. Qin Shui laughed as he looked at Qin Yi. As the night fell, Qin Shui went into the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. The first thing he needed to do was to brew some plum blossom wine for Misty Hall's palace priestess. Qin Shui looked at the vast field of white 100-year plum blossoms. These plum blossoms only exist in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. He picked some of the plum blossoms and added to the brew mixture consisting of precious ingredients, condiments, one-third of peach of immortality, 1,000-year medicines, and most importantly, the 5,000-year golden flesh Lingji. Qin Shui has several versions of brewing plum blossom wine when he first started until now. He used to add very little medicinal herbs into the mixture, but ever since he has the capability of obtaining various herbs, he improved his brewing method by adding more instead. A drop of blood from the golden medicinal turtle, blood of the 1,000-year clam, as well as the golden pearl essence from the clam's mouth. Of course, Qin Shui could not brew his signature plum blossom wine without the bronze cauldron and the primordial flames. The process of brewing plum blossom wine was about the same as the process of refining medicinal pills. Both of them consumed a lot of energy as well. The brewing took about three days to complete. Luckily, the brewing took place in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. In actuality, the real process of brewing would only take one whole day. The wine would be broiled consistently with the primordial flame for the next two days. Qin Shui would always stop supervising the bronze cauldron after one whole day, then proceed to cultivate his training while waiting for the plum blossom wine to complete. Oh right, the acupuncture point clearing art from Misty Hall's palace priestess. Qin Shui hastily took out a few pages of paper from the inner pocket in his chest. These were the silver-colored pages made from first-class beast leather. Qin Shui felt excited as he realized the significance of the acupuncture points to a human body. If he could clear most of the existing acupuncture points in his body, especially the Yongquan point, in the middle of the foot. He halted his train of thoughts and opened the pages. The title written on the page seemed common. The title reads, Acupuncture Clearing of the Four Limbs. Qin Shui thought hard about it. Actually, he thought that was no different than his divine arm clearing and divine feet clearing. The names might be different, but they were essentially the same. Qin Shui went blank as he continued reading. He noticed that when the divine arm clearing and divine feet clearing were combined together, they made a complete version of the acupuncture clearing of the four limbs. He couldn't understand why Misty Hall Palace Priestess would have such a mastery as this one. Qin Shui thought that his mastery was one of a kind, but as it turned out, the world of the nine continents was much deeper than he initially thought. He might be able to experience a lot more wonders of the world after all. Qin Shui had already memorized everything after reading just once. If he could remember the yin yang image embedded deep inside his consciousness, then he could remember anything he had read or seen. After he took another look of the page to gain a deeper understanding and impression, Qin Shui began to cultivate the acupuncture clearing of the four limbs throughout his entire body. Both his arms and legs were linked together for this cultivation, unlike divine arm clearing and divine feet clearing together which he had to cultivate separately. Either way, both of these methods had its advantages and disadvantages. Perhaps due to Qin Shui's completion of the divine arm clearing and divine feet clearing, he was able to become adept in the acupuncture clearing of the four limbs. Very quickly, basically, Qin Shui was able to cultivate the acupuncture clearing of the four limbs successfully on the first round. However, 
it would take a few days for the clearing to take effect. Qin Shui continued to cultivate this technique until he had completely familiarized with it. He stopped after a few rounds and rested for a while. After that, he prepared himself to make a copy of the divine arm clearing and divine feet clearing deep inside his consciousness. Since he couldn't find anything to write with, he simply used Art Maestro's golden calligraphy brush and the moonstone ink slab to write them down. Qin Shui was only able to take a good look at this moonstone ink slab for the first time since he didn't get to see it clearly last time. The ink slab had a lot of small grooves on the inside. Then, he realized these grooves were made to hold different colors of ink. There was also a tiny pestle on the moonstone strip, as small as the size of a thumb. Qin Shui knew right away that it was used for grinding ink, albeit a bit different than in reality. Qin Shui poured a bit of water into one of the grooves. He recalled having prepared a pen and ink beforehand in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, but he couldn't find them. It seemed Qin Shui had to prepare extra in the future in case he needed them. After he had poured the water, Qin Shui started to grind the ink. Slowly, the ink turned to a moon-white color. Qin Shui could sense a faint spiritual key emanating from the ink which tickled something in his mind, but he had no clue what it was. There were still some beast parchments left. Who knew the ink he grinded would be a light moon-white shade? He took out a beast parchment with a deeper shade to test the ink. He dabbed the bristle of golden calligraphy pen into the ink. The bristle was made from the hairs of the martial saint level weasel beast. Qin Shui felt that this pen might be the art maestro's weapon of choice. After he had dabbed the moon white ink on the bristle of the pen, a weird sensation suddenly flowed from the golden calligraphy pen onto Qin Shui's hand. Chapter 408 Primordial Demon Refining Furnace When Qin Shui dipped his golden calligraphy brush into the moon white colored ink, a mysterious feeling rose from the golden calligraphy brush into Qin Shui's hand. When Qin Shui finished writing about the divine arm clearing and divine feet clearing techniques, he was shocked. Even though his handwriting was not considered ugly, it was not nice. Yet, when Qin Shui looked at his words now, though they looked the same, the feeling was different. It was as if they were given a breath of air. They were filled with a sort of spirituality. It could be compared to a man who was not good-looking but easy on the eyes, and gradually seemed more charming and charismatic to the point that his looks did not matter. The words that Qin Shui wrote using his golden calligraphy brush had that effect. They seemed to have an added allure. This must be why the art maestro is able to draw the portraits of beauty, even though his artistic ability may be unparalleled. His usage of the golden calligraphy brush and the moonstone ink slab cannot be ignored. Furthermore, some of the color pigments used were also from the Blood Marshal Saint level beast. The plum blossom wine was ready for consumption. It had an added hint of something but it was still glistening clear. As a light mist of sweet smelling odor evaporated, one could feel the refreshing flavors it held. He made more wine this time and since he decided to give all of it to the mistress of Misty Hall, he was sure it was much more than that little bit he gifted her previously. When the time limit expired, Qin Shui left the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. It was late in the night, past 1 a.m. Even those who had night lives would have gone home by now. Late in the night, even though it was cloudy in the morning, the moon had risen. It shone brightly like a large silver disk in the sky. The moonlight reflected off the ground which was covered with pristine white snow. This made it bright enough to read under the moonlight although it was not as bright as during the daytime. Suddenly, he remembered the Yen Clan treasury key that Yen Haoran gave him earlier that day. Yen Clan treasury. I will consider that as Yen Clan's compensation to Qin Clan. Qin Shui entered the realm of Violet Jade Immortal and pulled out the odd gold key. It was about a foot long and had spiral carvings. Qin Shui tested it and found that it was extremely hard. It was even harder than diamond. Despite not knowing what material it was made of, Qin Shui was certain that the, the key was invaluable. Should I take this time to go explore? Qin Shui questioned himself. Qin Shui did suspect that it could be a trap and knew that he must be alert as it was very possible that someone would want to harm him at this point. However, he felt that the possibility was very small as the mistress of Misty Halls was currently around. Regardless, Qin Shui also had his realm of Violet Jade Immortal so if he was in any peril, he would be able to use that and his Firebird. 
Qin Shui disappeared into the darkness as he jumped out the window. Qin Shui's speed was already quite impressive now, especially after he had practiced the black armor jumping King Kor Ki method. With the addition to his soaring crane steps which was at grand perfection stage, he could accelerate to frightening speeds in a short time. Even so, Qin Shui found that he would be helpless when facing people who were more powerful than him. Martial artists from the central continent paid great attention to speed. If he could reach the grand perfection stage for divine feet clearing or if he could clear his Yongquan acupoint, he can boost his speed greatly. Even achieving large success stage for his divine feet clearing technique, Qin Shui was unable to clear his Yongquan acupoint. Though the mistress of Misty Hall was already at the gateway to clear that acupoint, she was probably just a step from clearing that acupoint. This was why Qin Shui believed that he could use acupuncture to help her clear it more quickly. Ever since Qin Shui discovered the art of clearing acupoints, he also found that the art of acupoint clearing was covered in the introduction of primal chaotic divine needle technique. The introduction was short. There were only a few sentences stating that acupuncture could help clear acupoints. The prerequisite was that the person must be very close to clearing the acupoint, but was unable to do so. It was like the acupoint on the mistress of Misty Hall. He had observed that it had a faint radiance, as if clouds partially covered the moon. Thus, Qin Shui had the confidence to tell her that he could help her clear the acupoint in the morning. Unfortunately, he did not have any acupoint which had reached this stage. He hoped that after practicing divine clearing technique, he would be able to clear his Yongquan acupoint. Once he came out of the Lai residence, Qin Shui summoned his firebird. He flew towards Yen clan treasury. Yen Haoren had informed Qin Shui that the Yen clan treasury was in the middle of the courtyard where Yen Haoxing lived in the past. His firebird speed was extremely fast so he reached the Yen residence in the blink of an eye. In the past, it was filled with a ruckus of human activities every day. It now had a lifeless atmosphere. There was even an indistinct scent of blood left in the air. Coupled with the winter night, it made the place feel eerie. Yen clan's sixth branch lived at another location as only the head of the clan could live in this estate that held the treasury. This Yen estate was the size of a large village. It had pavilions, arch bridges, rock gardens, circular little streams and there was a gazebo every ten meters which were linked by passageways. Qin Shui landed slowly in the center of the estate. He spread his spiritual sense and could not feel the presence of anyone. Thinking about it, this was normal as no thieves would come at this point in time unless they wanted to cut their lifespan short. Following what Yen Haoren said, Qin Shui went to the largest rock structure in the estate. He saw the jarring uneven areas on top and tried to look for the keyhole with the key in his hand. It is between two protruding surfaces. There were so many, which was it? They are at the spot behind the sunlight. Qin Shui looked at the rock structure and confirmed that it was the secret Yen clan treasury he was looking for. It was only when he searched for the third time that he noticed the position of the two protrusions. It was at a spot outside the reach of an average person. Can it be that the person who created the mechanism was that tall? Or was it on purpose? Kerchuk. Qin Shui stuck the key in, turned the key three times to the left and one and a half turns to the right, then repeated and pushed the key an inch further. Then... He made another half turn to the left before he heard the rumbling of moving metal. This is some mechanism. Qin Shui observed that the interior of the rock structure was made of metal. It was made of a the highest quality black metal. Qin Shui could see a path sloping downwards. There was a large glowing rock after every third step. After scanning the entire area with his spiritual sense and finding nothing suspicious, he followed the stone steps downwards. The stone path was very long. It was about a 200 meters. Then, he reached a pair of large metallic tar black double doors. From its exterior, Qin Shui could tell that it was very thick and probably more sturdy than the previous door. Seeing the large keyhole, Qin Shui took the gold key and opened the door using the same method as before. After another series of piercing clicks from the mechanism, the thick doors opened slowly. Qin Shui could see a passageway about 10 plus meters wide and 30 meters long. In the center of the passageway, there was a large pillar at each three-meter point. There was a row of waist-height stone stands on either side of the passageway. There were many dazzling paraphernalia on them and there were even items which shone with a faint glow. 
Were these all the treasures that the Yen clan had amassed over the years? Qin Shui walked along the pillars at the center of the room as he surveyed the items on both sides. Weapons, armors, accessories. The passageway started out with weapons on both sides, then armor and accessories, knives, spears, swords, bows, axes, whips, body armor, helmets, battle skirts, boots, belts, necklaces, earrings and bracers. Qin Shui did not need any of the weapons now, but he activated his heavenly vision technique and spiritual sense. Whenever he sensed anything good, he would throw it into the realm of violet jade immortal. Anyway, he did not lack space. He could even bring back everything here without a problem. He chose a few good swords, some armors and accessories. They belonged to the Yen clan's collection, so they should be of a certain level. There were many suitable weapons for the Sientian level but much lesser weapons suitable for the Martial King level. There were still some. Qin Shui wanted to bring these back for the three generations in Qin clan. Since he came out, he wanted to bring some presents for them. After he chose enough, he decided not to take any more, but he still scanned each piece of equipment. Ah! Qin Shui exclaimed in awe as he saw a thing, covered in dust. He felt a large wave of spiritual energy exuding from it. He waved his sleeve, blowing the dust away. It was a one meter tall item. It was three-legged, and its body was gray. It was the type of pure gray that was like the color of his primordial flames. It looked like a cauldron. As the dust cleared, Qin Shui could see the carvings on it. A dragon, a phoenix, a three-headed dog, a golden bull, a golden elephant, a fearsome ape, a mythical tortoise, a giant beast covered in flames. The carved images were very small, about the size of a palm but the vigor and charm of the art was fully expressed. Qin Shui observed the lifelike carvings. Then, he noticed a word on its other side. Primordial. What was that? Qin Shui looked at the primordial on it. He could see that on the other side of the carvings, there was another word but it was blocked by the wall. He did not know what that primordial meant. He rotated it. He managed to rotate it but the item was actually upwards of 10,000 jin. Why was this item so heavy? Before Qin Shui could ponder about the weight of the item, he saw the words that followed. Primordial. Demon Refining Furnace. This is a primordial demon refining furnace. Qin Shui's heartbeat sped up. When he first heard about the existence of refining demons, he kept thinking about when he would own a demon refining furnace. He even planned to go to the school of demon refinery when he reached the eastern victory divine continent to get a demon refining furnace. Now there was no need. At this moment, Qin Shui was extremely elated. However, he suddenly had a thought. Why was the demon refining furnace placed here? It seemed to be untouched for years. Ordinarily, there was no possibility that Yen clan did not know that it was a demon refining furnace. Unless no one had bothered to look at this unremarkable item all these years or no one knew the art of refining demons. After Qin Shui speculated about it for a while, he put the primordial demon refining furnace directly into the realm of violet jade immortal. It was not the right time to research about that, so he continued surveying the multitude of fantastic oddities on both sides of the passageway. After that discovery, Qin Shui did not dare to let anything slip by. Once he felt that the item had spiritual energy, he stored it in the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. Well, gems? There are so many, they are all top grade. I'll use them for synthesis. Qin Shui kept the large heaps of colorful precious gems in the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. He could synthesize them using the ancient art of forging anyway. Medicinal herbs? There are even those that are 3,000 years old. As Qin Shui sighed happily about how the Yen clan was such an affluent family, he continued storing things into the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. There were really too many valuable items. Millennium Amethyst, Canfone Dewdrops, Chapter 409, A Plentiful Gain, Inner Core, The Change in Misty Palace Mistress. Millennium Amethyst, Canfone Dewdrops. After opening up a bright case, Qin Shui discovered two kinds of medicinal ingredients that he needed. They were both within the prescription of Wind Water Primordial Pellet. Unfortunately, he didn't know when he would be able to find that nine-winged golden cicada. Thinking about it made Qin Shui gloomy. Continuing on, so long as it was a medicinal herb, 
Qin Shui would throw it into the realm of violet jade immediately. Qin Shui stopped looking through the bright case because he discovered that within the ones he opened previously, there were none with a medicinal age that was lower than 1,000 years. At that moment, Qin Shui felt really comfortable. This feeling of having a fortune falling from the sky was indeed gratifying, compared to suddenly having a lot more top-notch equipment in the rucksack while playing games. This was many times more satisfying. Moving on forward, a lot of bright cases with unique characteristics were discovered. They were all rectangular shaped in varying sizes. The large ones were the size of two human heads whereas the small ones were only the size of a fist. What is this? Qin Shui suspiciously opened up one of the larger sized bright cases. There was a milky white spherical object inside. The spiritual fluctuation within it could be felt. Qin Shui was no stranger to this object. Demonic Beast Core This was the core of demonic beasts. Nevertheless, it was the inner demonic beast pill that was more than a thousand years. Qin Shui felt that its size was almost the same as the inner pill of the Millennium Huge Snake King, except that it was slightly bigger. This thing was even more precious compared to the Millennium Medicinal Herbs. An important fact was that in the world of the Nine Continents, Within the unknown deep mountains and woodlands, there were actually a lot of millennium medicinal herbs, two millennium, three millennium, even though they were not all over the land. However, those places were especially dangerous. Therefore, formidable warriors who were poor would not appear in the world of nine continents. The precondition was to be formidable enough. Demonic beast forest and giant beast mountain were places like this. The fortune within was astonishing but simultaneously, there was also a great risk. In the world of nine continents, there were very few people who dared to enter these two places. After that, Qin Shui once again opened up a bright case that was almost the size of the previous one, except it was a bit bigger. After he opened it, it was a red demonic beast core. The age of the demonic beast core was judged by its color. Demonic beast cores that lasted only for a millennium or less were milky white in color. The cores that ranged from one to two millenniums were red in color. Those that ranged from two to three millenniums were orange. Three to four millenniums were yellow. Four to five millenniums were dark green. Five to six millenniums were green. Six to seven millenniums were blue. And those that ranged from seven to eight millenniums were purple. It was said that the demonic beast's core that lasted for more than 10,000 years were rainbow-colored. Qin Shui looked at the unknown inner pill in his hand. It was dark red and seemed like it was an inner bladder that was close to 2,000 years. When he refined his own golden innate pellet, he was lacking these exact inner pills. Every core would need warm nourishment for at least a 1,000 years. Of course there would also be exceptions. In those years, the deeper the color of the inner demonic beast pills, the closer they would be to the years counted later in this time. Just like Qin Shui's core that was dark red, it indicated that it was already near 2,000 years, so it was already a core of two millennium. The change in colors of the demonic beast core didn't actually happen as soon as it reached the year count. They were the same as a human's breakthrough only after it broke through would its color change. Each time it broke through, its strength would increase in folds. Of course, the difficulty of it breaking through was even more difficult than that of humans. After all, it could only advance into the next color after a thousand years. There were some low-grade demonic beasts that would sometimes take in the most valuable treasure of some kind of medicines which led to them living for three thousand years. However, the core within might only be red, or even milky white in color. Therefore, the colors were actually a judgment of the demonic beast's strength. Of course, the longer it took to measure the strength would mean that the core was more precious. For cores in the same year, the deeper the color, the more valuable it was. For the cores of the same color, the longer the years, the more valuable it was. These kinds of dark red colored inner pills were already really precious. There were still inner pill cases that were even bigger than the case that contained the dark red colored inner pill. Qin Shui had stopped opening them up one by one. He immediately kept all of them in the realm of violet jade. Yeah, an iron swelling with such a strong spirit energy? Take it away! After one round, Qin Shui took away almost 70% of the things in Yen Clan's treasure pavilion. Qin Shui felt that the remaining things were not useful to him. For example, 
some of the weapons and armors that he forged himself with his current level were much stronger than what remained. The materials were also not that good. That was why Qin Shui abandoned them right away. For this one round, Qin Shui stayed for one and a half days. When he walked out of the treasure pavilion, he once again used the golden lock to lock up the cell. Seeing as dawn appeared to the east of the sky, he knew that the sky would very soon light up completely. A silent Qin Shui went back to his room. Actually from the time Qin Shui went out to the time he returned, the owner of the Misty Palace had been looking at him in front of the window. However, Qin Shui didn't sense it. Every time she looked at Qin Shui, there was an unusual feeling. Ever since the pleasant and romantic dreamlike incident, she had been tortured by Qin Shui for a really long time. A feeling of being touched by a pair of warm hands would often arise on the front part of her breast. This damned little bastard, so lecherous, thinking quietly about these things every day. Actually, she didn't know that every day in the realm of violet jade, Qin Shui would think about it once. However, if it was changed to the owner of Misty Palace, it would be thirty times a day, though Qin Shui had thought about it more than that. The heavenly face below the scarf of the owner of Misty Palace was actually a bit scarlet, so much so that the pupils that didn't contain any impurities also turned misty at this moment. Unfortunately, no one saw it. No one had seen how she looked when she got polluted by the smell of the world of human mortals. It was just that very quickly, she would recover back to her usual expression in an instant. After she became constantly aroused, she knew that it would be very difficult for her to be like how she once was previously. In the morning, Qin Shui still delivered breakfast to the Misty Palace mistress. This time, both of them even had the meal together. The both of them said very little. Qin Shui picked out the things that he had to say. He was absolutely unable to let go in front of her. Qin Shui acted very weird. To her, he didn't actually think of having her like how he had Hui Yun Luli and Sang Hai Ming Yu. However, for some reason, he just hoped that she would look up to him. He didn't want to be looked down upon by her. Therefore, Qin Shui was scared that he would say the wrong things. He was scared that it would make her unhappy. Qin Shui took out the copy training method for divine arm clearing, divine feet clearing and the title pages that the owner of Misty Palace gave him, together with all of the plum blossom wine and put it on the table. You still haven't her spatial silk sachet? Haven't you given it to Mingyu? The Misty Palace mistress looked at Qin Shui strangely. After all, how precious the interspatial silk sachet was could not be estimated. That was something that needed the fur of the martial saint demonic beasts. Furthermore, for it to work, it would also need to be from special martial saint demonic beasts. What was more precious was that the method of making this interspatial silk sachet was particularly rare. The most famous people who were capable of refining interspatial silk sachet were none other than the great refining family Mu clan that was an eastern victory divine continent. Therefore, the people who had the interspatial silk sachet would normally be people of great background. My own interspatial silk sachet. The misty palace mistress shook her head. Qin Shui nodded while smiling. Yeah, yeah. The misty palace mistress extended her hand and put away all of the things on the table. She also had an interspatial silk sachet. On the table, only the plum blossom wine a cauldron that was slightly bigger, and two delicate small wine bottles remained. She was distracted at the moment she received the divine arm clearing and a few of the animal skin papers of divine feet clearing. When she saw the papers on top, she looked at Qin Shui strangely for a while. However, she didn't say anything. Qin Shui knew that it was because she felt the spiritual fluctuation on it. Today, she was still not wearing her veil. She and Qin Shui were separated by only a small side table. They were so close that he could smell the aroma that emitted from her body. It resembled the faint and sweet scent of cymbidiums. It also resembled the delicate fragrance of orchids and even though it was very faint, Qin Shui was infatuated with it. Looking at the heavenly face that was pretty to the point of shaking one's core, it was like the doings of gods. Never would Qin Shui have thought that a woman could be this pretty. The misty palace mistress extended a pair of snow weeds to open up the lid of the cauldron. Immediately, that familiar aroma assailed his nostrils, an icy mist-like gas even floated out from it. It was cool and greasy to the heart, causing her to be absent-minded for a moment. 
Slowly, she filled up 70% of a small wine bottle. Right when she wanted to fill up the other bottle, Qing Shui hurriedly stopped her. Isn't this helpful for breakthrough? I won't drink it then. After Qing Shui said that, he felt incomparably awkward and regretful. He felt like he had done something wrong. As he looked at the Misty Palace Mistress, his face felt a bit hot. Yet, the Misty Palace Mistress smiled while she looked at Qing Shui. This time, she really did smile. Qing Shui saw her neat white teeth that were beautiful and brilliant, and made him lost in thought. All right, why are you not willing to drink with me? The Misty Palace Mistress saw Qing Shui's infatuation, but she didn't feel disgusted with it. She found that she actually didn't hate the pair of clear eyes. Slowly, she once again filled up 70% of the wine bottle. Qing Shui came back to his senses and held up a small wine bottle with a bitter smile. Thank you for saving my life from the most unpleasant moment. I will not say any good things in the future. I will return the favor with a realistic action. I look forward to your arrival. As for returning the favor, there is no need. In the future, it will be fine as long as you can let me drink this kind of alcohol often. Only you should have this. This is the most delicious drink I've ever had. Misty Palace Mistress held up the wine bottle. Ding! It collided softly for a moment, and the both of them finished it in one go. She kept the ancient cauldron and the wine bottle on the table in the interspatial silk sachet. Even Qin Shui's wine bottle was put away. Qin Shui, I should leave now. Qin Shui knew that the Misty Palace Mistress would leave very soon. However, he didn't think that it would be this soon. Yesterday, she said that she would stay here for up to two days, so he didn't expect that it would only be for only a night and a half. I will send you. No need. I don't think I will greet them. You greet them in my place. Today when we go to the Gua clan, we still have to thank them. What do you say, sister? Qin Shui smiled slightly while looking at Qin Qin. Qin Qin slightly knitted her brows. I am your sister. Whoever does not treat you well, I will treat them back the same way in folds. However, whoever treated you well, I will do so to them in folds too. Is that okay? Qin Shui looked at Qin Qin. She was still smiling faintly. It was just that the expression was particularly serious. Yeah. Qing Qing smiled slightly while she nodded to Qing Shui. Now, at least he could see her smile. Even though it was faint, he could still confirm that it was a smile. The Gua clan was also influential in Yan City. Even though Gua clan's clan's head Gua Yanglong was only a courtyard protector of Qin clan in Green Cloud Continent, it was already considered a supreme honor in a place like Yan City in Yan Jiang country. Kuo clan, Lai clan, Luo clan, the reason why it could stand up to Yan clan and Xiao clan was because there was the existence of Gui Yanlong, who asked Qin clan to be so protective of errors. This was also why Guapola dared to interfere face to face with Elder Master Xiao. It was also because of this that Qin Qin was able to hold on until Qin Shui and the others rushed here. The Gua clan mansion, compared to Xiao clan, was considerably smaller. No matter in terms of the imposing manner, or the construction, they were obviously lower by one grade. There were also only four standing guards at the doorway. Everyone, please come in. Qin Shui was startled. Do I not need to notify anyone? No need, I will bring everyone in. The expression when this guard looked at Qin Shui had a considerable amount of admiration. Qin Shui touched his nose. When have I become so popular? This person took Qin Shui and his party and walked into Gua clan. Among the remaining three people, there was once again one more person who left quickly. After all, Gua clan was also an influential clan. Even though it was not as luxurious as Yen clan or Xiao clan, at the end of the day, it was still an influential clan. The things that should be in the design of the courtyard was all there. As he stepped on the stony surface, it gave out a clear and rigid, Papa! Noise. The noise echoed far away. Qin Shui constantly looked at the buildings that were around him and some of the unskilled workers or disciples and protector of Gua clan. There were people whose eyesight would give out light when they saw Qin Shui and the party. There were also those who would not have much reactions. There would also be people who didn't even look at Qin Shui and the party. After walking for quite a distance, a group of seven or eight people were seen walking towards them from the opposite side. 
The person who was leading was a robust middle-aged man. He was really strong, but his face was handsome. When he saw Guapolo in the back, he knew that the person who was leading was the Gua clan's clan head Guianlong. In the middle, there were two elderly men with white hair and youthful faces. Mr. I am on the way. Sorry for greeting you from far away, please forgive me. The man's loud and clear voice came through from far away. It made people feel really amiable and respectful. After hearing the noise, Qin Shui felt that Gui Yanlong truly had good fortune. This kind of man should be able to attract girls, having a pretty boy's face but also the muscles of a masculine man. Adding the manly voice, this was precisely the kind that a lot of girls liked the most. Women criticized that pretty boys were not manly enough, and also criticized that masculine men were not handsome enough. That was why a lot of the women liked tall, powerful, and also capable handsome men. When Qin Shui looked at Gui Yanglong, he felt that this man was truly this kind of man. Uncle was too formal, you can just call me Qin Shui. Qin Shui smiled while he greeted Gui Yanglong. Ha ha, all right. Today, we are all happy. Come, let's all go in. Gui Yanglong laughed while leading Qin Shui and the party to the largest pavilion building. Qing Qing. As Qin Shui saw Guapolu almost putting all his sights on Qing Qing, he could not help but want to laugh. Contrary to what one might think, this Guapolu was an affectionate person. Even though Qing Shui could not confirm anything, he could still sense the sincere look. It was just that when Qing Shui saw the his sister's expression, he already knew that Guapolu's journey would be very difficult. No matter what, Qing Shui decided to give Guapolu a chance. As for whether it would work out, it would depend on his own actions. Qin Shui was actually not that outstanding in terms of getting along with other people. However, as for Gui Yanglong, everyone was also happy when they were chatting with each other. The atmosphere was more active particularly when they talked about some of the unusual things in the continent. The more one sees, the more knowledgeable one would be. Compared to Qin Shui, Gui Yanglong had more knowledge and experience. At the moment when he was talking to Qin Shui, he didn't neglect the others. He waited until they arrived at the hall. There were some women from Gui clan that were present, therefore, when they sat down, it was almost like two seats combining together. On the left were all men and on the right were all women. Qin Shui felt that this Gui Yanlong was indeed meticulous despite what one might expect. Chapter 410 Because you are my sister, the old man from the Qin clan's hidden library. Gui Yanlong's wife, who was Guo Pola's mother, was an attractive woman for her age. She had a full figure, and no young lass could compete with the gracefulness in her face. Her beauty could rival that of the woman from Shao clan whom he killed. No wonder Gui Yanlong only had one wife. She must have a way with her hands. Qin Shui thought to himself as he could not help but wonder about the woman's charm. Qin Shui chatted and drank. There was a big drinking party as they discussed the massacres on the central continent, or about demonic beasts. The conversations were mostly of a violent variety. Meanwhile, on Qing Yi's side, Madame Guo was talking to her about her son, Qing Qing and Qing Shui. She told Qing Yi that she was fortunate to have a good son and daughter. Most of the time, however, she was talking about Qing Qing and Guapolo. Apparently, Guapolo did not hide his feelings from his mother, as she was able to easily see how he felt. After all, what he did for Qing Qing made it very obvious. Previously, there was no way to bring that up. Actually, talking about it now will also bring controversies. Things have already changed for Qing clan and Qing Qing was no longer that girl who was abandoned by the Yan clan. Qing Shui, you must stay longer this time. Yourself, Qing Qing, Qing Yu and Polu are all young people. Everyone should gather around more. Gui Yanglong said lightheartedly as he drank another cup of wine. We can't stay for a few days longer. We will be traveling, but the Qing residents will always welcome members of the Gui clan. Qing Shui only stayed a day at Gui clan. His main motive was to improve the relationship between the two clans. After the interactions between both families, Qing Shui had quite a good impression of Guapolu, so he tried to create more opportunities for him and Qing Qing to be together. Regarding Yan city and even Yan Jian country, Qing Shui did not have the least amount of interest who would take over. It was easy to guess. Since Xiao clan had been eradicated and Yan clan had been defeated, 
If the authority was no longer under the remaining Yan clan, it will be under families like Gui clan, Lai clan or Luo clan. Qin Shui and the others prepared to make their way back to Hundred Miles City. It was the first time in her life that Qin Qin was leaving Yan City and her first time riding on a flying beast. Standing on the back of the firebird, she viewed the surroundings with amazement. She looked around at the clouds, at the boundless skies that stretched out to the distance, the large rivers and mountains under her feet, and there was a yearning in her eyes. But it was only for a brief moment. Qin Shui, who was standing beside her, was observing his sister's reaction. He could vaguely guess her thoughts, especially that last bit of yearning in her eyes. What are you thinking about? Qin Shui asked smilingly. Nothing. He he. I was thinking that my brother is actually so powerful. Qin Qing laughed gently as she replied. Big sister, you should laugh more in the future. This is the first time I've seen you laugh. My sister is so good looking. No wonder Guapolu is infatuated with you. Qin Shui laughed with the same warmth as he teased his sister. He noticed that her gaze had turned slightly cold and complicated. Qing Qing did not laugh but looked at him seriously. He felt slightly anxious. With a sympathetic expression and eyes filled with care and concern, he looked towards Qing Qing. Do you want me to be with Guapolu to build the relationship between Qing clan and Gua clan? Qing Qing asked. When she said this, Qing Shui felt relieved. He knew why she just had that sort of reaction. After all, she fell to such a dire situation only because of such practices of marriage for connections. Therefore, she hated that from the bottom of her heart. Sister, one Gua clan cannot even compare to a strand of your hair. You and mother are the most important people to me and as long as your brother is here, no one will ever bully you. Nobody will ever force you to do what you don't want to. Qing Shui assured Qing Qing sincerely. Qing Qing looked at how Qing Shui responded and felt a special warmth in her heart. Ever since their father died, no one had ever said anything like that to her. For a person who lost all sense of security since she was ten, this moment with her blood-related brother, such a strong martial artist, she felt his care, concern and familial love from his words. Qing Qing felt an impulse to cry as these emotions overwhelmed her. She just felt like crying, not because she was sad, but it was the realization that this was the feeling of happiness. Qing Qing looked at Qing Shui, the corners of her eyes turning red, as tears welled up in her eyes, but there was a smile on her face. Like raindrops on a pear blossom, tears fell down her beautiful face. Why are you so good to me? Qing Qing hugged Qing Shui as she repeated that a few times. Because you are my sister. We are related by blood and share the same mother. We are siblings. Qing Shui said gently as he patted her back. Just like that, Qing Shui and his group reached Hundred Miles City uneventfully within a month. When they reached the Qing residence, all the other members of the Qing clan were relieved. Qing Bei was so happy that she even cried. After she saw Qing Qing, she ran over calling her happily. Sister Qing, you must be little Bei. Yes. Now I won't be the only girl in Qing clan. Yay! Qing Bei pulled Qing Qing's hand affectionately as she exclaimed. On the day that they returned, Qing Luo went back to the Qing clan village. On the second day, Sanghai Mingyu and Huiyan Luli left for Tsanglong country. Because of Qing Qing, Qing Shui decided not to leave at this time. Furthermore, they would be celebrating the new year soon. Qing Shui decided to think about other things after the new year. When Qing Luo returned to the now quiet Qing clan village, he saw a man with a head of grizzled hair waiting for him at the Qing residence entrance. This man was often seen at the library, and Qing Shui called him Grandfather Lin. Brother Lin! Qing Luo shouted out when he saw the old man. You're back. So things went well. Great. Great! The two elderly men held their hands together. With their many years of friendship, they were even closer than brothers. Let's go in to talk. Both of them entered the now empty Qing residence. Brother Luo, tell me about Qing Shui's progress. I really look forward to that. The old man said to Qing Luo with a complicated expression in his eyes. Qing Luo narrated the details of what Qing Shui did in Yan City. The old man listened carefully to what Qing Luo said. On his calm face, the turbid complication in his eyes slowly turned to a clear brightness. 
Younger brother Luo. Qing Luo looked at Lin Zhanhan quizzically. I want to pass down the things I know to Qing Shui. Lin Zhanhan responded with a short hesitation. You have really decided? Qing Luo asked with astonishment. He was mostly pleasantly surprised. After we celebrate the new year, I will teach Qing Shui some remaining things. I am old and useless now. Otherwise, I would have stopped the Mir clan from another city from bullying Qing clan village to his extent. And it must be hard for that girl, E. There was a quiet desolation in the old man's voice, as if one who had reached the last leg of his life. Qing Qing, have you thought of starting your cultivation? Do you still want to? Qing Shui asked Qing Qing the next morning when he spotted her looking intently at the other members of the Qing clan practicing. I am so much older than them but my cultivation level is so low. I have not practiced for so many years. Qing Qing shook her head and looked at Qing Shui. As long as you wish to cultivate, there won't be any problems. Brother can guarantee that you will reach Xientian level within five years. We still have so much time to travel around the world of nine continents. Qing Shui replied good-naturedly. Can I? Qing Qing asked hopefully with some self-doubt. Yes. Come. I will give you some things. Qing Shui laughed heartily. Qing Qing smiled and followed Qing Shui to the large hall on the third floor. Qing Shui had Qing Qing wait for him as he entered the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. He took out two of each energy-enhancing fruit, stamina-enhancing fruit, endurance-enhancing fruit, and agility-enhancing fruit. Qing Qing gained 1,000 gene of strength and 1,000 gene of defense. Her speed doubled and there was some increase in her vital energy. This made Qing Qing's eyes sparkle with happiness as she looked at Qing Shui. Everyone hoped to be stronger, and of course Qing Qing was elated with this sudden huge increase in her abilities. Older sister, let's go do our morning practice together. I will teach you some skills. Qing Shui smiled as he said that to his happy sister. He found that she looked more like a normal young lady now. She was too empty in the past. He will always remember the feeling he had when he first saw her. Then, he told himself that he would definitely make her happy. Qing Shui felt that he had almost succeeded. Seeing her so happy, Qing Shui felt even more joy than when he was happy. Dear Cantering, Qing Shui first let Qing Qing get accustomed to her current speed, as her speed had increased in such a short time. After she was familiar with her own speed, he let her train with Dear Cantering first. After Qing Qing was tired of deer cantering, Qing Shui taught her Tai Chi fists. Back connecting fist was still not suitable for her. Combining Tai Chi fist with deer cantering can already be considered a proper set. As Qing Shui taught Qing Qing Tai Chi fists, he also practiced at the same time. Before long, it was time for breakfast. It was very lively during breakfast. Qing Qing had already gradually adapted to this as it had already been a month. Sister Qing, I will bring you around Hundred Mile City and I will tell you about stories from when Brother Shui was young. Qing Shui was silent. Shi Qing's Wang had returned to the Shi clan when they were back. Basically, there were only members of the Qing clan in the residence now. The Qing clan had already reached a legendary status in Hundred Mile City. Somehow everyone in Hundred Mile City had come to know that Qing Shui went to Yan City and eliminated Yan clan and Xiao clan. Though Qing Shui was bewildered by this, he had to recognize how widespread news that come from such grapevine sources can be. Yanjiang country was much stronger than Songlang country. Yan city was the capital of Yanjiang and was controlled by Yan clan and Xiao clan. The clans were actually eliminated by a young martial artist from Hundred Mile City, the worst city in Songlang country. How would this not be shocking to everyone? Such a small insignificant Hundred Mile city was now well known in the world. This was because of Qing Shui. Qing Shui's name was now totally associated with Hundred Miles City. The residents of Hundred Miles City were very happy, as the existence of a guardian, like Qing Shui lessened the worries of many, worries like occurrence of massacred cities in the central continent. In the world of the nine continents, there were many bloodthirsty bandits everywhere. There was an abundance of them. Their numbers are so large that they can compete with the largest sect in a continent, or compete with a city the size of Hundred Miles City. Chapter 411 Great Perfection Stage of Mighty Elephant Stomp The career of a bandit reeks of blood and violence. 
Yet it is undeniable that such a profession is a very enticing one. After all, it is human's weakness to thirst for success without labor. Thus, bandit guilds would use various methods to attract talent. Once they have someone as a target, it is difficult for that person to escape. If the person joins, they can forget about leaving unless they are dead. If their offer was not successful, it was only because it was not tempting enough. There is no one in this world who cannot be tempted, just like there is no one who does not betray. It is only a matter of how high the stakes are. Bandits can use women, money, martial skills, rare equipment, coercion or blackmail. As long as they can get their hands on a person's weakness, they can be certain that the person will submit. There is only one type of person that will not be tempted, and that is a dead person. Ever since Qin Shui's reputation rose, many bandits in Hundred Miles City moved away to look for a more suitable city for themselves. However, there were some who wanted to recruit Qin Shui. About 300 miles away from Hundred Miles City, there was a medium-sized mountain range known as Parallel Mountains. Two rows of parallel mountain ranges extend for about 30 miles. This was the only route to Zhang Yuan City. In the past, there were many bandits living in these mountain ranges. Then, a gang of even more vicious bandits arrived. There were about 500 over people in their gang and each of them wore crimson clothes. So people living nearby called them the Crimson Gang. The Crimson Gang were powerful and their ambitions were even greater. After eliminating some of the nearby bandits and scaring some others away, there were still quite a few remaining bandit guilds. However, they had to give up a portion of their assets to the Crimson Gang. In such times, there was stiff competition even in this shady business, and it was cruel. Failure would mean death. It was precisely because of this that bandits ate well, drank well and played with the most beautiful women. After all, they were living dangerous lives and could die at any moment. A few years after their establishment, the Crimson Gang's business had already expanded to the three nearby cities. All passing traders and merchants from Hundred Miles City, Zhang Yuan City and Tianwu City had to pay tolls. Nothing was more precious than one's life and it was normal to spend money to avoid trouble. Gradually the traders and groups of merchants became familiar with the bandits. The area became like a city gate and people had to pay a toll each time they wanted to pass through. The thing was the toll was much higher. The leader of the Crimson Gang was Wu Yitian. He was a burly middle-aged man. His weapon was a horse-chopping saber, and he was quite prudent. Most importantly, he was a poison maker and was confident that he was one of the best in this expertise. He only knew how to make poison and did not know how to make any medicine to cure people. In his 30-year career as a bandit, he relied mostly on poisons. Many people who were much stronger than him died in his hands. He was also quick-witted and had original insights, so he easily found success everywhere he went. Unfortunately, when he was in another country, he had robbed a pair of mother and daughter from an influential clan. He even raped them both. He stirred up a hornet's nest and the 5,000 strong Crimson Gang had to make their escape to this small unremarkable area. They only had 500 men left, and they could not bring too much attention to themselves. He did not have any great dreams and did not think of changing his profession. He just wanted to expand his Crimson Gang so that it was larger than before. He just wanted to reach the top of his profession. He wanted to be able to match the largest clan or sect in a country. Then, take the opportunity to join up with a larger bandit guild. Big brother, do you really plan to recruit Qin Shui? He is a man rumored to have defeated two large clans. A similarly well-built but more grim-looking man said to Wu Yitian, That is why I wanted to recruit him. We must do everything in our power to make him join our Crimson Gang. We must succeed or die trying. Wu Yitian said as his eyes set ablaze with fire, Big brother, are you planning to make him eat the divine marionette? If we fail, we could be totally wiped out. The grim-looking man asked in alarm. Yes. Danger can never be overcome without taking risks. If we have him, the Crimson Gang can even operate in the continent's capital. We can earn more money and play with even more beautiful women. Qin Shui entered the realm of Violet Jade Immortal at night. He took out the treasures such as the weapons and armors that he took from the Yen Clan treasury and distributed them among the Qin household. When he saw their excited faces, he also felt happy. Of all the demonic beast cores that Qin Shui had taken from the Yen Clan treasury, 
The best core was an orange one which was about 2,500 years old. If he wanted to synthesize a Cientian golden pellet, he would still need one 3,000 year, one 3,500 year and one 4,000 year demonic beast core. Cientian golden pellet recipe, 500 year demonic beast core, 1,000 year demonic beast core, 1,500 year demonic beast core, 2,000 year demonic beast core. 2,500-year demonic beast core, 3,000-year demonic beast core, 3,500-year demonic beast core, 4,000-year demonic beast core, 2,000 years snow melted wood, 1 peach of immortality, 3 drops of 5,000 years tortoise blood, 1,000-year ginseng, 2,000-year lingji, time, 1,000 fleece flower root, 1,000-year blood coral and 1,000-year immortal fox saliva. A 500-year demonic beast was about Cientian level. 1,000-year beast was at the peak of Cientian. 1,500-year beast was at Martial King beginner grades. 2,000-year beast was about grade 5 Martial King. 2,500-year beast was about grade 7 Martial King. 3,000-year beast was at grade 8 Martial King. The core of a 4,000-year demonic beast required hunting a demonic beast, which was at the peak of Martial King level. A demonic beast can fight on par with three humans of the same level. Even if there were five peak grade martial king level warriors, it might be difficult to defeat a 4,000 year demonic beast. A martial saint level warrior can easily get it done but all martial saint level warriors were too far away. Qin Shui shook his head. No matter how hard it was, he must succeed. Qin Shui felt very happy looking at the huge heap of gems. There were moonstones known as Moonlight Stone in the Central Continent, Black Treasured Stones, Red Agate known as Firestones in the Central Continent, and there was a type of Sky Blue Colored Stone. Qin Shui did not know what they were. Should I use this time to synthesize gems? Gem synthesis also involved the use of ancient art of forging. He only needed a smelting furnace, and it did not involve any complex steps like forging weapons or armor. However, it required a significant amount of vital energy. The process of smelting, fusion and refinery required full concentration and a large amount of vital energy, a large amount of spiritual sense and a good fusion method. Qin Shui did not know the fusion process used by people from the central continent. Qin Shui's method was very unique but simple. The prerequisite was that he needed to use key of the ancient strengthening technique as a foundation. He would use his spiritual sense to observe and conduct the fusion process. A slight mistake would mean that everything will have to be scrapped. Qin Shui found that it was not that simple after his first synthesis. Fusing two level 1 moonstones into a level 2 gem was actually a little strenuous for him. This must be the reason why level 4 gems were quite expensive in Green Cloud Continent. Perhaps it was due to the fact that this was his first time, so he felt exhausted. He had to keep himself in a focused state for a long time to avoid ruining everything with a small mistake. Despite that, Qin Shui was glad that the minute subtlety of his vital energy and strength had actually become stronger. Qin Shui did not expect such a side benefit. It seemed like this was a result of controlling his strength with such high precision while being in an extremely focused state. Qin Shui decided to incorporate the activity into his cultivation. Anyway, it would take a long time for him to fully use up that heap of gems. After he had finished fusing all the level 1 gems, he can fuse the level 2 gems and so on. Each gem could be used more than once and the process was very time-consuming. It was only because it was that time-consuming that it had that side benefit. Qing Shui channeled one huge cycle of key using ancient key of the ancient strengthening technique. He was already at the 137th cycle and was about to reach the 138th cycle. Qin Shui could feel that the time it took to complete each cycle was getting long and longer. He did not know how long it would take to reach the 199th cycle. Qin Shui could not wait to quickly get to the 199th cycle. It was not that he did not want to reach the sixth layer of the ancient strengthening technique, but that was not easy. On the other hand, reaching the 199th cycle only required the accumulation of time. Mighty Elephant Stomp Qin Shui already practiced Mighty Elephant Stomp for a month. Even though he did not spend all his time on Mighty Elephant Stomp, 
the time he spent practicing this skill was already close to one year's time in the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. Yet, he still could not feel that diamond key. Qin Shui had never given up because he knew that the skills at the back will not be that easy. After all, even the various forms had taken him quite a significant amount of time. In the realm of Violet Jade Immortal, it would have been equivalent to over ten years of hard training. Qin Shui slowly took in a long, deep breath. Following the instruction of the diamond key, he channeled the key gradually through his meridians, the ends, limbs and bones. It always stopped short of completing the cycle. He did not know how many times he had tried. It was to that point where he felt that if he just completed the full cycle, he would be able to successfully gain the ability of Diamond Key. Sigh. Qin Shui stopped as he sighed. Another day had passed, but he still did not felt any reaction from this Diamond Key. He did not know how many times he had sighed. Qin Shui felt alright after sighing as it was within his expectation anyway. He ate a little and tried to level up his soul shake bell. After the soul shake bell had increased one level, it stopped leveling. Qin Shui stopped using it but he tried leveling it up every day. Just like this, Qin Shui spent most of his time on the ancient strengthening technique and also continued practicing the other techniques. Time passed quickly in this manner. Blue Lotus Art After he felt an unusual change practicing Blue Lotus Art, Qin Shui continuously practiced it. He condensed his key of Xientian to the shape of a lotus. Qin Shui was now somewhat proficient at controlling three golden lotus flowers, but it was only a method for him to control his strength and vital energy. He had not planned on using this on an opponent. Basic Sword Technique Heavenly Palace Sword Art Qin Shui practiced all his techniques every day at least once or multiple times. Then, he spent his remaining time on Mighty Elephant Stump. Qin Shui held the belief that the harder it was to master a technique, the more powerful it was. Besides, Qin Shui was very aware of the prowess of the Mighty Elephant Stump. It stopped again. I am always just one step away. Every time Qin Shui channeled his key, it failed. Every time he reached that Lingtai acupoint, it failed. If only he could break through that Lingtai acupoint at his back, he only needed the key to pass through the point, and the cycle would be complete. After he thought about it for a moment, Qin Shui took another long, deep breath. He once again channeled his key all throughout his body. Once again, he pushed his key towards the position of the acupoint. When he reached the spot, Qin Shui suddenly channeled his nature energy. Even though he was unable to channel his own key of Xientian when first practicing Diamond Key, nature energy was considered the most mysterious sort of key in the cosmos so Qin Shui decided to just try it out. The unobstructable nature energy, the most righteous and divine key in the cosmos. He had spent such a long time practicing his nature energy every morning facing the east. It was now much stronger, especially after the previous breakthrough, it had improved a lot. The nature energy became one with the breath, and it rushed towards the Ling Tai acupoint. Pack. It broke. It broke like a knife through butter. Qin Shui broke through the spot that had bothered him for such a long time. After that, Qin Shui felt a golden hair-like strand of ki rise from his dantian and felt it slowly travel through the path stated in the diamond ki technique. It was automatic and seemed to function similarly to the ki of the ancient strengthening technique but it took a different path through the body meridians. At the same time, he felt a slight change in his strength, defense, and the strength of his internal constituent. His body felt numb. Qin Shui controlled the gold strand of diamond key and channeled it through multiple cycles. One cycle, two cycles. Even though the diamond key was thin, it was durable, sharp, domineering, and slowly strengthening. It was not easy to cultivate this. Diamond key. He brought it through more than 100 cycles. Half a day had passed. According to the introduction, Qin Shui was already at the small success stage of Mighty Elephant Stomp. Even so, it must be the lowest stage level of that stage. After he was comfortable channeling the Diamond Key, he needed to use his own key of Xientian to drive it. But he was stunned when he used his key of Ancient Strengthening Technique to come in contact with the Strand of Diamond Key. Qin Shui could feel that there was a little change in his body in that instant. It was as if a fish leaping into water. 
Qing Shui was astonished that his own key of ancient strengthening technique did not travel in parallel with the diamond key. Instead, the muddy gold-colored key enveloped the strand of yellow diamond key. Qing Shui could clearly feel the diamond key in the middle of his key of the ancient strengthening technique. It felt like it was already almost as thick as a thread of wool yarn. Qing Shui could feel that his bones, meridians, dantian, internal organs, and limbs were significantly stronger. Not only his body defenses but it felt like he had an overall boost in strength and speed. Mighty Elephant Stomp, Large Success Stage he had reached the large success stage of Mighty Elephant Stomp directly. The crux of the Mighty Elephant Stomp technique was the Diamond Key. If he could successfully cultivate Diamond Key, it would be considered as small stage success. Gaining the ability to fuse that and the cultivator's key's essence would be at large success stage. Finally, the Great Perfection stage would be when there was a total fusion of the two. Chapter 412 The Force of One Stomp The Legendary Item Holy Bracelet Qin Shui knew that this situation was the result of the combination between the diamond key and his key of ancient strengthening technique, but yet, they were not fully combined together. However, Qin Shui could already feel the thick streams of diamond key giving him a strong gravitational force, though it did not affect his speed. The feeling of that power was so numbing that he felt very weird yet very happy at the same time. It was the feeling of when he had gained immense powers. The energy throughout his body was channeled, and he suddenly stomped down with one foot. Boom! Qin Shui had a tremendous strength of over 3 million jin, and the mighty elephant stomp was able to increase his strength by 50% and 5 times the grounding effect. This stomp contained the tremendous power of over 15 million jin. A deep sound rang out, and with a series of huge tremors, cracks appeared on the surface, but they were quickly restored. This was the self-recovery ability the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. Ha ha! Qin Shui broke into a loud laughter. This surprise came too quickly. Not only was he now equipped with the mighty elephant stomp, but his strength was also increased by 50%, receiving an increment of 1.5 million jin. Divine Arm Clearing Qin Shui used all the powers he had as he wished. If not for the strong self-recovery abilities he had whilst in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal, he would probably be in a horrible state now. After he had quieted down, Qing Shui started to think of the reason why he could have brought the Diamond Key to the large success stage in such a short time. In the end, he could only attribute it to the Key of Ancient Strengthening Technique. Other than this, he could not think of any other reason. In the morning, when Qing Shui woke up for practice, he discovered that he was the latest. The rest were training hard, especially in the tiger form, which they had trained quite well in. Most of them had reached the large success stage in the tiger form. Qin Shui still provided them with sufficient spirit concentrating pills, although they were of the lowest quality, and could only make their one day cultivation worth two days. Not everyone could do this in the world of the nine continents. Other than one's own efforts, hard work and level of comprehension, a genius would also need a bit of luck and some heaven-defying items. For example, the spirit concentrating pill which increased one's cultivation efforts by six times. It would mean that 30 plus years worth of cultivation would be equivalent to an ordinary person's 180 years of cultivation. Other than that, there was also the holy bracelet which was six times stronger than the spirit concentrating pills, giving one about ten times the result of their usual cultivation. It was a pity that there were too few of such amazing items. Just a single holy bracelet was sufficient to send all the cultivators in the world to fight each other for it. The value of this item was even greater than martial arts of the divine realms. Qin Shui thought that it would be good if he could have a holy bracelet. He then thought that he already had a realm of the violet jade immortal, which was much better. Shaking his head, he told himself that one should not be too greedy, so he threw away the distracting thoughts. He lifted his head to see that Qing Qing was holding a sword, standing there in a daze, frowning. Qing Shui walked over slowly, smiling as he took the sword from her hands. What are you thinking about? I had saw you standing here for quite a while. I'm trying to recall the sword arts my father taught me when I was young, but I realize that I cannot remember them, she replied dejectedly. Come, elder sister, I'll show you a set of sword technique. This is also the one I use. It's very simple, but it has defeated quite a number of martial king cultivators. 
Qin Shui diverted Qin Qin's attention. The basic sword technique which was at the level of one with heaven when displayed, everyone could tell that this was the most basic of the basic sword techniques, but they appeared completely different in Qin Shui's hands. Performing with great skill as if one was clumsy, one with heaven, returning to nature. Isn't this the basic sword technique? Qin Qin looked at Qin Shui, surprised, disbelief reflecting in her eyes. That's right. Each martial arts or technique would have their own value and their own uniqueness. Are you interested in learning this basic sword techniques? Qin Shui handed Qin Qin the sword, asking. I am. This seems very easy to pick up. But why is it that I've never seen anyone who's able to perform the basic sword techniques to such a level? Qin Qin asked Qin Shui, puzzled. Practice makes perfect. Sister, listen to your younger brother. Practice this set of basic sword techniques for a thousand times every day and put in a lot of effort, all right? Qin Shui smiled and said, Hmm, I'll listen to you, Qin Qin said with a smile. Brother Shui, you're biased. Why do you only teach Sister Qin Qin and not us? Qin Bei walked over, pouting. I knew you'd say this. I've taught you guys this long ago, but it seems that you guys are not suitable for this. When has your brother Shui been stingy with you? Haven't I remembered and shared all the good things? Qin Shui patted Qin Bei's head gently and said, Why am I not suitable? Qin Bei smiled, too. You've already learned other sword techniques, and the things that you'd learned before are all over the place. Moreover, you're already past the stage of such tough repetitive training. Oh, then is Sister Qin suitable for this training method? Qin Bei asked. Qin Shui nodded and smiled. Hmm. Your sister Qing basically has not cultivated any martial arts before with the exception of a set of martial technique. Once a person cultivated other sword techniques, they would no longer be suited to cultivate this basic sword technique. Or at least, they won't be able to reach a high level of cultivation. It was because it would be hard for their mind to sink into the moves of the basic sword technique. Just like how after a person is used to wearing beautiful clothes, it would never be natural for him to put on ragged clothes. But if it was a person who never had any clothes to begin with, when given ragged clothes, the person would be able to wear them well. It was because it would let the person appear better than before, and it would be more natural on him as well. I don't care, Brother Shui, you must teach me a power technique, alright? Qing Bei shook Qing Shui's arm. Hmm, alright. You go tell the others that I'll be teaching you guys something in a while, Qing Shui smiled and said. Sister, let me tell you about this basic sword techniques. While it is the most basic stuff, but I've practiced no less than 10 million times. I can share with you some things which will make it easier for you when you learn. Qing Shui smiled and said, before he grabbed onto Qing Qing's hand which was holding onto the sword. Swoosh! The sword thrusted out in a straight line. Sister, you only need to feel the movements while listening to what I have to say. The sword is a sharp weapon and the purpose of a battle is to protect yourself and defeat the opponent. If you can defeat your opponent in the time taken for one breath, don't do it within two breaths, especially in a fight to the death. Look for the most direct, fastest, most accurate, and harshest points. Qin Shui taught the others the core key method from the black armor jumping king and the back connecting fist which he had comprehended from the stone monuments. As long as they were able to train to the small success stage, their abilities would be able to increase by quite a lot. Qin Shui was not being selfish towards them, but it was because they did not have the realm of the violet jade immortal like he did. Being too greedy would make it hard to chew down all the food. It would not be good for them if Qin Shui taught them too many things. In the morning, Qin Shui did not have anything to do and planned to head out for a walk. It had been very long since he felt so relaxed. After all, he has removed the Yen clan which had been troubling them. As for the issues with the Lion King's Ridge and the Sword Tower, they were not something he would be able to accomplish within a day or two. For them, Qin Shui had also decided on his plans. Five years for one, twenty years for another, Qin Shui noticed that it was as if he had always been living for revenge. But no matter what, it was fine as long as he lived a fulfilling and meaningful life. It was sufficient to be able to live a life without regrets. But how many people would be able to live without any regrets? Qing Shui shook his head, telling himself not to think too much into it. If he did, 
he would feel an uncontrollable rage. Looking at the various people on the streets, he strolled along without a goal, occasionally looking at the beautiful ladies passing by. Sometimes they would look at this man who was alone, and might even talk between themselves. Qin Shui could even hear what they were saying. When Qin Shui looked towards them, they would stick out their tongues playfully and run off. When he lifted his head, he discovered that he had unknowingly made his way to Yu Hien. After a short days, Qin Shui walked in and headed upstairs. The memories of the times he had shared with Yu He and her beautiful figure appeared in his mind. This restaurant was no longer called Yu He Inn. Qin Shui guessed that it must have been sold to someone else. He looked for a window seat in the hall on the second level. Very soon, two dishes and a pot of wine were served. Qin Shui did not came here for food, but had came to adjust his feelings. Looking out the window, Qin Shui would have a peaceful feeling when he looked down on the passing crowd. It was just that very quickly, his gaze was fixed on someone. It was because he had seen someone. Yu He. She was similarly walking about in the streets, depressed, without a goal, or rather, taking a stroll. Qin Shui saw that she was not as well-rounded as before. Her waist and legs were thinner, and it felt as if even her bones were thinner now. This was truly what it meant to be a bag of bones. However, she appeared to be more elegant than before, her breasts perked up, and even her bosom was more rounded and sexy. When she walked to Yu Hien's entrance, she stopped, and then slowly walked in. Qin Shui's smile appeared to be slightly bitter and happy. He felt that his feelings were currently very contradicting. When Yu He appeared before him looking astonished, Qin Shui chuckled and stood up. What a coincidence, Sister Yu. Yu He was stuck in a daze for quite a while before she smiled and looked at Qin Shui. It's really such a coincidence. It's really not easy to want to meet young Master Qin now. Today, I'll play the host and treat you to some drinks. What do you say? Qin Shui obviously could tell that there was a hint of blame in Yu He's voice. Qin Shui thought about how he had tainted many parts of her body previously, and was once very infatuated with her. Now, was he being heartless or giving her the cold shoulder because she was a widow? Qin Shui shook his head. He knew that that was not what he was thinking. Qin Shui's thoughts were not that old school. He only felt that he was not strong enough and was afraid to get her involved in trouble like how it was for Wunan Wugo and Ming Yu Jelu. Qin Shui's gaze fixed on Yu He, reflecting a painful struggle. Is it that difficult a decision? Yu He looked at Qin Shui's pained eyes. She thought that Qin Shui was not willing to see her and instantly felt very bitter inside. Qin Shui regained his composure and quickly apologized, Sister Yu, what are you talking about? Let me treat you today. I'd always been missing you. He misses me. These words kept repeating in Yuhi's mind and she had the urge to cry. Regardless if his words were the truth or not, it was all worth it. From that day she had left Qin clan, she had not thought of being together with him. This was for the best. Chapter 413 Joyful Yuhi, Crimson Gang, Divine Marionette Pellet Sister Yu, come sit here. Qin Shui pulled Yu He and sat her down. He then had the server set two dishes and a pair of chopsticks. Yu He was a bit stunned, but she also understood when she had started having feelings for this small man. It might be that now, he was no longer the young man in the past. Thinking of when she met him for the first time, his fallacious reasonings interested her. Furthermore, he was also a rascal and even received benefits from her again, and again by unfair means. Is old grandpa still okay? Qin Shui asked. Yu He was a bit distracted, but she smiled. Grandpa is well. Is everything going smoothly? Qin Shui knew what she meant with her question. After all, when he previously went to Yen clan, Yu Dong Hao and Yu He had also seen it. Qin Shui smiled as he nodded. Are you leaving Hundred Miles City soon? Yu He calmed her mind and looked at Qin Shui. After Qin Shui poured some wine he replied, I am still not clear about it. Let's talk about it after the new year. I might possibly be leaving since there are still a lot of things that I have to do. He was no longer the young man who just came from Hundred Miles City. He was now a tiger that had climbed up mountains and wanted to roar proudly across the whole forest. He was a large dragon that ascended to the sky and wanted to roam around. She felt that she was getting further and further away from him. 
she could not succeed in chasing after his presence. Thinking of her previous husband, she recalled that he did not return for the whole night when they got married. However, on the second day when he returned, he was already dead. They were young at the time and did not have any feelings for each other. That was the reason why she did not feel anything when he died. However, because of the status of his clan, and the fact that Yu Donghao was severely injured, she felt that her life would be unbearably miserable because her wedding contract could not be removed. It was Qin Shui who had let Grandpa recover his cultivation level and let her remove her wedding contract without a hitch. But now, she discovered that her heart had completely belonged to him. Even though it was full of hardship, there was also happiness. Sister Yu, what are you planning to do in the future? Qin Shui seemed like he was asking as he wished. Hearing Qin Shui's words, Yu He smiled bitterly. She looked at him seriously and answered, The decisions are not important anymore. In the past, my decisions were all for one person, but now, it doesn't matter. What if, by some chance, it wasn't like how you thought it was? What if actually that person was waiting for you all along? Qin Shui looked at Yu He seriously. Yu He's body shook helplessly as she stared into Qin Shui's clear eyes. They were still as clear as before and still so good looking. Seeing a warm smiling expression allowed her to find some of the previously familiar feelings. Her eyes slowly became wet. However, they carried a sliver of happiness and charm as they looked at Qin Shui. She exerted all her strength as she nodded her head. The tears trickled down her face. Qin Shui extended his hands and gently wiped her tears, feeling her delicate skin, so soft and smooth without any makeup on, his face slowly turned red. When Qin Shui was walking home, he was still thinking about Yi He's parting words. Qin Shui, I will wait for you forever. Qin Shui was stopped by one person as he was about to reach home. It was a valiant and cold man. Qin Shui could already feel a bandit's aura from this person at first glance. Not only was the man valiant, he was also very tall. The expression on his face was stiff and reserved. The lips that were tightly closed made people feel that he had a lot of personality and was disciplined. Qin Shui looked at this big fellow doubtfully. Can we talk for a while? The man asked straightforwardly. Qin Shui knitted his brows. Judging from his request, he must have known about Qin Shui. After thinking deeply for a while, Qin Shui nodded and walked towards the quiet nearby street. Why are you looking for me? And who are you? Qin Shui asked. Sir, I assume that you know about the Crimson Gang. Oh, other people call us the Crimson Gang. The cold man replied. He seemed like he was reading Qin Shui's expressions. Qin Shui already knew some things about the Crimson Gang. After all, the Qin clan had at one point also delivered money to them. However, on the contrary of what one might expect, Qin Shui did not have any opinion on the Crimson Gang. It was in Bandit's nature to not care about anything and heavily injure their opponents at all costs. Therefore, the stronger a Bandit Gang was, the fewer people there would be to easily act on them. If they were to lay hands on them, they must catch everything in one net. If not, it would cause endless trouble. The bandits also based themselves in the world of the nine continents by relying on the words, fierce, and absolute. Qin Shui looked at the cold man calmly, and he slightly squinted his eyes. He forced his sharp gaze on his opponent. The intimidating aura slowly pushed down on him. Qin Shui did not hold back the killing intention in his eyes at all. It had only been a short while and the cold man was already drenched in sweat. However, he still locked eyes with Qin Shui. His eyes were firm. Even though both of his feet were already shaking, he was still holding on. Qin Shui never thought that this person would have such a firm and persistent wisdom which reminded him of the Green Wolf Gang. He thought about the teenager named Qin Lang. Unfortunately, there was no longer any news about him. Originally, he was still thinking of making the Green Wolf Gang more powerful. However, now he reckoned that they should have left or maybe there could be other reasons. In life, there would be a lot of people who come and go. Qin Shui, who lived as a human for two generations, had long since accepted the unpleasant fact. Say it. Why did you come to look for me? Oh yeah, you have not told me who you are. Qin Shui asked gently as he withdrew his intimidating aura. When Qin Shui's aura was withdrawn, 
The cold man immediately felt like he had put down a mountain. All of a sudden, he collapsed to the ground. Thank you, sir, for holding back. I am the second person in charge in the Crimson Gang. I am Li Hong. This time, I came here to inform you that there was someone who wanted to injure you. Li Hong said hurriedly and stood up. Your boss. Qin Shui suddenly smiled. In reality, Qin Shui hardly ran into this kind of incident. Normally, people who took the risk to come here would come with an attractive offer. For example, to take over the position as the boss. He had heard these kinds of stories many times before, but he never thought that he would run into it himself today. How did you know? So you already known about it? Li Hong looked at Qin Shui in shock. Qin Shui looked at Li Hong's strange look, not knowing if it was acted out. Qin Shui thought that no matter what the purpose was, this person must have taken a really huge risk. Seeing as this person was also calm, he may not be an honest man. It was just that previously, he had been severely scared by him. In any case, killing him just now would be easy and could be done in just a moment. Say it. What's the purpose of you doing this? Is it for the boss's position? Qin Shui asked as he calmly looked at Li Hong. Hey, actually, I am doing it for those five hundred brothers of mine. At that time, it was exactly because the boss seek for the loveliness of a woman that led to the death of four thousand and five hundred of our brothers. The five hundred brothers survived by chance. And now, he has once again set his sight on you, sir. Therefore, I knew that if I don't come, the remaining five hundred brothers of ours will also be finished. Li Hong replied slowly as he let out a sigh. Qin Shui knitted his brows. Since this person was the leader of five thousand people, he should be a warrior at the peak of Xiantian realm, so much so that he could possess the strength of a martial king, or maybe even the high-level martial king warriors. On the other hand, the clan that would rather withdraw to this place to chase after them could also be quite formidable. That was why they did not dare to be so high profile. If not, they would absolutely have been able to walk harshly and unreasonably in Sang Lang country. Of course, if they ran into some supreme hermit, they would be in bad luck. You think that you will be able to save all your people if you come and look for me? Qin Shui asked while remaining calm and collected. Li Hong shook his head. At least I have tried my best. And also, do not look down on the boss. He is a poison maker. The poisons that he makes are very powerful. Do you want to be the boss? Qin Shui asked. The cold man was startled. He smiled and said, Actually, ever since the members in Crimson Gang got chased by other people, they have wanted to live normal lives. Entering the sect may be easy, but if they ever thought about leaving, it would be as hard as climbing up to heaven. I have had enough of this kind of life where we have today but no tomorrow. Even becoming an adventurer in the large continent is better than this. Exactly, I am asking you if you want to be the boss. If you become the boss, wouldn't you be able to do as you wish? Wouldn't it be up to you whether you want to dismiss or reorganize the gang? Qin Shui asked again while smiling. Li Hong looked at Qin Shui with a fiery look. Sir, are you serious? Of course, but I hope that you can promise me a few things. Qin Shui said after thinking for a while. At that moment, Li Hong was already madly happy. The insanely joyful expression made Qin Shui slightly knit his brows. Unfortunately, Li Hong did not see it. Li Hong knew that the boss's original purpose was to let Qin Shui become his patron. However, he knew that Qin Shui might not agree to it. That was why he wanted to use the divine marionette pellet that he accidentally acquired to completely control Qin Shui. However, he never thought that on this day, he would get Qin Shui to take a liking to him. Judging by the situation, getting his protection was seemed very likely. Sir, feel free to say it. I will promise you anything. Li Hong said hurriedly. In the future, after you become boss, I do not wish that you would cause any commotions nearby. And also, if you obtain any information, you can tell me. Of course, I will reward you to a certain extent. You do not need to reward me. I will definitely do as you say. Li Hong nodded while answering definitely. Sir, other than refining the poisonous drug, Wu Tian has also accidentally obtained another pellet known as the Divine Marionette Pellet. It is capable of completely controlling people or demonic beasts that swallowed it as long as their strength was below that of martial saints. 
As he heard Li Hung's words, Qin Shui was shocked. There indeed was nothing much that one can do about these things. However, Qin Shui still looked at Li Hong with doubt. Then why hasn't he used this? Divine marionette pellet. On that person or the demonic beasts, Li Hong on the other hand, replied unhurriedly. All along, he always hated to use the divine marionette pellet. At first, he wanted to look for demonic beasts, even though he may have found a few, they were all failures. Furthermore, quite a number of people also died. That was why he set his sights on others. However, he was unable to find suitable candidates within a short period of time. As for those famous experts, he also did not stand a chance. Qin Shui thought for a while and felt that it also made sense. How can a pellet be delivered so easily into the mouth of an expert? Oh, then this time, how has Wu Yitian decided on letting me take in the medication? Qin Shui asked in uncertainty. Recently, he refined a poisonous drug, an especially powerful one. It did not have any color or taste. He wanted to first poison you with it, then make you take in the divine marionette pellet and the antidote for the poison after that. Li Hong's words made Qin Shui feel a bit nervous, but then, he thought about his own valiant body and expansive vital energy, as well as the five dragon pellets that he still had in reserve. Nevertheless, there was still a bit of lingering fear because if by any chance there was a mistake, the consequences would be unimaginable. The purpose of you coming today was not just to tell me all of these, was it? Qin Shui smiled as he looked at Li Hong. Actually, the reason I came today was to invite you there. When Li Hong said this, he felt a bit uneasy. After all, Wu Yitian was also like a brother to him. It was just that ever since the Crimson Gang became powerful, he stopped listening to his opinions. If he had listened last time, the deaths of around 4,500 disciples could have been avoided. Li Hong knew that if he brought Qin Shui there this time, Wu Yitian's life would be no more. As he thought about it, he helplessly let out a sigh. Letting a few thousands of disciples die for nothing more than his own desires. This time, it's considered as giving an explanation for them. Even though his voice was soft, Qin Shui was still able to hear it, and once again knitted his brows. Qin Shui looked at the sky. It was still noon. Seeing that there was still time, he nodded at Li Hong. After getting on the beast cart that Li Hong specially prepared, they immediately proceeded towards Parallel Mountain. When I first came, how did Wu Tian make you approach me? Qin Shui asked with a smile as he looked at Li Hong driving the cart. Originally, there was a cart driver, but Li Hong insisted on driving it himself. Actually, he did not say anything to me. Normally, I am the one who thinks about these kinds of incidents. But usually, he will tell me about the things following up so that I will be able to deal with them better. Then, if your motive is only to let me go up the mountain, what method will you use? Qin Shui asked, still smiling brightly. Li Hong was already sweating. I will say that I have some business to do with you. I might also deceive you to the mountain because of the problems regarding Parallel Mountain. Looking at Li Hong who was already humming and hawing, Qin Shui said softly. However, those methods are not as efficient, safe, reliable or beneficial compared to those that you used, are they? This way, I can let you off as you wish. Your desire will also be achieved. It did not only help you fight for an opportunity to live, but it gives you the position to manage the household. However, if I get poisoned by Wu Yitian and turn into a puppet, your mission will also be accomplished perfectly, putting you in the position of attacking or retreating as the opportunity offers, am I right? Suddenly, Li Hong limped on the shaft. He looked at the young man who was smiling slightly. From beginning to end, Xin Shui had given him a peaceful feeling, even after the tricks he played. Or maybe, he did not actually play any tricks because they were not actually obvious. It was just that he did not think that it would be exposed by a person right to his face. Sir, I did not. Li Hong at the moment felt extremely scared. He was fully aware that Qin Shui could kill him in an instant. Do you believe that I will kill you now? Even though Qin Shui said these words softly, that peaceful voice was like an explosive mind beside Li Hong's ears. His body trembled as it crawled towards Qin Shui at the shaft. Do you know which kind of person I hate the most? Sir, I am sorry. For someone like you, I would have actually chopped you off immediately. But why did you want to deny it just now but then admit it again? This time, I won't kill you. 
cut off a finger yourself. Thank you, sir. After snorting depressingly, Li Hong cut off the thumb on his left hand. Li Hong lowered his head. His face was deathly pale, his eyes were filled with resentment. However, at that moment when he lifted his head, only a face with a forceful smile remained. The ten fingers were connected to our heart, even a warrior would find it really painful. Chapter 414 The Unlucky Crimson Gang Eradicated Poison Scriptures Qin Shui wasn't fond of people like Li Hong. As for his scheme, Qin Shui didn't really put it in his eyes. Qin Shui was still really confident about the sturdiness of his body, and right now, he took in a five dragon pellet just in case. Hundred Miles City was not even a hundred miles away from Parallel Mountain. Even if he had taken a beast cart there, it would also be really fast. It would only take about six hours or more. Along the way, Qin Shui gossiped about some unimportant matters with Li Hong. Qin Shui already had his own plan. To the people that wanted to do harm to him, he couldn't let them feel too comfortable. He could definitely not think twice when it comes to dealing with this kind of people. Following the large and smooth street, the beast cart went out of Hundred Miles City very quickly. It went up a dirt road outside. However, the road surface was smooth and glossy, as opposed to what one might have expected. It was only a small city, like Hundred Miles City, that lacked a road with proper stony surface leading to the other cities outside, ones that Xiangzhou City and Jun City had. In those kind of big cities, their road not only led to the exterior part, they were all big streets which were accessible from all sides. Every single one of the streets were wide, and the smooth main street was stone surface. The transportation issue was a huge problem in the world of nine continents. Of course, it would not matter if one had a flying demonic beast. The crucial point was, however, that the majority of the people still needed to rely on some beast carts. So long as there were smooth and flat huge streets, the speed of some of the beast carts would be able to reach up to the speed of some normal flying beasts. For example, the squall blood horses were not demonic beasts. However, its value was much higher than that of the demonic beasts. Its purpose was to be used to pull carts. Its speed was even faster than normal flying beasts. It was approximately 4 meters long and 2 meters and a half tall. It was as fast as wind with a 100% of endurance. Unfortunately, the speed of this kind of squall blood horses was too fast. Their strength was also at the pinnacle among the ferocious beasts. Even the ordinary beasts were not able to deal with them, let alone the normal warriors. They were not able to catch up to their speed. Of course, the flying beasts would be exceptions. Those who possessed them were all people who held the status and symbol of influential clans, influential sects, and rich merchants. Very quickly, the beast cart has already entered the parallel mountain. The mountain path was very narrow. For beast carts like this, there could only be approximately a maximum of three carts going together side by side to each other. Along the journey, he constantly saw the figures of people wearing red shirts passing over. The road along the mountain path of the parallel mountain was only around 30 miles long. The old nest of the Crimson Gang was right at the center of it. Along the way, they would constantly see the appearances of a few flying beasts. However, they would very quickly escape back into the mountain. The old nest of the Crimson Gang was on a broken off mountain peak in Parallel Mountain. Qin Shui once again saw the stone steps forcefully opening up a staircase on the mountain. Of course, it was not as dramatic as the stone steps in Heavenly Palace. Mister, we are here! Shui walked out of the carriage after the voice of Li Hong came through over to the stone steps to join Li Hong. Second boss! Second boss! The people that he met when going up the staircase would all greet Li Hong. The parallel mountain had a height that did not exceed a hundred meters. Thus, the stone steps were not actually that long. Very quickly, they have already arrived at the mountain peak after taking two turns. There was only one building that resembled a palace. The rest of the buildings were all stone houses. And so, Li Hong led Qin Shui and walked towards the direction of the palace. Second boss, a disciple from Crimson Gang that was guarding the entrance of the palace stooped down and called out. Is the boss inside? Li Hong asked softly. The boss has informed that the second boss could go in immediately when you come back. Mister, let's go in. Qin Shui nodded his head while smiling. 
He followed Li Hong and walked into the Peachwood entrance, which was still considered to be wide. Immediately after entering, Qin Shui could see that it was a huge palace. In the middle were three golden statue of Buddha. There were many chairs in other places and a greasy sandalwood smell filled the air. Qin Shui saw quite a few purple sandalwoods, thick as an arm, burning in front of the statue of Buddha. Qin Shui felt that his brain becoming a bit fuzzy, but very quickly, he came back to his senses again. At the same time, he also perceived a slightly unusual smell which was covered up by the sandalwood smell. If the sandalwood was not there, it should be really easy to sniff the smell out. It was, however, present in his situation. If he had not known about the situation in advance, he reckoned that even after he fainted, he still would not be able to sniff out the extremely weak smell. This Li Hong previously said that it had no taste nor color. Was he confusing me? Boom! When Qin Shui saw Li Hong falling to the ground and losing consciousness, Qin Shui used his hand to touch his forehead. His body was vacillating and staggering as he held onto a chair and looked at the surroundings with shock. After that, he slowly sat down on the chair, quickly took out a poison avoidance pill, and ate it. This was the most common poison avoidance pill in the continent. Your antidote is useless. The poison that you breathed in just now was not the usual kind of poison. As the voice dropped, a tall and mighty man carried an extremely huge horse chopping saber and came out. The tall and mighty man walked to Li Hong's side. He took out a sparkling and translucent snow white pellet and put it into Li Hong's mouth while holding his chin. The medicinal pill went down smoothly along his throat. Very quickly, Li Hong had already woken up quietly. Boss! Li Hong, your method is indeed really intelligent. The boss said in joy after he saw Li Hong woke up. After Li Hong looked at Qin Shui who was sitting there and holding on persistently, he smiled and said to the mighty and valiant boss. It's also because the poison of the boss is good. Otherwise, even if we really did get to invite him over, we would just end up being destroyed by him. All right, you should go and inform all of the disciples to come back. Coincidentally, they are also nearby. Today is a happy day. Let's all enjoy. The boss Wu Yitian said to Li Hong. All right. After Li Hong finished speaking, he once again looked at Qin Shui who was already unconscious. A cold light flashed across his eyes. Brat, you are still a bit inferior when it comes to playing mind tricks. Do you really think that the useless medicinal pill that you took along the way will be able to resist the poison of the boss? How funny. In the future, just be a killing machine. Li Hong only left after looking at Qin Shui once more. Qin Shui, haha, in the future you are the greatest support that I, Wu Yitian, have. Using this divine marionette on you is totally worth the price, and also the fans' incense. Today, I have invested my hard-earned savings into it. I hope that you won't let me down. Wu Yitian held the bright case as he approached Qin Shui while talking. Don't be so sure. At this moment, Qin Shui opened up both of his eyes widely as he looked at Wu Yitian who had walked to his side. Simultaneously, he stretched out his hand and extended it towards Wu Yitian at an incomparably fast speed. Wu Yitian, who had just experienced a shock, quickly chopped Qin Shui from a slanted angle with the large horse chopping saber in his hand. A thread of fiery spark raised up in the air. A warrior of the martial king grade. Unfortunately, there is still quite a huge gap between you and myself. Kong. Diamond Key. Qin Shui's palm formed out a lump of yellowish, underlying strength. It abruptly greeted Wu Yitian's large saber. The other hand of his maintained the constant look as it went into Wu Yitian's direction and grabbed the bright case of the divine marionette. Ding! A piercing noise arose. The bright case of the divine marionette was also grabbed by Qin Shui. After that, he immediately threw it into the realm of violet jade. As soon as he saw the divine marionette thrown away, Wu Yitian could no longer bother about the unique pellets that he had gotten by accident. With swords in both of his hand, he screamed. Someone please come! He chopped Qin Shui and was about to run outside. How could Qin Shui let him throw it away? The large elephant trampled. Qin Shui collapsed heavily onto Wu Yitian. Bun! Hong! A tremendous strength equivalent to a 15 million gene. 
Inside the realm of violet jade, the earth's surface that had only been cracked has now completely parted from each other. The whole main hall also collapsed in an instant. Even a few of the stony houses in the surroundings had also collapsed. Stone dust flew everywhere and filled the whole sky. The moment his foot had stepped down, numerous rocks and talcum powder hid his body. It was extremely painful, but Qin Shui's defense was abnormal. That Wu Yitian, however, was going to suffer a lot. Not only was he shaken until he felt dizzy, when the earth below tore apart, it almost ripped him apart as well. At the instant when the earth quaked, his organs had already been shaken to the point where it started bleeding. However, what came next were the rocks and talcum powder that filled up the whole sky. The direction where Wu Yitian was in was the critical point. Moreover, it was only a few meters further. Under the footstep of such tremendous strength, the force of the rocks was even larger than the force of the concealed weapons that Qin Shui hid out. Just like this, Wu Yitian was pressed into a mushy sieve. Qin Shui also did not think that the stamp of the large elephant would actually possess such enormous strength. At this moment, he also found out about the unusual things about the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. In the external world, it could actually cause such a massive destruction. With the tremendous strength of 15 million jin, even a small mountain top had been razed to the ground. Qin Shui's surroundings turned into ruins. The tremendous vibration straight away sputtered out into the surroundings of the main hall. Qin Shui discovered that he has actually crushed almost half of the 500 crimson bandits Li Hong had just recruited to death when he walked out of the ruins. The remaining people were almost already injured. Li Hong, on the other hand, was expressionless. He watched as the surroundings within 100 meters of him turned into ruins. Yet, the person who came out had already made his spirit fly to heaven. How is he okay? Where is the boss? Even though he had thought it was a landslide, he knew from the heaven and earth shaking movement that he would have gotten shot to death by the sputtering rocks had he not escaped quickly. He already felt that something was wrong in merely a second. Whatever he currently thought was only calm excuses that he gave to himself. When the figure showed up however, he knew that everything was done for. There were only approximately ten injured crimson bandits left. Looking at the small mountaintop that looked almost like it had been flipped over, Qin Shui was extremely satisfied with the trampling of this huge elephant. Li Hong, are you making the move yourself, or shall I be the one to make the move? These people have killed too many lives. There was no reason for Qin Shui to leave them behind. The best way of dealing with these people would be to eliminate them completely. As Qin Shui looked at Li Hong's and other people's corpses, he once again stamped his feet. Bun! Qin Shui looked at the land that was almost 10 meters long getting trampled 2 meters down. There was smoke present everywhere, and it buried Li Hong and the others within it. Qin Shui on the other hand walked towards the warehouse of the Crimson Gang that Li Hong mentioned to him about. After being bandits for so many years, there should be collections of quite a considerable value. He penetrated through the thick stony wall of the warehouse with a single punch. All over the floor, the things that came in the largest quantity were still gold, silver, and precious stones. There were also armors and weapons that Qin Shui disdained. Compared to the collections of Yen Clan, this was way too inferior. After all, Yen Clan was a treasure pavilion whereas this was only a warehouse that belonged to the Crimson Gang. No matter how small a mosquito was, it would still have meat. Qin Shui took away the gold, silver, and precious stones, leaving behind the remaining armor, weapons, and other stuffs. Qin Shui walked out of the warehouse. Merely walking up to the abandoned main hall, Qin Shui had already seen something that made him felt incomparably astonished. A jet black beast leather book. When he held it up, he saw the words on the surface of the book which were white in color. There were two words written on top of it. Poison scriptures. As Qin Shui flipped over and looked, all of the things that were drawn on it was unexpectedly the poisons in the world of the nine continents, the seven-tailed scorpions, red centipede king, three-colored scorpion, and jade toad. Below each and every kinds of the pictures, they were all instructions on how to extract the poison from the poisonous substance. Next up was the instructions on mixing up the poison. Only the last part were instructions on refining the poisonous drugs. Chapter 415 Breakthrough, The Most Poisonous Iridescent Fairy, 
concocting poison and medicine were quite similar to each other in a lot of ways. Sometimes, 1,000-year medicinal herbs or other medicinal herbs with medical property would be used when concocting poison. Poisonous substances would sometimes be used when concocting medicines as well. Qin Shui had only skimmed through a little bit of the poison scriptures. He knew that this should have fallen out of Wu Yitian's body when he had performed the mighty elephant stomp technique earlier just now. Fortunately, this poison scripture was also made out of demonic beast's leather. Otherwise, it would already have been crushed to powder by now. Qin Shui had discovered that one of the best things about the world of the nine continents was the better an item was, the more unlikely it was to be damaged. Looking at the sky, it was about time to return. The biggest harvest of the day would be this, Divine Marionette, and the Poison Scriptures. Qin Shui was more excited about this, Divine Marionette, thing. He had seen this kind of thing from historical books before. This type of special medicinal pills had been lost in the world since a long time ago. Now, they could only be found within places like those cave dwellings of deities, just like the cave dwelling where Qin Shui had found the Big Dipper Sword. So this thing was extremely valuable. The Divine Marionette, just like its name had suggested, were two medicinal pellets for two people's consumption. It allowed one to gain control over another party. Qin Shui sat on the back of Firebird gradually making his way towards the Hundred Miles City. He looked at the two pellets in the brocade box. The smaller grape-sized one was golden in color. The other, which was one half larger than the smaller one, was bluish-green in color. The person who consumed the bluish-green colored pellet would be manipulated. His future growth and breakthroughs would not be affected in any way, but he would not be able to defy the orders made by the person who consumed the golden colored pellet. The most important fact was that the person who consumed the golden colored pellet would gain an additional 10% strength of the person or demonic beast which had consumed the bluish green pellet. But this was only limited to strength, speed, defense, and spirit energy. The strength of the person or demonic beast that consumed the bluish green pellet would not be reduced in any way. If I have the chance to use this divine marionette, I will not only be able to gain the obedience of possibly the strongest martial king grade 10 cultivator or a tame demonic beast, I would also gain 10% of their strength, speed, defense, and spirit energy. Their strengths won't be reduced as well. Qin Shui marveled at the greatness of this. Divine Marionette 10% strengths of a martial king grade 10 can be considered quite a significant amount. If I manage to find demonic beasts that possess some innate talents, like ones that are especially violent, have fleshy shields, or even especially fast, then the 10% increment would not be a small number as well. Qin Shui's eyes lit up at the thought of it. Soon enough, Qin Shui reached to the Qin clan's medicinal store, but it was already a little past noon time. He was quite happy to be able to eliminate the red-clothed thief. To leave a thief like him wandering around the Hundred Miles City would be disastrous. At the same time he had also learnt that sly and tricky people like Li Hong was way more terrifying than those people who were open about their confrontations. He had only heard about these before, but this time, he could finally be considered to have truly witnessed this kind of people. Brother Shui is back, said Qin Bei upon the return of Qin Shui. Oh, this is... Qin Shui saw Qin Bei and Qin Qin holding little Changfeng's hands, who was tottering around. Uncle! The little chubby guy had already started babbling and was able to greet him, uncle, under the guidance of Qin Bei. Hello? Qin Shui was laughing as he pinched the cheek of the little guy. He then waved goodbye at him and disappeared into the house with Qin Qin and Qin Bei. Qin Shui never had much opportunities to play with this little guy. There were quite a lot of people in the Qin clan so this child never lacked any attention. On top of that, it seemed like this first child of the Qin clan's fourth generation had been especially well-fed. Actually another important reason was that Qin Shui would remember about little Yu Chun every time he saw little Chan Feng. Then, he would remember the scene when Ming Yu Jella was taken away. She had wanted to stay by his side so badly, but he was powerless. For the sake of giving him away out of such difficult situation, she had used a death threat. But Qin Shui knew that her heart had already sunk to the bottom of the valley at that moment. She had slowly made her way up from the bottom of the valley to meet him. 
He had also originally thought that he could give her the reliance she needed, as well as the kind of happiness that she wanted. But instead, all he did was to once again let her return to the bottom of the valley, and it was even worse than before. Qin Shui walked briskly back to his own room, his heart aching a lot. This was one of the things that made a man felt worse. It was far worse than being stabbed a few times by knife. What's wrong with you, Qin Shui? Qin Yi asked him worriedly when she came out and saw Qin Shui's slightly pale face. Her gentle voice was like a stream of river going into Qin Shui's troubled and dried up heart. It watered and nurtured the dried up patch of his heart. Qin Shui forced a smile. His palm clenched into a fist and was already sticky. He knew that the skin of his palm was already torn from his nails digging into it. No one understood a son better than his own mother. Qi could already guess what was on his mind from Qin Shui's facial expression. This was not the first time he had shown such an expression ever since Ming Yu Jello was taken away. Qin Shui, Qin Yu was even sadder than Qin Shui in her heart from seeing her son in such a state. Her son had been cultivating endlessly all the time and almost never had any time to have fun, all for the sake of helping her to collect the debt that the Yen clan had owed her. Now that her wish had come true, his son Zishu had, in turn, reared its ugly head. What was more, it was something far more troublesome than the Yen clan. Qin Yi was also well aware of the Sword Tower's influence. I am alright, mother. You don't have to worry. You still can't trust your son? Ming Yu and the little lass only have to suffer for a little while, Qin Shui smiled. His words caused tears to roll in Qin Yi's eyes. As a listener, her heart already ached, let alone Qin Shui. She knew that Qin Shui's heart must be bleeding, but she also knew he would never show his weakness. He would definitely never show his weakest side in front of her, especially in regards to this incident. Qin Shui had purposely distracted himself from thinking about Ming Yu Jello and the little lass, but sometimes, he couldn't help it even if he wanted to. Whenever a situation like that happened, Qin Shui would vent his suppressed emotion out through force. It was similar to how he really wanted to go to a mountain right now and then flatten the ground with the mighty elephant stomp technique. Before this, he had always pounded the ground with his fists. After reassuring Qin Yi a few more times that he was fine, he went upstairs towards his bedroom. As soon as he returned to his room, he started to rapidly circulate the ancient strengthening technique along with frenzied bull strength, diamond key, and nature energy combined into it. Qin Shui didn't think about anything else. He just wanted to calm his heart down. He had wanted to practice his Tai Chi fists, but the blood in his entire body was about to boil. There was no way he could calm that kind of agitated heart down. Even that unnamed duo cultivation technique was going out of control at this time. He had no idea when had it started circulating by itself. It was going faster and faster, causing for Qin Shui's eyes to turn slightly red. He was starting to panic a little right now. Could it be that his strength was being raised too rapidly, thus causing an instability in his mental state? That wasn't right. His heart state, mental state, and spiritual sense should be higher than his cultivation. He suddenly remembered about the palace building at the heart of the Crimson Gang's old nest on the parallel mountains. He also remembered the sandalwood, that was as thick as a wrist in the Great Hall. Qin Shui felt as if his blood was boiling over. He wanted to suppress it but he couldn't, no matter what. He also couldn't stop that unnamed duo cultivation technique. The key belonging to the unnamed duo cultivation technique flowed within his body, and it was circulating increasingly fast. How did this happen? Blood rushed to Qin Shui's face and his eyes were bloodshot. These were obviously the symptoms of a burning lust. He hurriedly took out a five dragon pellet and swallowed it. After a while, Qin Shui realized that he still wasn't relieved. More importantly, there was already a steel rod tenting his pants. This made him wanted to curse. Fuck this stupid technique. Qin Shui knew that this was caused by that unnamed dual cultivation technique. What do I do about this, colon? Qin Shui was a little anxious yet couldn't help but remembered about Ming Yu Jelu. If she was around, he could go find her. But now, Qin Shui had the sudden impulse to turn the sky over. Creak. Just right at this time, the door was pushed open. Qin Shui was startled and saw that it was Shi Qingzhuang standing at the entrance. Qin Shui, what's wrong with you? 
Shi Qingzhuang saw the Qing Shui's face tinted by an unusual shade of red, even his eyes were burning like a flame. Qing Shui was a little relieved after seeing Shi Qingzhuang, or else he really wouldn't know what to do. I am like you last time, he explained in pain. Shi Qingzhuang was startled. Her hands that were supporting on Qing Shui's burning arms trembled. Her cool and beautiful face was instantly tinted red. She lowered her head slightly, only to see the ridiculous tent pitched at the lower half of Qing Shui's body. She couldn't help but to recall the scene from last time as she stared at Qing Shui embarrassedly and at a complete loss with her cold eyes. Was that worry, fear, rejection, or restlessness? Qing Wan Yu, when the situation arose, Qing Shui still felt a little awkward. After all, after that one experience he had with Shi Qingzhuang a few years ago by accident, they had never done it again, to think that this time was the same reason again. Even if it wasn't for this reason Qing Shui would still be embarrassed to ask. Although she was his own fiancé, the time that he had given her wasn't up yet. He had promised to not lay a finger on her within this period of time. Shi Qingzhuang didn't utter a single word. She gazed at Qing Shui with a strong and steady expression on her face, before slowly lowering her head into Qing Shui's arms, into the embrace of those burning arms. Qing Shui embraced that soft and delicate body, conveniently locking his bedroom door. He carried Shi Qingzhuang in his arms and walked towards the bed. At the same time, he was already locking his lips with those slightly cold thin lips. Shi Qingzhuang shut her eyes tightly and let Qing Shui did whatever he wanted. Qing Shui greedily sucked on her soft tongue and taking in the bejeweled nectar within her mouth. One of his hands was fondling and kneading on her perfectly round and perky buttocks, making Shi Qingzhuang quiver in delight. Qing Shui's spiritual sense had been very clear. The moment he ejaculated, he felt that key of unnamed dual cultivation in his body to suddenly circulate even rapidly. Bam! As if the key flow of the unnamed duo cultivation technique had just broken through a wall of obstruction, the burning sensation in Qing Shui's entire body rapidly dissipated. At the same time using his inner vision, he had only been able to sense the key flow of the unnamed duo cultivation, but that key flow had now become a fine thread of red key force instead. A breakthrough? Qing Shui could also feel that the ancient strengthening technique had successfully entered the 138th cycle. The excitement in Qing Shui's heart was unable to calm down for a long time. Shi Qingzhuang had already fallen asleep. Embracing the woman curled up in his arms, Qing Shui had a lot going through his mind. But it was mostly the unnamed dual cultivation technique. He had gotten his hand on this technique from a perverted Xientian cultivator when he was traveling on the road towards the Sky Sword sect with Wenren Wushuang. Right now, he felt that it was this dual cultivation technique that had broken through. It had allowed Qing Shui to successfully break through to the 138th cycle this time. But not only that, Qing Shui also felt even more of an increment in his strength than before because of this cycle. Just like this. Qing Shui's mind ran wild for more than an hour. He felt Shi Qingzhuang stirring in his arms, about to wake up. Women looked attractive when they were half asleep. However, the languid expression on the face of a woman when she had just woken up was even more beautiful. Shi Qingzhuang blinked her long lashes two times, but she averted her gaze in panic as soon as those cool eyes met with Qing Shui's. Why did you avert your gaze? Qing Shui pressed his forehead against hers and asked tenderly. You looked so scary just now. Qing Shui was speechless. By the time Qing Shui and Shi Qingzhuang put on their clothes and exited the room, it was already dusk. After their activity, Shi Qingzhuang had napped for a little more than an hour. Four hours had passed just like that. Qing Shui looked at Shi Qingzhuang's face that was glowing a little. That kind of expression basked in the afterglow of sex was especially obvious. Anyone would be able to tell from one look. Shi Qingzhuang slightly lowered her head after seeing Qing Shui staring at her. She appeared to be a delicate lady to him at this very moment, making him feel extremely warm on the inside. Auntie said that you were depressed so she sent me upstairs to comfort you. Thanks for your trouble. Time quickly passed, and soon, a month had come by within the blink of an eye. It was almost the end of the year. The Qing clan had originally intended to return to the Qing residence earlier for New Year's celebration. 
However, they had no choice but to postpone their journey for another two days due to the heavy snowfall from yesterday. Qin Shui's biggest improvement over this past one month was the mighty elephant stomp technique. Although it hadn't broke through to the great perfection stage, it had fully stabilized in the realm of the large success stage. He didn't have any plans to further study on the other fighting skills of the elephant form, because he realized that the diamond key was the most vital element to the elephant form. So instead, Qin Shui planned to cultivate the diamond key of the elephant form to a satisfying level first before continuing his cultivate on other elephant skills. Qin Shui had also read through the poison scriptures and kept notes in his mind, but he had not tried to concoct any. He was most interested in one of the poisons named the iridescent fairy, which was one of the few most lethal poisons. It was said to be able to easily poison a martial saint cultivator to death. The iridescent fairy was concocted from the most toxic body parts gathered from highly toxic insects like the iridescent centipede, iridescent spider, iridescent scorpion, iridescent snake, iridescent toad, iridescent lizard, and iridescent wasp. It was said that the most beautiful things were the most toxic. All these seven types of poisonous insects were seven-colored and extremely beautiful but they were also extremely rare. The objects of iridescent colors had always been most scarce in the world of nine continents. Any ordinary person who entered ten meters within the radius of these highly toxic insects would instantly die. Fortunately, these insects only dwelled within the deserted deep mountain forests. They had already agreed to leave for the Qing residence tomorrow. The morning practice next day went on as usual. Qin Shui was exceptionally happy to see the three generations of Qin clan doing their morning practice. They had already come to realize the importance of cultivation. It was no longer just for the sake of completing a mission. They didn't need to be supervised or have it enforced on them either. This was considered to be the greatest improvement on their cultivation. Sister, we're heading back to the Qin residence today. That was the place where we, the Qin clan, have lived the longest in. You will definitely like it there, Qing Shui told Qing Qing who was just beside him. Right. Little Bei had also mentioned that houses stretched as far as the eyes can see, and there is also a forest and... Oh yes, we can go hunting too, Qing Qing replied to Qing Shui with a longing voice. She had already been getting along very well with Qing Shui and the people of Qing clan. Most importantly, Qing Qing had almost completely blended into this big family of Qing clan. Of course, as soon as it is winter. When they were little, they loved to climb the mountains and hunt for deers. Deer meat is very delicious. Chapter 416 Golden Pages Heavenly Talisman Saving Lin Jianhan Late in the morning, two beast carriages sent everyone from Qing clan together with the New Year goods back towards Qing village. This time around, Qing he was left to take care of the place in Hundred Miles City. In the late afternoon, they arrived at Qing village. While Qing village was only over a hundred miles away from Hundred Miles City, it was hard to travel on the mountainous paths. In addition, they were not in a rush, therefore they walked and chatted, eventually taking about six hours. Qing village was still like how it was back then. Qing village could hear the children's voices from afar, and the faint smell of gunpowder after the firecrackers had gone off. This made Qing Shui thought of how the countryside seemed to celebrate the New Year more, as well as earlier and longer. When he saw Qing clan from afar, Qing Shui could already see his grandpa and grandpa Lin playing chess at the stone slab at Qing clan's entrance. The sunset casted very long shadows. Hearing motions, when the two old elders saw that it was the members of the Qing clan, they happily kept their chessboard away. Many of the young kids from the village also ran towards them. Qing Yi took out a bag of candies from the goods and distributed to them. The children who got the candies ran away happily. Those who were more polite even managed to say, Thank you, Auntie. Qing clan's members headed towards Qing village together with Qing Luo and Lin Zhanhan, all of them with smiles on their faces. Lin Zhanhan's gaze kept landing on Qing clan as a satisfied smile hung up on his face. The older one got, the more one did not feel much about celebrating the new year. After paying respects to the gods and to the ancestors, the events were mostly over. Qing Shui even planned to head back to Heavenly Palace. Qing Shui had already passed Qingqing the martial techniques, as well as the medicinal pills he had prepared for her. However, when he had bidden farewell to his grandpa, 
Qin Luo told him to go look for Lin Zhanhan. Qin Shui nodded and headed towards Lin Zhanhan's residence. Qin Shui felt that his grandpa's expression seemed to be a little weird, but he did not say anything. Since he was young, Qin Clan had felt that this grandpa Lin from Qin Clan's library had a distinguished spirit to him. No matter how he was dressed, and no matter how much he tried to act like an old man from the countryside, in Qin Shui's eyes, there was an arrogance coming from deep within his bones. Bang bang bang, come in. Lin Zhanhan's familiar voice came from inside the room. Qin Shui pushed in the door and entered. Grandpa Lin. Everyone from Qin clan's three generations liked this kind-looking old man. Lin Zhanhan appeared closer to the members from Qin clan's three generations, even more so than Qin Luo. Qin Shui, you've come. Lin Zhanhan said happily after he saw Qin Shui. Grandpa Lin, I'm leaving Qin clan and will be heading back to the heavenly palace. I'm here to bid you farewell. Qin Shui smiled and said, Hmm, it's time to go back. Heavenly Palace is considered a top-notch sect in Green Cloud Continent. It's a pity that they can only save their own skin now. If it carries on like this, they'd probably be wiped out by others. But your appearance has changed Heavenly Palace's future. Lin Zhanhan smiled and said casually. But when Qin Shui heard these words, he had a different feeling to them. Qin Shui felt that the chances that Grandpa Lin was no ordinary character was even higher now. Qin Shui did not say anything. He knew that Grandpa Lin will continue with his words. Qin Shui, the world of the nine continents is very vast. While Green Cloud Continent is one of the nine continents, not only is it far away from the rest, but it's also located on the most barren land. Most importantly, the strongest few sects and clans in Green Cloud Continent would not be considered much if placed in the bigger world out there. Lin Zhanhan smiled and said as he looked at Qin Shui, Grandpa Lin, is it true that Green Cloud Continent really has no Martial Saint level cultivators? Are there Martial Saint level cultivators in the sects outside? Qin Shui asked doubtfully. Qin Shui, sometimes, the things that are placed on the surface are not the best. A bottle full of water will not ring. A bottle half filled with water will shake. What is revealed is not the scariest. It's what is hidden which is the scariest. Sometimes, your cultivation level is not the absolute. But of course, it's a different story if one really can be number one. Lin Zhanhan smiled and looked at Qin Shui. Qin Shui seemed to have thought of something and did not continue. In other continents, while there are not many martial saint level cultivators, they are not much lesser than Green Cloud Continent's cultivators who are at the pinnacle of martial king. Almost all top-notch sects in each continent has a martial saint level cultivator but most of them are at the elementary level of martial saint level. After entering the martial saint level, each increasing level, from the elementary level to the first level and from the first level to the second level, is as tough as it is to scale to the heavens. The difference in just one level is just like the difference between a Sientian and a Hotian cultivator. There's almost no possibility to challenge someone of a higher level. Lin Zhanhan smiled and looked at Qin Shui. Thank you, Grandpa Lin for telling me all these. Qin Shui knew a little of the level of the strong warriors out there. It seemed that Green Cloud Continent was truly the weakest amongst all the nine continents. Qin Shui, you'll be leaving soon, I'll gift you some things. I'm old, there's no use for me to keep them with me. Lin Zhanhan turned and headed for the room inside. He came out holding a golden-colored book with golden pages. Just one look and Qin Shui fell into a daze. It was because the value of this golden pages would definitely not lose out to that silver pages with the nameless duo cultivation technique. There were two words written on it. Heavenly talisman, I'll give you this. As for whether you can succeed in cultivating it will be dependent on your affinity with it. This is the most valuable manual of Westeria Continent's Heavenly Talisman Lin Clan. It's a pity that everything is now history. Forget it. Lin Zhanhun seemed to want to say something but eventually did not speak up. Grandpa Lin, is there something you need me to do? Just feel free to let me know. Qin Shui looked at the elder's troubled look, and it made him recall the fact that Grandpa Lin's surname was also Lin. Lin Zhanhan had on a troubled and pained look. He gradually said, you're still too weak now. Twenty years, maybe you'll have the chance after twenty years. We'll talk about it if I'm still alive then. Qin Shui walked out of Lin Zhanhan's room 
his mind occupied with Lin Jianhun's depressed expression. That pained expression was even stronger than the one his mother had previously, and it was comparable to Ye Jianhun's. Heavenly Talisman Lin Clan? Becoming history? Was his clan also like Ye's, and had been? Hmm? Why did I not use my heavenly vision technique to take a look at Grandpa Lin's body? By right his level of cultivation should not be that weak. Qing Shui thought about it, and felt that he needed to go back and take a look. If Grandpa Lin was a high-level martial arts cultivator then he would be more at ease when he's away. Grandpa Lin, Qing Shui called out from the door. Squeak! The door opened. Lin Zhanhan had regained his composure, as he smiled at Qin Shui and asked, What's the matter? Is it that there's anything about that heavenly talisman which you don't understand? Qin Shui was currently using his heavenly vision technique to look at Lin Zhanhan's Dantian and Meridian channels. He understood everything. Exhausted Dantian, the Meridian channels were almost broken off. Old master, can I check your pulse? Qin Shui asked, smiling as he shook his head. Hearing Qin Shui's words, Lin Zhanhan was stunned for a moment before he shook his head and smiled bitterly. I'm aware that you're skilled in certain medical practices, but I'm fine. I know best about my own condition. There's no hope at all. Since you don't hold any hopes, then how about just let me take your pulse? Maybe I'll really be able to heal you. Qin Shui obstinately looked towards Lin Zhanhan. Lin Zhanhan hesitated for a moment before breaking out into a smile. Come into the room. Since you have such great confidence, what problem would there be to let you take my pulse? The two of them sat opposite each other at a study desk. Lin Zhanhan put out his arms and Qing Shui took his pulse. To speak the truth, Qing Shui was already clear about his condition, but he just wanted to put up an act. No matter how accurate pulse reading was, it would not be as good as his heavenly vision technique. Qing Shui frowned. Grandpa Lin, can you tell me what was your level of cultivation before you got injured? This is very important. Qing Shui Lin Zhanhan and asked. Lin Zhanhan hesitated for a moment before saying, Pinnacle of Martial King. Qing Shui smiled, Don't worry, Grandpa Lin, I can heal you. But it's a pity that I'm still short of one medicine. But now, I can raise your level of cultivation to the level of a Sientian cultivator. When the other medicine is found, I'd be able to let you fully recover. You're able to let me recover to the Sientian level immediately? Lin Zhanhan asked with surprise. He was in great disbelief. After all, he knew that there was no hope for his injuries to be healed. His Dantian was exhausted and his meridian channels were almost broken. He had just been depending on medicinal pills to keep himself alive. If he could recover to Sientian, then he would be able to absorb the energy from the air. Once he takes in the key of Sientian into his body, he would be able to regain a lifespan of 500 years. If you can let me regain to Sientian level, then I'll be able to draw talismans. If so, you should stay around for a bit longer. If you have the talent, then you can stay longer. If not, then we'll all see how the other members in Qin clan fares. The most important condition for talisman drawing is to have Xientian's true key. Talisman drawing? Qin Shui recalled the ATV drama series from the memories of his previous life, and recalled that weird-looking talisman arts. Grandpa, I think I will help you recover your level of cultivation before you teach me how to draw talismans. Qin Shui smiled and released Lin Zhanhan's pulse. All right, all right. Lin Zhanhan's voice shook a little when he said these two words. Decades ago, his clan was eradicated and he had managed to survive with a stroke of luck. However, his cultivation were basically crippled. After he escaped to Green Cloud Continent's Tsung Lang country, even his ride had died. He had fumbled and found his way to the area around Qing village and had been forced to his wit's end by a grade 2 desolate wolf. Thankfully, he met Qing village. It was also because of this that he remained in Qing clan. Lin Zhanhan sat cross-legged on the bed wearing only a pair of shorts. Meanwhile, Qing Shui took out the 49 silver needles and the 9 gold needles. He activated his saintly hands. Very quickly, Qin Shui's hands turned sparkling like jade and was a bit translucent. He then started to slap the acupuncture points on Lin Zhanhan's chest, abdomen, and back. Each time he slapped, there would be a golden light the size of a rice grain entering Lin Zhanhan's body and meridian channels. 
Qin Shui slapped Lin Zhanhan no less than 9,000 times. His chest, abdomen, back, and Dan Tian had all been slapped multiple times. Under Qin Shui's heavenly vision techniques observation, the golden drops which entered Lin Zhanhan's body were all evenly distributed across his meridian channels. At that moment, Qin Shui took out a silver needle and insert into his Dahing acupoint. He then took another silver needle and insert into the Bulang acupoint. After inserting six silver needles, Qin Shui took out one gold needle and insert into Lin Zhanhan's Tian Zhu acupoint. Qin Shui then finally insert the last gold needle into Lin Zhanhan's Qihai acupoint. Under the observation of Qin Shui's heavenly vision technique, when the last needle was inserted, Lin Zhanhan's body's meridian channels and Dantian were all trembling at a speed which could be seen by the naked eye. Chapter 417 Five Elemental Heavenly Fruit Bumped into the mutated beast diamond demonic boar again. As Qin Shui jabbed the last golden needle on Lin Zhanhan's Qihai acupoint, he opened his eyes and looked at Qin Shui in pleasant surprise. This was because Lin Zhanhan felt a faint strand of Qi of Xian Tian entering his veins through Tong Tian acupoint, while continuously nourishing the already dried up channels and the area around the pubic region. Qin Shui, incredible, this is too incredible. Lin Zhanhan looked at Qin Shui with wide eyes. He was extremely amazed at the result. Grandpa Lin, try to cultivate the energy by yourself first. Your channels are not quite stable yet. You can try direct flow of energy to nourish them. I will draw out these needles in a few moments. Qin Shui said. His tone sounded a bit exhausted. Lin Zhanhan nodded. He looked at Qin Shui gratefully, and then he slowly closed his eyes. Meanwhile, Qin Shui gradually sped up the progress of his ancient strengthening technique. He was able to foresee future events after his ancient strengthening technique reached the 138th cycle of circulating key. Qin Shui had also been thinking about the great revitalizing pellet, which was still in his possession. He thought about its curative effects, which allowed twice the increase of the overall power to whoever consumes it, as well as adding an additional 20 years to the consumer's lifespan. Moreover, the pellet could heal internal injuries quickly. The strength will be doubled within an hour. But after that hour has passed, the consumer will become as weak as an ordinary person for about a month. However, each person was allowed to consume one pellet at a time. Consuming a lot in one go will not stack the effects. More importantly, because of its effect to cure any internal injuries, Qin Shui felt that it could apply to the healing of the channels within the body, the pubic region as well as the wounded internal organs. However, Qin Shui was not certain about how much the pellet could heal after being consumed. Unfortunately, he still had no clue on the whereabouts of the phoenix tail, so there was no way he could continue refining the pellet. He had not given up hope just yet. There were a few instances where he was able to discover the beauty fruits in the realm of the violet jade immortal. If the beauty fruits could be discovered, so could the phoenix tail. He just needed more time to find it. The main concern now was how he should find the phoenix tail in this vast world. After one whole cycle of circulating key of the ancient strengthening technique, Qin Shui rested and regained his energy. Lin Zhanhan was still consistently cultivating the key of Xientian within his body. He looked better as his complexion returned to a rosier color. Qin Shui quickly took out the needles on Lin Zhanhan's body. After a while, Lin Zhanhan opened his eyes and looked at Qin Shui with brightened eyes and feeling puzzled. Grandpa Lin, how do you feel? Qin Shui smiled. That was amazing. I still couldn't believe you have truly cured me. Did your master teach you this medical skill? Lin Zhanhan asked. His eyes looked as if they were sparkling. Qin Shui knew that the master he referred to was a sham, so he just smiled and nodded to save himself from explaining further. Yet Lin Zhanhan thought differently of Qin Shui's master. He had a suspicion that this master could be a highly skilled hermit because the skills of a martial saint-level apothecary would still be unparalleled to that ungodly medical skill. However, after thinking thoroughly, there were a lot of extraordinary people in this world that have not reached the level of a martial saint. His suspicion was thrown out the window when he remembered about Qin Shui's background and cultivation. He thought highly of Qin Shui's master because he was an adept physician as well as a highly skilled martial warrior. 
he was able to teach a child from Qin clan with no experience of training and cultivate him into a martial warrior of immense power. Qin Shui, you have a great master, you have to grab every opportunity and accomplish as much as you can in the world of nine continents. Lin Zhanhao said seriously as he grinned at Qin Shui. I will, Grandpa Lin, as long as I can find that herb, you will be able to recover your strength. Perhaps it might be able to help further your progress into the realm of a martial saint. Qin Shui chuckled casually. I will be satisfied if my strength can be recovered. As for martial saint, it will require a lot of luck for me to achieve that. Those who can break through directly to martial saint are nearly impossible to none. Lin Zhanhan shook his head as he laughed about it. Qin Shui remembered that one would require some kind of rare treasure to be able to break through the realm of martial saint. However, it would be impossible to directly break through it. Qin Shui wanted to ask Grandpa Lin since he might know something about martial saint. Moreover, Lin Zhanhan was a peak of martial king martial warrior who came from the Westeria continent where martial saints do exist. Unlike in the Green Cloud continent, martial saint was just a rumor. There were none that existed so far. Grandpa Lin, do you need anything particular to be able to break through to martial saint? Lin Zhanhan was perplexed as he looked at Qin Shui. His master should have told him about it after seeing how strong Qin Shui had grown. Lin Zhanhan asked, Did your master ever tell you about it before? Master has never came to look for me for quite a long time. Oh, then I will tell you about it. Actually, every person would require different things to break through the realm of martial saint depending on the element of their cultivation technique. For example, martial warriors who specialize in earth elemental cultivation would require a piece of dense earth fruit. Water elemental cultivation would require a soft water fruit. Fire elemental cultivation would require a fiery fire fruit. Metal elemental cultivation would require a pure golden fruit. And wood elemental cultivation would require a live wooden fruit. Dot. In this world cultivation techniques have five different elements. Those with low levels of cultivation mastery would not be able to cultivate the properties of these elements. Because of Qin Shui's earth elemental cultivation, he would emit a yellow-colored key of Xientian. Qin clan's wood elemental blue lotus art, on the other hand, would emit a white-colored key of Xientian. The key of Xientian for earth elements would be yellow, blue for water elements, white for metal elements, red for fire elements, and green for wood elements. This was different from what he had learnt last time, but Qin Shui felt Lin Zhanhan had given him a more accurate explanation. After all, the rare treasure he had described would be of a great help to boost Qin Shui's cultivation technique. Of course, all of these fruits are valuable. Each of them cannot be judged based on how valuable they are. This doesn't mean that a peak of martial king would be able to successfully level up to a martial saint even if they could find their elemental fruit. Lin Zhanhan smiled at Qin Shui, who was deep in thought. Grandpa Lin, are these fruits rare and scarce? Qin Shui asked. He was uncertain whether it was necessary to know this information at this time, but he reckoned it would benefit him if he learned about them earlier. Qin Shui was also curious about the effects of the fruits. The fruits may have other uncommon effects other than for the use of breaking through the realm of martial saint. They are scarce, of course, very scarce in number. Dense earth fruit is rumored to grow at the peak of the tallest giant beast's mountain in the world of nine continents. Everyone knows how dangerous it can be in the giant beast's mountain. This also applies to the other locations where the fruit may grow, except the chances of them growing elsewhere is slim. Then we have the soft water fruit. They can be picked from the depths of the boundless South Sea. Of course, there will be a mutated beast as horrible as the one in the giant beast's mountain. Lin Zhanhan sighed and continued. Fiery fire fruit grows on top of the volcano in the most western part of the flower fruit mountain. That volcano erupts quite often in a year, not to mention the danger you could encounter in the vast flower fruit mountain. So it would be nearly impossible to be able to find the fiery fire fruit by yourself. Pure golden fruit grows on top of the golden peak of the Nine Peak Mountain, which is located in the northwestern part of the Nine Peak Continent. Similarly, the danger is no joke. There are countless poisonous insects lurking and crawling around. And lastly, the live wooden fruit. 
This fruit cannot be pinpointed to an exact location because it has been discovered in both Southern Sea and the Forest of Mystical Beasts. Qin Shui learned from Lin Zhanhan that all the places he mentioned are the in the danger zone of the continent. No wonder these fruits were regarded as rare treasures. It would require a hefty price to obtain each of these fruits. These fruits are grown in the hidden parts of the world. They are also protected by powerful guardian beasts, so if you want the fruit, you have to kill the beast. Those who aren't careful enough will be met with death even if they are able to find the fruits. Qin Shui then understood why there were no martial saint martial warriors in the Green Cloud continent. This had something to do with the guardian beast Lin Zhanhan spoke of. Grandpa Lin, does a martial saint level guardian beast exist? Qin Shui asked. Well, most of them are at the peak of martial king level. They are the strongest amongst the peak of martial king beasts. However, there are a few martial saint level guardian beasts out there. Especially if the fruit is around 8,000 years old, martial saint guardian beasts will be there to protect it. But don't look down on the peak of martial king guardian beasts because they have their own unique strengths. Some of them are toxic, some of them are fast, some of them have hard bodies like an adamantin. What I'm trying to say is even 10 peak of martial king martial warriors cannot defeat one peak of martial king guardian beast unless they all work together or sacrifice 6 to 8 people to obtain the fruit. Even so, escaping from the guardian beast is extremely difficult. Lin Zhanhan leisurely finished his explanation. After a while, they chatted until the sky began to turn dark. Qin Shui, come again tomorrow, since I have regained the key of Xientian. I can draw talismans again. I will explain the basics of talisman drawing to you tomorrow, and you can observe how I draw the talismans as well. Lin Zhanhan smiled. Okay, then I shall take my leave first, Grandpa Lin. After that, Qin Shui left. The lunar year had just passed. Qin Yi and the others decided to stay for a few days before heading back to the Hundred Miles City. Besides Qin He and his wife, the others were still at the Qing village. After dinner, Qing Luo took Chan Feng out to play in Feng Fi and went back to Feng Clan to see her family. There was some time left before Qing Shui could go to the realm of Violet Jade Immortal to train. Since it had been a long time Qing Village was this lively, and the New Year was not over yet, Qing Shui decided to go outside for a walk. It had been a few years since he last got to relax with his mother at the Qing Village and Feng Luo town. He stopped by his mother's room to ask her to go out with him. Mother, where's Ching Ching? Let's go out for a walk. Since we are all back together, let's get some distraction from everything. Ching Shui smiled as he asked Ching Yi. All right, let's go. Go call Ching Ching. Ching Yi's room was located in the middle, with Ching Ching's room to right side and Ching Shui's room to the left side. After the three gathered, they walked towards the streets around the Ching village. The sky had turned completely dark. Yet a lot of people were out and about in the streets. Perhaps this world was different than Qing Shui's reality world where he had televisions and computers to distract himself with. Without the leisure of technology, Qing Shui was willing to go outside and mingle with everyone. Aunt Qing, Brother Qing Shui, Sister Qing Qing, good evening. A lot of people greeted the three of them as they walked along the streets. Qing Shui smiled and nodded at them. Qing Yi was more than happy to reply to their gestures. Qing Qing, on the other hand, gave a gentle smile at everyone. Qing Yi felt quite content and pleased with the envious gazes she received. It was all thanks to her son for stopping the Yen clan and bringing happiness to the people in Qing village. It was because of Qing clan's matters with Yen clan in the past few years. A lot of people in the Qing village suffered from life-threatening threats by hostile people. These hostile people had already grown older and weaker. Some have became parents, and some have passed away. In any case, whatever had happened cannot be undone. Qin Shui was happier that the matters had been solved. The victory against Yen clan became Qin village's glory. Qin Shui, look at these pretty women. They are all staring at you. Qin Qin chuckled. Although Qin Qin would display a cold attitude towards strangers, she would express herself more in front of the members of Qin clan, just like Shi Qing Zhuang. Unlike before, she had become more content with her life and would often smile. Brother Qin Shui, thank goodness we found you, come quick. Wu Zi said he found a diamond demonic boar inside the Qin woods. A panicked voice followed close to Qin Shui. It was a young man from the Qin village. 
Diamond Demonic Boar? Was anyone hurt? In an instant, everyone surrounded Xing Shui. No, everyone kept their distance from the boar. When we discovered it, they sent me to call you back. The young man was gasping for breath as he spoke. It seemed like he ran with all his might to find Qing Shui. Qing Shui remembered that he had met a diamond demonic boar once when he climbed the wild boar mountains. He nearly lost his life back then, but it was due to the accidental meeting with the boar that he was able to break through the fourth layer of the ancient strengthening technique and become a Xientian martial warrior. Could it be the same mutated beast diamond demonic boar from back then? Qin Shui was uncertain. There wasn't much time left, so he turned to Qin Yi and Qin Qing and said, Mother, sister, go ahead and stroll around first. I will go take a look. That is a mutated beast, so please be careful. Before Qin Yi could finish her sentence, Qin Shui smiled at her and quickly disappeared into the crowd. Then, he arrived at Qin Woods. Qin Shui expanded his spiritual sense and quickly scanned the vast area of the forest. Just then, he realized that he had never really stepped deep into the forest before. On his way to the woods, he bumped into a number of people from the Qing village who gave directions to the location of the diamond demonic boar. Qing Shui was quite familiar with the diamond demonic boar's speed, but it did not matter to him whether it was fast or not. Perhaps this was due to the fact that he almost lost his life trying to fight off the beast. So when Qin Shui thought about meeting with the diamond demonic boar once more, he got very excited. Qin Shui increased his speed and ran into the depths of the Qin woods. While passing by the large trees and bushes with incredible speed, he searched around the area for traces of the diamond demonic boar with his spiritual sense. After 30 miles into the forest, Qing Shui was finally able to detect its presence. Although he could only feel the intensity of its strength, Qing Shui was able to tell that it belonged to the peak of Xientian category. He knew for certain that it was a diamond demonic boar, but thought to himself, How did this mutated beast level up so quickly in just a few years' time? Qing Shui sped towards the beast with decent speed. Within 15 minutes, he was able to spot it indeed, a diamond demonic beast. Qin Shui was amazed that it was the same one he bumped into last time, but it was no surprise to him since mutated beasts were rare to begin with. The thought of meeting a second diamond demonic beast never crossed his mind. He could tell from its gaze and aura that it was indeed the same beast from back then, though Qin Shui was shocked to find that its body had shrunk from a meter long to less than a meter long. It shrunk? The essence is still quite concentrated. Qin Shui could not make sense of it. The power of the diamond demonic boar had greatly increased, but why did the body shrink? The beast was obviously smaller, but its nose, on the other hand, had grown a bit longer. Its body was covered in a shade of gold, which looked adorable. It was still different from the wild boars roaming around the wild boar mountains. There was a metallic sheen radiating from the well-proportioned golden body. All four of its limbs felt strong, as if it was stepping on a bunch of floating clouds. Qin Shui felt quite unusual about the change in the Diamond Demonic Boar. Chapter 418 Taming the Diamond Demonic Boar with the Divine Marionette Pellet, Improving Once Again The Diamond Demonic Boar shrunk backwards in an obvious manner when it saw Qin Shui. It looked at him with a pair of vicious eyes. Perhaps it could sense that the man in front of it was scary. Thanks to what you have done in the past, I progressed to the level of Xientian ahead of them. My life has also undergone a series of enormous changes. Qing Shui smiled at the demon beast. He was only replied with silence. From now on, why don't you follow and live well with me? I will find you a cute lady pig. Give you a beautiful pig sister. Qing Shui said this out of boredom to the little thing which could be considered a mutated beast of heaven and earth. Follow me. Qing Shui looked at the diamond demonic boar. Or I'll catch you and bring you back. Qin Shui knew that it was useless speaking to it. He only wanted to test if this little thing could really communicate through telepathy. Finally, Qin Shui suddenly grabbed the sparkling diamond demonic boar. Qin Shui was surprised that the little thing did not run away. Instead it rushed forward towards him at lightning speed when he was still one meter away. As it was too sudden, the speed even shocked him. So Qin Shui immediately changed his palm into a fist and struck out with his Tai Chi cloud hand. Bang! 
It was as if Qin Shui's fist had hit the hardest metal in the world. Even though Qin Shui did not use his full strength as he was afraid that he would kill it, he knew now that he had underestimated it. He struck with 30% of his strength, but it did not leave a single scratch. Qin Shui only backed off using that momentum from the attack. The diamond demonic boar bore its dense sharp non-protruding white teeth and leaned towards Qin Shui with a bite. There was an abnormal savage glint in its eyes. Evidently, Qin Shui's punch had completely infuriated it. Qin Shui suddenly thought of the divine marionette pellet. He felt that using it on this beast would be quite worthwhile. It had such good defense and such terrifying speed when it was charging. Most importantly, the growth potentials of diamond demonic boars were very high. The value of divine marionette pellet lies on the user not losing its inherent nature after consumption. It will not lower its innate talent but will provide some benefits. The only downside is that the user will not be able to disobey the commands from the person who fed them the golden pellet. Actually, Qin Shui did consider unscrupulously finding a beautiful female who was at the peak grade of martial king level to feed this to. But at this moment, Qin Shui felt that it was a better bargain if he used it to subdue this diamond demonic boar. He thought of feeding it to the howling moon silver monkey, but was was hesitant. Now, however, as he planned to use the divine marionette pellet to capture this diamond demonic beast, he did not have the slightest hesitation. Qin Shui did not know why. But as he looked at the diamond demonic boar, he knew that there was a considerable gap between it and the howling moon silver monkey. However, he felt that this diamond demonic boar had a larger potential to develop. Anyway, I got this divine marionette pellet by accident, since I feel that it is worthwhile, I should just do it. Qin Shui came to a decision. Once again, Qin Shui charged toward the diamond demonic boar. His speed was still slightly faster than the diamond demonic boar at this point. He increased his strength by another 30% and struck. Bang! This time, it was the same as before. It only slightly blocked the diamond demonic boar's attack. Qin Shui retreated backwards once again. But he was extremely happy. Qin Shui's full strength was already a force of 3.6 million jin. Even 60% of it was close to the titanic force of 2 million jin. A strike of 2 million gene force could even kill a person who was at the peak grade of the Xiantian level. Qin Shui saw that he had not even injured the diamond demonic boar in the slightest. He was deeply curious and wanted to test out the beast's defense. He knew that this mutated beast had diamond in its name. It was strong, its body was hard, its teeth and claws were super sharp. But it was not even one meter so Qin Shui did not dare to use too much strength. He was afraid that he would kill it. But now, he was no longer afraid. He used his body's full strength. Bang! A loud sound traveled into the distance. This time the diamond demonic boar was basically completely stopped. But it was not hurt. This was a force of 3.6 million jin. There was a rageful sharp howl. The beast looked at Qin Shui with an additional hint of fear. Diamond Key Qin Shui channeled his diamond key which could increase his strength by 50%. He suddenly rushed at the diamond demonic boar and hit it once more with a punch. Qin Shui's speed made it impossible for the diamond demonic boar to avoid. Bang! It was a massive force of more than 5 million jin. This time round, the diamond demonic boar broke three alder trees. It let out a painful cry. Qin Shui quickly used his heavenly vision technique. It was only slightly injured by the impact. This was basically the largest force it can withstand without sustaining any injury. Qin Shui was extremely pleased with the diamond demonic boar's defense. Without at least a force of 6 million jin, it will not be injured. Even at Xiantian level, it had such a terrifying level defense. Just for you. Qin Shui took out the divine marionette pellet decisively. He charged towards the beast and forced the blue Qin pellet into the diamond demonic boar's mouth. Even then, the beast tried to bite him, but he had managed to dodge it. No matter how confident he was, Qin Shui wanted to avoid getting bitten by such sharp teeth. At the same time, Qin Shui also swallowed a golden pellet. Instantaneously, he felt a mysterious key filling his body. Suddenly, he felt a certain bond with the diamond demonic beast. Yes. 
It was just like the bond with his firebird. Then, he felt a strong vital energy rising from his dantian. In a second, Xin Shui felt that his speed and stamina had increased, but what rose the most was his defense. He could feel that his defense had increased by 30%, but he could not understand why. At that moment, he felt his diamond key improve quite significantly. It circulated around his body with his key of ancient strengthening technique. 50 cycles, 51 cycles. 137th cycle, 138th cycle. Pack. A crisp sound rang in the air. He had a breakthrough. After that, something even more amazing happened. The breakthrough did not stop at the 139th cycle of the ancient strengthening technique. Pack. He broke another cycle. 140th cycle. Immediately, Qin Shui could sense that the strength gained from the 140th cycle was more than twice that of the 139th cycle. Qin Shui was totally amazed. Ever since he consumed the pure gold mystic turtle core, Qin Shui's defense was already abnormally high. He could fully withstand even 6 million jin of force. Qin Shui could not understand how 10% of the diamond demonic boar can raise his defense by 30%. During battles, people usually use weapons to more efficiently use their strength, increasing the effectiveness of their strength by leaps and bounds. Just like how a normal person would never be able to chop off another person's head with his left fist, giving him a proper way to channel his strength would make it easy. This was how weapons can improve the lethality of one's strength immensely. Duels are actually very fast. They do not last half a day. Even if a person wears an armor, if it is not some sort of Legendary, armor, a strong vibration can easily shatter the person's internal organs. Martial artists actually only take a fraction of the force of an attack. Even if the opponent's force is weaker, when two weapons clash, they will mutually counteract some forces. This is the case for people who are at almost the same level. Otherwise, the weaker opponent will just die from the tremors generated by the force. If a person's speed is fast, they can use a sneak attack. Using the support of a weapon, a person can easily kill or maim an opponent of equal strength or slightly stronger. 30% improvement in defense was already not bad. Qin Shui was satisfied. Furthermore, he had a less than 5% increase in speed and 10% increase in strength. His strength was now about 4 million jin. It certainly lived up to the diamond in its name. The peak grade Cientian Diamond Demonic Boar's defense was much higher than its strength. 6 million jin of defense, 4 million jin of base strength, equipped with sharp teeth and claws, with a higher than average speed. A peak grade Cientian will probably not be able to defeat the Diamond Demonic Boar, let alone a peak grade Cientian warrior. Qin Shui felt more and more pleased. If it evolved once more, it will be even more powerful. This time, when Qin Shui looked into the diamond demonic boar's eyes, he could see something more. It had lost the previous viciousness, and what replaced that was a meekness and an awareness. This made Qin Shui feel a bit confused. That look was what he had with his fire bird as well. This divine marionette pellet was really a remarkable drug. When Qin Shui heard that the name of the drug had marionette pellet, he looked down on it. Now he realized that his interpretation was too narrow. In fact, Qin Shui did not know this but Divine Marionette Pellet had always been a legendary drug in the world of the Nine Continents. Naturally, the drug was much more effective in the past and contained demonic beasts that were of an even higher level. With enough Divine Marionette Pellet, one can become the most powerful beast tamer. It was mainly because the words Divine Marionette Pellet only appeared in history books for the past thousands of years so the knowledge of it slowly faded from the public. Come, Qin Shui called telepathically. Although he knew that it would come to him obediently, Qin Shui was still ecstatic when the beast did so. He brought it with him and raced back to the Qin village. On the way back, Qin Shui told the diamond demonic boar that in the absence of his orders, it should not hurt anyone. That little thing actually replied telepathically with two happy sounds. Qin Shui could communicate with it smooth through their shared consciousness, just like how he could communicate with his firebird. When Qin Shui returned to the Qin village, many people were attracted by the sight. After all, Qin Shui had fully tamed the diamond demonic boar. 
When they first saw Qin Shui coming in with a diamond demonic boar behind him, many people got a scare. But now, they were all vying to get to the front so that they can observe the powerful small demonic beast at close range. Everyone from the Qin clan also came. Even Qin Luo and Lin Zhanhan came. When Lin Zhanhan saw the diamond demonic boar, he had a shocked and pleasantly surprised expression though it quickly returned to its usual calmness. Big Brother Shui, you are really powerful. This little pig looks really good, but it is too powerful. Qing Bei squeezed her way through and stood beside Qing Shui laughing. Qing Shui was usually at a loss for words when she spoke. Big Brother Shui, can I touch it? Yes, Qing Shui said with a smile. Qing Bei touched it bravely and found that it was quite docile. It is so well behaved. Big Brother Shui, is he really that powerful? Qing Bei looked up at the Qing Shui. Qing Shui was speechless. Chapter 419 Wild One Horn Knocks The Evolution of Mutated Beasts Qing Qing watched the diamond demonic boar with curiosity. She did not go forth to touch it, as there were too many people. Qing Shui spotted her trying to reach out her hands several times. The onlookers surrounded the beast for almost an hour. In that hour, he was asked various questions and was given heaps of praises. They praised him so much that Qing Shui felt slightly embarrassed. Many ladies were also ogling Qing Shui. It was as if any of the ladies there would scream for joy if Qing Shui asked them out. Brother Qing Shui, are you a beast tamer? A young man suddenly shouted. The shout from that young man made everyone remember that popular career in Central Continent, Beast Tamers. The fact that Qing Shui could tame such a powerful demonic beast in such a short time made everyone look at him in awe. I am not. In fact, I do not know what is going on. It just followed me after I beat it up. Qing Shui said with a smile. When they heard Qing Shui's reply, they felt that not only was Qing Shui powerful, but he was exceptionally lucky. When fighting with demonic beasts, the warriors of the central continent had to fight with their bare fists. After injuring the demonic beast, there was a small percentage that it would submit to the person. This applied to wild beasts as well. There were three people in Qing village that have a level three ferocious beast each. They had tamed these beasts unintentionally after battling with them. Under everyone's reluctant looks, Qing Shui went back home with his jubilant family members. Qing Shui had already become the backbone of the Qing family. As long as he was around, they could feel a presence of a deity. This feeling may be a sense of superiority, solidarity, or a sense of honor. On their way home, there were chatter and laughter. Everything was very harmonious. The diamond demonic boar walked beside Qing Shui while Qing Qing and Qing Bei discussed about the diamond demonic boar at the back of the group. The news had spread throughout the vicinity of Qing village, so they paused a few times on the way back as the crowd sprinkled Qing Shui with looks of envy. The envious glances of these strangers at the generous Qing Shui was not the last of it. Some of them even looked at the diamond demonic boar with covetous eyes. After returning home, Qing Shui was contemplating whether he should try to bring the diamond demonic boar into the realm of violet jade immortal all the time. Qing Shui clearly knew that any living thing from the outside world could not be brought into the realm if it did not have any connection with Qing Shui. He had never actually tested it. He did not know if he was simply incapable of bringing something inside, or if whatever he brought inside would perish in the process. Qing Shui could only make unconvincing conjectures at this point. His fire bird could enter, so why could fishes, crabs, shrimp, and etc. enter as well? Qing Shui felt quite perplexed at the moment, and he felt that it was necessary for him to test this out. Qing Shui was not surprised to know that fire bird could enter the realm. It was nurtured in the realm and had a very close relationship with Qing Shui. But what about the various snakehead fishes and tortoises that he brought in from the outside world? Does that mean it was only limited to aquatic creatures like fishes, crustaceans, etc.? Qing Shui brought the diamond demonic boar out of the Qing residence again. He ran towards the nearest alder forest because Qing Shui thought that it would be more prudent to test it out. Qing Shui did not want to use the diamond demonic boar for his experiment, as it would be a great loss if anything happened to it. Walking around in the alder forest, there had never been any sightings of demonic beasts in the area outside of Qing village in Hundred Miles City. However, there were the usual wild beasts and ferocious beasts, 
and then there were tracks from desolate beasts. High-level desolate beasts were only seen once every few years. Although Qin Shui ran casually into the depth of the alder forest with his diamond demonic boar, he was very fast. Even though the sky had already darkened, it did not affect Qin Shui's abilities, not to mention that the moon was emitting a bright moonlight. Suddenly, a wild one-horned ox appeared in Qin Shui's field of vision. It was three meters in length, and it was the height of a human. Its whole body was tar black. Its body was covered in sinewy muscles that made it look burishly impulsive, and especially violent. It had a sharp, long horn on its head, which was almost two feet long. The base of the horn was almost the size of an adult's arm. Its slightly spiral sharp horn reflected a black sheen under the moonlight. As soon as its pair of bell-like eyes spotted Qin Shui, it suddenly spirited towards Qin Shui. Level 8 Ferocious Beast, One-Horned Ox Qin Shui smiled and looked at the stupid ox as it charged at him. The wild one-horned ox was the most violent and most stupid almost all beast types. It was one of the strongest types around this alder forest. It would charge at any moving creature it spots to attack it with its horn. Most beasts were very sensitive to danger. However, the wild one-horned ox which was foolishly heading Qin Shui's way was an exception. Besides, Qin Shui had already surpassed the obscure realm, so his key aura was totally concealed. Fine, I will use you for the experiment. When the beast's sharp horn was just a foot away, Qin Shui simply reached out to grab it firmly. The force generated from this one-ton ox charging at this speed was about 10,000 jin. A normal person would have be smashed to bits but it was negligible to Qin Shui. The wild one-horned ox's red eyes stared at Qin Shui and let out a violent moo. Qin Shui used his other hand and struck the back of the robust wild one-horned ox. Crack! The sound of broken bones was accompanied by an even more ferocious cry. At this time, Qin Shui wrapped the wild ox with his spirit energy and brought it towards the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. A force appeared that directly pushed the ox out and he was unable to pull the ox into the realm of Violet Jade Immortal even after three tries. Huff! Qin Shui punched the wild one-horned ox's neck. It died without make a single sound. This time, Qin Shui tried to keep it in the realm of Violet Jade Immortal again. This time round, he could bring the wild one-horned ox's carcass into the realm very smoothly. This was not surprising. Qin Shui concluded that the realm of Violet Jade Immortal rejected anything with vitality. But why could live fishes be brought in? Qin Shui lowered his head in deep thought. While he looked down on the ground in the alder forest, he saw a type of grasshopper-like insect. With his quick thinking, Qin Shui used his spirit energy to capture them and successfully managed to bring them into the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. Does it mean that it will reject any creatures whose vital energy has reached a certain level? Qin Shui was quite certain that this was the answer. Qin Shui had a feeling that the diamond demonic boar should be able to enter the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. The diamond demonic boar now had a close connection with Qin Shui. Living things with close bonds to him would most likely not be rejected by the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. I'll just try. If it can enter, it will be more convenient. Otherwise, I will just let it stay obediently in Qin Village. Previously. As with the wild one-horned ox, nothing will happen to the creature. It will just be pushed out. Qin Shui wrapped the diamond demonic board with his spirit energy and closed his eyes. He pushed it and just like he was moving an object, he managed to move the boar in. He did not have the same feeling as before, as if he was trying to press a mountain into a bottle but could not. Qin Shui knew that it was a success. When he opened his eyes, the diamond demonic boar had disappeared before his eyes, and his senses told him that something had been added to the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. Qin Shui immediately appeared in the realm of Violet Jade Immortal, but what he saw inside made him want to burst out laughing. The diamond demonic boar was prostrating on the ground and trembling, while his firebird was hovering in the sky, staring at the diamond demonic boar and constantly screeching. Qin Shui communicated with the firebird telepathically to tell his firebird not to bully that little thing. He also told Diamond Demonic Boar not to touch the things inside the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. Finally, Qin Shui told the Diamond Demonic Boar that it could only touch the several fishes and prawns in the pond, and nothing else. 
he took two agility enhancing fruit, two endurance enhancing fruit, and two strength enhancing fruit. There were no more energy fruits. When Qin Shui saw the shimmering golden light from the diamond demonic boar's body, he thought of the beast pill. However, there were no more beast pills. He also remembered the endurance pellet recipe that Senghai Mingyu had given to him at that Senghai residence in the southern continent. He had also used up all the endurance pellets he had with him, and he almost forgotten about it. How could he actually forget this? Qin Shui immediately decided to make some endurance pellets. The pellets were easy to make, so Qin Shui made quite a few so that his family members could each have one. Endurance pellets increase the human's endurance by 5% and a beast's endurance by 10%. Beast pills were very potent and required a long time to prepare. It was too time-consuming for Qin Shui to simple make one batch of it solely for the diamond demonic beast, so he decided against it. He remembered the recipe for the endurance pellet. It only required five ingredients. Its main ingredient was the endurance-enhancing fruit also known as diamond fruit in the main continent. Qin Shui had this. He also had quite a lot of 1,000-year lingji, which he had taken from the end treasury. He had a lot of 1,000-year demonic beast cores. He could replace the tooth of the demonic snowy wolf beast with the blood of the golden medicinal turtle. He also had quite a lot of demonic bear beast gallbladders. He channeled a huge cycle of ancient strengthening technique. Qin Shui's capabilities had already greatly improved after he broke through the 140th cycle. Qin Shui was already very familiar with his pill refining skills. It could be said that his technique and control of heat were already at a perfect stage. Using his primordial flames, the ancient flames within the heaven and earth, his golden flint iron cauldron, one of the world's finest, and Qin Shui's exceptional alchemy skills, it was extremely easy for Qin Shui to make the pellets. Washing. Mixing. Tempering. Melting. Fusing. Qin Shui did this in an orderly manner. He placed the ingredients into his gold and flint iron cauldron and heated it with his primordial flames. He then opened his spiritual sense to observe everything minutely and placed the initial order of the herbs into the gold sway iron furnace, brought up the chaos fire, sent out his spiritual sense, refining the demon furnace in the slight sublimation and fusions of the cauldron. It was done. Qin Shui opened the cauldron and saw that there were twelve pellets. Compared to the previous time in the southern continent, Qin Shui could make an additional two pellet for each batch. This meant that his alchemy skill was improving. It had taken him almost six hours. Qin Shui took two pellets and called upon the diamond demonic boar. Smelling the faint pleasant scent of the endurance pellet, the diamond demonic boar opened its mouth and looked at Qin Shui expectantly. Qin Shui threw a pellet in. Within moments, the diamond demonic beast emitted a bright light. The brilliance could be compared to the light that the fire bird emitted previously. This was very surprising to Qin Shui. There was a possibility that fire birds descended from phoenixes, so their bodies contained some phoenix blood. But the diamond demonic boar was just a pig. Qin Shui was in for a bigger surprise. The diamond demonic boar shone again. Its brilliance did not fade but was even brighter. After the bright golden rays faded, Qin Shui looked at the diamond demonic boar in shock. Now, the diamond demonic boar had been restored to its previous size. It was actually a bit bigger, and its nose was slightly longer. It still looked cute, but its body seemed much stronger. It wasn't hard to imagine what would become of the diamond demonic boar in the future. Chapter 420 Tao of Talisman Drawing Nine Grades of the Heavenly Talisman Chinese talisman are usually words inscribed on pieces of yellow paper, designed for protection or some other purposes. Such a significant change. Aren't the diamond demonic boars supposed to be the weakest demonic beasts? Why would they have so much potential to grow? Qin Shui was really puzzled. Seeing as the diamond demonic boar's gaze was still fixed on the other remaining endurance pellet in his hand, Qin Shui smiled and threw the endurance pellet into its mouth. Like before, a brilliant golden light yet again emerged from its body. This time, its body was once again approximately half a foot bigger than before. The golden skin from all across its body had a metallic feeling. Both of its eyes also appeared to spark with more intelligence than before. It roved around Qin Shui in joy. From time to time, 
it would give out two cries and let Qin Shui know that it still wanted more. Qin Shui knew that demonic beasts could only eat two such pills. Hence, he could only tell the diamond boar that he no longer had any left through telepathy. The diamond demonic boar looked at Qin Shui and cried out twice in joy. Qin Shui on the other hand, he felt fascinated as he looked at the nose of the diamond beast. It went without saying that the noses of wild boars would be longer than those raised domestically. However, at this moment, the nose of this diamond demonic boar was obviously longer than those of wild boars by a small margin, so much so that it was slightly sagging, seemingly adding a bit of cuteness to it, which inadvertently made it look a bit less vicious than the typical wild boar. Qin Shui was indeed a lot happier as he observed the changes of the diamond boar. During the refinement, he once again refined two stoves of endurance pellets and managed to make 24 additional endurance pellets. After adding them to the ones from prior, there were 34 of them in total. Not only could this number of pellets feed each and every one of the Qin clan members, he would still be left with a few in reserve. Very quickly, the time in the realm of Violet Jade Immortal had passed. The morning exercise proceeded as usual. However, Qin Shui distributed the endurance pellets for everyone to take. After having his breakfast, Qin Shui went into the realm of Violet Jade Immortal and took out the Chen Liang that he had valued for a long time. After all, it had been stashed away into the realm from since he was in Southern City. Qin Shui sensed that it was actually not that much inferior to Thousand Years Chen Yan due to the unique existence of the realm of Violet Jade Immortal. Qin Shui knew that Lin Zhanghan enjoyed drinking alcohol. That's why he only visited Lin Zhanhan's place after he brought two bottles of Envir Hong and Immortal's drunkness with him. This was because, today, Qin Shui wanted to learn how to draw talismans from Lin Zhanghan. This is bad. I have actually forgotten to take a look at it in advance. Qin Shui felt upset. Originally, he had wanted to take advantage of the time he spent yesterday night when he was in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal to take a look at the book known as Heavenly Talisman. It was just that he got interrupted by the sudden appearance of the diamond demonic boar. As soon as he arrived at Ling Zhanhan's courtyard, he saw Ling Zhanhan testing a few boxing techniques that helped extend the vessels right off the bat. The current him no longer needed to rely on the Qing family's book pavilion. Ever since the time when the Qing clan members had gone to Hundred Miles City, Ling Zhanhan had stopped going to the book pavilion. That was mostly because the Qing clan's collection had turned obsolete. Ever since Qin Shui started teaching the people of his clan his martial arts skills and technique, it no longer had any uses. Qin Shui, you are here! Ling Zhanhan was obviously in a splendid mood. He spotted Qin Shui exactly as he walked in, calling out merrily with a smile on his face. Yeah, Grandpa Ling, are you feeling unwell? Qin Shui smiled and asked. No, I am feeling really good. It has been more than ten years. In fact, I thought that I had lost this feeling. Ling Zhanhan said happily. He was brimming with vital ki. Grandpa Lin, I know that you enjoy drinking wine, so I have purposely brought you some. When you are free, you can try it out. I guarantee that you will like it. Qin Shui smiled. He was already standing next to Ling Zhanhan. And Vir Hong? Immortal's drunkness? Ling Zhanhan felt particularly amazed. These two kinds of wine despite their names being authentic, were actually the most common goods across the continent however. One point about them was that if they reached a sufficient amount of years spent aging, they would still be able to rise through the ranks of the most costly wine in the continent. Could it be that these Envir Hong and Immortals drunkness were goods that have aged a thousand years? Ling Zhanhan smiled as he took over the two bottles from Qin Shui's hands. He walked towards the room along with Qin Shui. Qin Shui, let's learn talisman drawing together today. Ling Zhanhan put down the wine bottles in his hand. After that, he went straight to the main topic and said, Yeah, let's go to the study room. I have already prepared the things that are needed. After Ling Zhanhan finished speaking to Qin Shui, he led him towards the study room. The study room was really close. They walked abreast along a one meter wide stony lane and after walking less than 50 meters without taking any turns, they arrived at their destination. The study room was a two-story building. It was located in the Qin clan's village. Only a few of the rich clans were capable of building a two-story building. They pushed open the wooden door and immediately walked up to the second floor. 
As soon as Qin Shui entered the study room, his nose puckered up slightly. This was because the scent of beast blood struck him. Furthermore, it was the beast blood of those that were at least at the demonic beast level, or above. The first floor was just like a living room. It was a bit dim and empty without anything in it. However, as soon as he went to the second floor, he felt that it was totally different compared to the first floor. It was bright and airy. The warm sunlight shone into the room from the windows on the east side, dyeing it golden yellow. It could even boost one's mood and make one feel happy. An extremely huge desk was placed in the middle of the room. It was the first time Qing Shui had seen a desk installed in such a way, but he didn't feel like the arrangement was awkward. The desk was slightly tall. There weren't any benches or chairs surrounding it. There was only a couch at a spot not so far from it. Qin Shui saw a lot of bloody things placed on the desk, appearing to be at least 10 meters long. Qin Shui could smell how there were beast skins, riding brushes and beast blood on it. Qin Shui followed Ling Zhanhan and kept on walking up to the edge of the extremely large desk. At this moment, Qin Shui had swept a cursory glance through the things placed onto it. Grandpa Ling, are these the things that are going to be used for talisman drawing? Qin Shui looked at Ling Zhanhan with a strange expression. If this were in his past life, Qin Shui would definitely think that he was a priest who deceived other people. However, Qin Shui did not have even an iota of such a thought in mind now. Correct, the minimum requirement for talisman drawing is that it has to be the blood and skin of the demonic beast grade. The hair of the writing brush also has to be at least those of the weasel bristles, a thousand years demonic beast. Qin Shui sensed mildly potent spiritual fluctuations from the golden yellow-colored riding brush. Actually, Qin Shui had figured out that the spiritual fluctuations that emerged from the golden calligraphy brush in his realm of the violet jade immortal were something that the riding brush in front of him could never match up to even if it was a horse being urged on by getting its bottom padded. Grandpa Ling, yesterday, I did not take some time out of the day to look at the heavenly talisman book that you gave me. Qin Shui felt that he had to admit it. It will still be the same no matter whether you have seen it or not. For starters, why don't you look at me drawing first? Reading it in the future will make no difference. Later on, observe me drawing carefully. Ling Zhenhan said with a smile. At this moment, he gave out a strong self-confidence. These things are only the things that I stored in the past to practice talisman drawing. I hadn't thought that I would end up putting them here for almost ten years. What I didn't expect more so was that there would actually be a day when I would take it up again during my lifetime. Ling Zhanhan took up the writing brush. He let out a depressing sigh and said, The purpose of talisman drawing are for humans to use their own Xientian Qi through a unique drawing style, and also by relying on the demonic beast's beast skin, using the power of their blood to draw out a special existence. It can either increase one's strength, or lower the strength of the opponent within a short period of time. Ling Zhanhan said while taking up the writing brush and dipping it into the red blood in the inkstone. There are a lot of varieties of talismans. There were the attribute talismans that revolve around strength, speed, defense, and energy. These kind of talismans are capable of increasing one's physical attributes within a short period of time, and thereupon lay waste to their opponent. There are also those that are useful against the opponents. Their purpose is to lower the opponent's strength, speed, defense, and energy. Ling Zhanhan, like before, was still slowly dipping the writing brush inside the demonic beast's scarlet blood and lightly, polishing it at the edge of the inkstone. Qin Shui listened attentively. He understood it. Merely, he thought that heavenly talisman was too mysterious. Moreover, Qin Shui did not know how much this heavenly talisman could increase his specifications. For example, how much stronger would it make him, and how much faster would he be? Perhaps, it was because of Qin Shui's ancient forging skill, but the armors and weapons that he forged would have a few additional attributes. Qin Shui had high hopes for the heavenly talisman, so he was afraid that it would disappoint him. However, Qin Shui thought that since Ling Zhanhan, as a martial king warrior at his peak, thought so highly of it, surely it must be worth its salt. There are actually still many kinds of talisman that are useful against the opponent's talents. For example, poison and weapon talismans. After Qin Shui heard Ling Zhanhan speak up to this point, Qin Shui only understood that this heavenly talisman might truly be really powerful, if not useful. 
while it can strengthen the user, it can also disempower the opponent. All right, I am just telling you these things to let you familiarize yourself with heavenly talismans. Today, I will teach you the method to draw them. Ling Zhanhan smiled and told Qin Shui, who was still deep in thought. Qin Shui hurriedly came back to his senses and smiled at Ling Zhanhan. He went two steps closer and took position beside him. These talisman formations, they are in the heavenly talisman that I gave you. The talisman drawing procedure emphasizes the usage of Xientian Qi. Whether to keep it well proportioned or steady, you should decide which one is more important inside the drawing. After that, form them in one go. Qin Shui took mental notes of Ling Zhanhan's main points in silence. With a flourish, the tip of the writing brush that Ling Zhanhan was holding dropped down onto a snow-white beast's skin. It was incomparably fast and nimble. The brush went off like the roar of dragons and the slither of snakes, and the drawing assumed the vague outline of a body with each scatter of blood ink. If it wasn't because Qin Shui's eyes were keen, he estimated that he wouldn't have been able to see clearly how Ling Zhanhan drew. Even though the time it took was really short, the drawing process still lasted for as long as three breaths. Merely, despite the complexity of the talisman and the amount of time it took, Qin Shui still felt entranced by Ling Zhanhun's hand as it flickered about like a butterfly flying at peak speed with a flutter of its wings. It was gorgeous and magnanimous. Ling Zhanhun wiped the sweat from his forehead once he was done. Only now did Qin Shui catch on and realize that the three breaths of time spent drawing had actually caused Ling Zhanhun to exhibit sweat, even in a state where he had recovered some of his Xientian strength. Furthermore, he looked like he was extremely drained of energy. Grandpa Ling, are you all right? Qin Shui asked in concern. I am fine. In the past, drawing out this second grade talisman was something that would happen in a flash for me. I would not even feel tired after having drawn it relentlessly for an entire day. I never would have thought that. Now, it would actually be laborious to this extent. When Ling Zhanhan spoke of this, he was unable to cover up his sad expression. Grandpa Ling, you needn't worry. I will definitely let you recover your strength back to when it was at its peak like before. Qin Shui comforted Ling Zhanhan and said, Actually, Qin Shui still had a lot of confidence in the great revitalizing pellet. However, when all was said and done, he did not have a hundred percent of assurance. After you are old, the only thing left would be groaning. All right now, did you see it clearly just now? When Ling Zhanhan said this, he was looking at Qin Shui seriously, so much so that his expression had appeared to look a bit nervous. I saw it very clearly, but it would be very difficult for me to draw it now. Just now, I felt Grandpa Ling's key, soul and drawings. I reckon that, at most, I would only be able to mimic your form. Even if I managed to jot down the talisman, there would not be any of the same charm or grace. Qin Shui only said in a serious manner after thinking over, Ling Zhanhan looked at Qin Shui seriously. He felt that it was too unbelievable. After all, for a second grade. Movement restriction talisman. There was a vivid and lifelike thousand feet centipede and a spider intertwined within the spider web. With one false drawing alone, it could possibly disintegrate the whole talisman. He had actually managed to see it carefully in one go this was already completely unbelievable. Furthermore, the most important part was that he could mimic the whole thing and draw it out. After all, for an ordinary beginner, being able to see merely one-third of it already qualified them as genius. Qin Shui, why don't you try it? Ling Zhanhan passed over the writing brush in his hand to Qin Shui. Qin Shui nodded. He extended his hand and took over the writing brush. After that, he started to slowly dip the brush in the scarlet demonic beast's blood. In his mind, however, he was recalling the whole process when Ling Zhanhan drew the talisman just now. He did not miss out on any spots. He slowly sped up the revolution of his ancient strengthening technique and purposely used its expansive vital energy. As for the other frenzied bull strength and golden key, they revolved on their own. Qin Shui, who took a deep breath, swiftly waved the riding brush in front of the beast's skin. Ling Zhanhan who was next to him, on the other hand, was already stunned at the instance of Qin Shui moving the brush and drawing ahead. Genius! A devil like genius! Qin Shui took approximately a normal person's five breaths worth of time. Of course, Qin Shui was holding his breath all along. 
he did not dare to relax at all. At the moment, when the last stroke of the brush got lifted up, Qin Shui felt a bit of key from the ancient strengthening technique in his body, and the other energies getting passed through the writing brush, and across the talisman drawing. Qin Shui also knew why Ling Zhanhan would be this exhausted. This was the first time he drew a talisman, so he reckoned that the quality did not pass, so much so that he even reckoned that there wasn't much effect to it. After letting out a long sigh, Qin Shui turned around and looked at Ling Zhanhan who was staring blankly back at him. He promptly called out, Grandpa Ling. Ha ha ha! Good! Good! Ling Zhanhan laughed loudly in joy. Yet this laugh had made Qin Shui feel dazed. However, it was not a bad thing. After all, what he said just now was good. If it wasn't because I knew about your condition, I would definitely not believe that this is your first time drawing a talisman. This is really good, such a good innate skill. You can definitely practice this heavenly talisman up to the ninth grade. Ling Zhanhan was incomparably happy. Nine grades? Before that, the movement restriction talisman that you said you would draw was only second grade? How are these grades divided up? Qin Shui felt doubtful. He was thinking about it secretly in his mind. Grandpa Ling, how are these nine grades divided up? Qin Shui still decided to ask. For talisman drawing, it would be fine as long as you can draw it out. As for the division in grades, it is based on your drawing skills, strength, and materials. Actually, there isn't a clear division. Let me tell you about the common difference in the divisions. After stopping for a while, Ling Zhanhan continued to explain. For example, let's talk about the second grade movement restriction talisman just now. It is used to restrict the opponent, that is, restrict 20% of the opponent's speed. However, it isn't based on 20% of the opponent's speed, but instead it uses the user's own speed as the standard. That's why talisman masters would never use ordinary talismans to skip a grade and challenge someone. But if they use some unique demonic beasts or martial saint level demonic beast skin, the talisman made by that blood would increase the strength of the talisman by folds. So much so that it would be by a number of folds, up to almost ten folds. Grandpa Ling, you mean to say that the ability of this talisman to lower down the capability of the opponent is based on one's own standard, but not their opponent's? Qin Shui said in shock. There was even a bit of surprise in his words. Of course. If not, wouldn't a Cientian talisman master have been able to cut down half of his opponent's speed in just a short while just by using something like a fifth grade movement restriction talisman? Ling Zhanhan smiled as he said so. But even if you guys are at the same grade, wouldn't battling the talisman master be too terrifying? They could weaken the opponents at the same level as them to a level where they are unable to withstand even one blow in just a short while. Qin Shui looked at Ling Zhanhan and asked in shock, Aren't you looking down on the difficulty of Heavenly Talisman a bit too much? The things that were mentioned previously were all normal. One more point, most of the Talisman Masters have formidable spiritual energy. However, they are significantly weaker than warriors in other aspects. Furthermore, I have only cultivated to the fifth grade talismans after reaching the pinnacle of martial king grade, and I am already finding it really difficult to improve further, and it's still only the movement restriction talisman that reached the fifth grade for me. Ling Zhanhan smiled bitterly. 